this about me, but I'm a bit of a NASCAR historian. And I know that for 65 years, race fans have come together to celebrate all of it. <laughs> the Daytona 500. Green, green, green. And the Daytona 500 is underway. Another thing I know, this is not for the faint of heart. Mm -mm, you can't be weak playing with us. The distance between earth shaking and earth shattering is one single beat. Oh, we got a round. Disappoint. A temple of possibilities where a kid can go from unknown to a household name in the blink of an eye. Happy birthday, Trevor Bain. And the legend, is out in front. they found a way to make these high banks their second home. It's Earnhardt. The Daytona 500 goes to Jimmy Johnson. Winning here will change your life. It will make you a star as long as it doesn't break you first. Mm -hmm. This is the Daytona 500. Don't you go nowhere. It's time to get fast. It's one of the greatest spectacles in sports. Opening day and the most important race you'll see all rolled into one. The Daytona 500 and a picture-perfect weather day as we come to you live from Daytona International Speedway. We're here to give you a front row seat as America's best drivers decide the 65th running of this event in what is NASCAR's 75-year anniversary. We welcome you to race day on Fox, presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, and we're coming to you trackside from the Chevy Experience, located in the infield near the start-finish line and victory lane. Fans coming out early for the great American race. So we have a great view and good folks to cheer us on. Good folks. These I, are awesome folks, Myers. Look at them. <laughs> I wish they were here just for us, but they want to see the drivers of the race. Jamie McMurray, Clint Boyer, Tony Stewart. I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for being a part of this with us. This is a pretty good scene here, Clint. I know you love this kind of stuff. Best seat in the house Before right here drive. on Pitt Road. Racetrack right behind us. Them awesome fans. Huh? Let me hear you. For this All right, and we got we got three drivers. And so, yeah, Jamie, for for a driver's point of view, I mean, they're anxious at this moment, and there's a lot to come today. A lot of nerves, and you know, guys, we talked about it backstage just a few minutes ago. It's the biggest race of the year, but what makes this different too is that these guys have been here since Wednesday. They ran a qualifying race on Thursday. The anxiety of everything that can go wrong, the sleepless night last night, everything building up to this. And at the end of the day, someone's life is going to change. It's going to be different than it was when they started today. I know. Happened to me in 2010. I hear it. Myers, every time you introduce me, you say, Daytona, Daytona 500, 500 champion. Yeah. This time I did so you could say it. He loves to brag about himself. <laughs> he rubs it in, doesn't he? To you, a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about, you, Boyer. I mean, we, uh -oh. we, it didn't but change our life. But you got plenty of wins at this place. <laughs> I got my share. It just wasn't on the right day here. But this is a place place that I guarantee like Jamie mentioned these guys didn't sleep well last night I know at this part of the day all I want to do is get in the race car I want to strap in I want to get in the place that I'm happiest and that's behind the steering wheel and get ready to start this 500 mile race now we have a great show for you we'll tell you'll get to know all the drivers who you're rooting for maybe some you want to root against but let's check on some headlines here in the 65th running as we get ready for the Daytona 500 and two-time NASCAR champ Kyle Busch changing teams now with Richard Childress Chevrolet still looking for that first ever Daytona 500 win. It's the only one he had one. Tyler Reddick, three wins last year. He joins Bubba Wallace and the race team co-owned by Michael Jordan. Two NASCAR rookies, Ty Gibbs at age 20, youngest driver in the race with Joe Gibbs Racing. Noah Gregson joins Richard Petty. Jimmy Johnson, he's part of an ownership team, Legacy Motor Club, but he's back behind the wheel and the front row. Yes, it's those Hendrick Chevrolets. Alex Bowman leading the crew with Kyle Larson. Are they the guys to beat the Chevys? It's been a while since the Hendrick Chevrolet has won the Daytona 500, but they always seem to start up front. Hey, without a doubt, Hendrick Motorsports has qualifying down here. The 48 car has been on the front row six straight races, three poles in the Daytona 500. What they don't have are cars that seem to race well. And from what I saw on Thursday night, the 48 car did not like to get pushed. You're going to have to have that today. In order to get to the front, there's going to have to be a lot of aggression, especially at the end. 48 teams going to have to work on getting that car to handle better so they can be right when it counts at the end. Powerhouse team, though. Four teams. You see the nine car, Chase Elliott. He didn't qualify well, didn't have the speed in his car, worked on some handling setup. 
flipping things. That's what's cool about having a four-car team, folks. You're going to meet in the middle. You've got those qualifying races. You're going to figure out practice sessions. Who comes up with a better package? We'll meet in the middle, and we'll have fast hot rides co collectively for the 500. Do people work together, say, so you got before they go in? Does that plan change as the race goes on? Well, it's they plan on it, but everything's an audible. Every lap is an audible. You try to plan who you want to run with and who you want to be around. But they may not be there by the time. It's <laughs> exactly. So you you have to be comfortable with anybody, and, and you have to be comfortable knowing who you want to, more so who you want having pushing you more than anything. I think that's the biggest thing that we notice from the qualifying races is. Who you had behind you pushing you was a big factor in how comfortable you were in the seat. So hard to explain to people at home. What's in the mirror behind you is almost more important as what's in front of you. Very important to have good company behind you. One you could trust when it comes to that magical moment yeah, off the floor. Yeah, that speed's 190 miles per hour. All right, we're gearing up for that 500-mile race here at Daytona International Speedway. By the way, the land lays out over some 500 acres. We got it covered with all of our pit reporters. Let's start out with Regan Smith. Regan? Well, Chris, I am here in the garage area. This has been a point of all kinds of action this weekend where the teams work on the cars, where the cars have been. You'll notice over my right shoulder, though, the cars are not in the garages right now because they are already on the racetrack preparing to start this race. The fans are all starting to progress their way towards pit road because they know that it's coming very soon. And the team or the teams are in their haulers right now. The team's doing that final debrief, getting that last conversation, maybe getting a little pre-race meal in before they go out and they get ready to participate in the Daytona 500. Josh Sims? Well, Regan, the energy is building up out here on pit road. The cars are lined up along the grid, and as you see, the infield is packed with fans, and they're going to get a special treat leading up to this race. you got a group of NASCAR legends serving as the grand marshals for this. Nine NASCAR legends that have won the Daytona 500 and won a Cup Series championship. I'm talking about Richard Petty, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, Bill Elliott and more. What better way to kick off the 65th running of the Daytona 500 than with that, Jamie? Josh, what a scene out here on the start finish line. 11,000 fans have access to the infield festivities. I think most of them have signed the start finish line. We saw the Anheuser Busch Clydesdales. I saw a couple get engaged. It is happening out here, but you know, when you stand here and you look at this and you reflect on the legends who have crossed over this finish line first, Mario Andretti, AJ Foyt, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, you name it, it makes you reflect. And coming up later in the show, we will take a virtual lap around this track, looking back at some of those different eras, and we'll do it and we'll showcase those race cars from different eras. Michael? Thanks, Jamie. I brought it to the people. They're ready for a party. I'm located just across from the start finish line where later this evening, someone's whole world is going to be better when they take the checkered flag and win the 65th running of the Daytona 500. Hmm. I get cold chills just saying that. But before that all happens, Dirks Bentley is going to rock this house performing some of his country hits. And I'm going grid walking, catch up with celebrities and drivers alike. Chris, you can feel it. The energy, the intensity, it's growing. And by the way, hi, how are you? Hi, right, and how are you? Yeah, you're good on a stage. You should be on the first one out of town. Thank you very much, <laughs> Michael, the two-time Daytona 500 champ. So we're all excited, but we'll get back to the racing in a moment. But just some really sad news this weekend with, with the passing of Tim McCarver. We leaned on Joe Buck with a tribute to a great colleague of ours, a contributor to baseball, and a friend to many. On Thursday, we lost one of the all-time greats, Tim McCarver, a catcher with the St. Louis Cardinals when they won two World Series, a player in the majors for 21 years. He was a colleague and a dear friend. As a broadcaster, he was a multiple Emmy Award winner and a Hall of Famer. I had the privilege of working with Tim for 18 years calling baseball on Fox. He worked a total of 24 World Series, 16 of them with us. MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred called him one of the most influential voices our game has ever known. He used all of his experience to teach the game to multiple generations. Our condolences go out to his family and friends. Tim McCarver was 81. Daytona is our sport, it's where it started. The Harley J. Earl Trophy is beyond the history of NASCAR. I'm not letting this trophy out of my sight right now, obviously. It's the one race that you would pick to win every year. 
It's one of the most coveted trophies in all the motorsports. Your eyes are drawn to it, that black and silver. It's unbelievable, really. I, I, can't, uh, I can't explain it. To win the Harley J. Earl, it's a lifelong dream that I still feel like I get to live every time I talk about it. As NASCAR's 75th anniversary season begins, nine Grand Marshals are here for this race, and they all won the Daytona 500 and the Cup Series championship. Five NASCAR Hall of Famers, four future Hall of Famers, names like Richard Petty, Bobby Allison, Bill Elliott, Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson, Kurt Busch, and Joey Logano, who is the defending series champion as we are live at Daytona at the start-finish line and back with our gang. Let's Let's welcome in Joey Logano, the defending champ. Eight years ago, Daytona 500 winner by his holler, getting ready for the race. And, and Joey, last year your slogan was 22 and 22. You became the champ. And, and the slogan this year we're hearing is never enough. Sounds greedy. Tell us about what it means to you. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to be greedy, aren't I? I'm a race car driver. It kind of goes with the territory. Uh, the big thing behind that really is just keep in our team pushing. You hear so much about other sports and their teams winning championships and a post champ championship slump. That is not what we're here to do. It is to keep the pressure on and keep going and say there's never enough, right? Never enough wins, never enough championships, never enough preparation. That's what our team's getting behind this year. And uh, so far, so good. If you look at the duels, we'll try to keep that rolling. Yeah, Joey, I like the fact that when, you, when we hear you talk about being two-faced, I think it's something you embrace really well. And I think it's a concept <laughs> that absolutely is something in motorsports that is very essential you it's all right to be friends with the guys in the pit area but when you put that helmet on you switch to a totally different gear yeah absolutely I mean, you've given me some nicknames too tony so <laughs> <laughs> i'm just waiting for a cool one like smoke you know i got spoons i got two face I mean, i've heard it all over here guys <laughs> as long as it comes with the trophy i really don't care <laughs> well let's talk about that trophy you won this trophy before you got the big trophy last year joey uh dual race win that you just alluded to how are you going to get this next one? How does it happen? Your Fords are fast. Your teammates are fast. How do you get to the end of this? Yeah, our Fords are really, if you said it, the Fords are wicked fast right now. It, it's kind of up to us. I feel like if, if a Blue Oval doesn't win this thing, we've we've messed up somewhere within it. we got good speed, good handling. Uh, we showed that in the duel, um, and we showed that in practice working together. I think we're working closer together than ever. So uh, I'm feeling really good about our chances today, and our Shell Penzo Mustang's got the speed. Uh, it's got the handle. It's always a balance when you get down here, right? You can go for all out on handling and maybe give up some speed. I feel like we got a good balance of both. And so uh, that if we can just execute our plan, stay towards the front, avoid the big one, which is the hardest part, <laughs> and position ourselves to win this thing. Well, Joey, I'm going to go big picture. You win the championship last year. Every offseason, the drivers sit down with their crew chiefs. They go over what's the weak link of their team, uh, where do they need to get better. What's the one thing that you and Paul Wolf sat down over the winter and thought you need to get better at this season? I, you know, I, honestly, we just kind of keep continue growing. You know, this next-gen car last year was so, so new and such a change, and we learned so much throughout the year about the race car itself. And he's keeping that community communication line open, talking about it, uh, going back and forth, not getting too stuck in our ways because something worked last year, right? We got to keep evolving and keep getting better uh, throughout the season because you know, we, we don't quite have this thing figured out. It's only been a year, right, since the first race right here in the, at the 500. So you, we still have a lot of room to grow a, as, a, as a whole sport. But as a team, we got to keep staying ahead of that. And I see you're sipping a, a cold beverage, Joey, part of the Coca-Cola racing family and celebrating. This is the 25th anniversary for you drivers. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's great. We got to be able to win. Coca-Cola has been a great partner of, of mine since the beginning of my career from the, from the get-go. So uh, it's been a great partnership. They've been so many great things with the foundation uh, and, and within the sport in so many different ways. So it's great to keep that relationship going. And you're welcoming a new driver, although it's a driver you'll be competing with to the Coca-Cola racing family in today's 500. Yeah, absolutely. Chase Elliott is part of the family. So if you're a Chase Elliott fan and you're watching this, just remember, we're family now. He's part of the Coke race. We're family. You've got to root for me, too. It's just part of it. Like, whether you like it or not, you got to like me now. Chris, did you see? <laughs> he got his chuck points in, didn't you, Joey? He, I got yeah, them chuck that's, points that's, going. That's, that's, that's right. part of being got a Got one on the board, baby. Being a, being a champion. Have fun today, Joey. Right? We appreciate it. We'll be watching you. Absolutely. Good luck, Thanks, right. Have fun. Uh, th Thanks. Thank you. Uh, in honor of the 25th anniversary of the Coca-Cola racing family, Jamie Littles. 
sat down with Clint Boyer, originally family member Bobby Labonte, as well as active drivers Austin Dillon and Daniel Suarez to discuss the lasting impact that Coca-Cola has had on NASCAR. So Coca-Cola family, original member here, and Bobby Labonte. Founding father. Yeah, Founding OG. Father. I feel OG. like it should be something <laughs> on a statue or something like that up front. You were part of the family at one I was, point. I was. Had a lot of fun with the Coca-Cola family. It meant a lot to me. And it started with you guys, the legends of the sport, Bobby Labonte, Dale Jarrett, um, Dale, Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. All the legends of this sport were part of this Coca-Cola family. We were part of a program that nobody had seen yet. And I think I remember reading it was like a five-year deal. Well, five years have now led into, you know, 25 years. So, <laughs> so obviously it worked. And you guys, current members of the family, what does it mean to have a sponsor like Coca-Cola? For me, I, I think it's one of the best partners in our sport. Coca-Cola has been a founding sponsor of the sport very long time and just been so supportive of NASCAR in general. When I received the call back in 2015, I wasn't even in copy yet, I was in Xfinity. And I remember, you know, being part of the Coca-Cola Racing family as a junior, it was quite special, you know. Jamie, you know what else happened when he got a part of the family? The Amigos. <laughs> yes. In 2019, you know, I came together with NASCAR and with Coca-Cola and said, hey, what about if we do something cool for my community? And, and we tried to do uh, like a tailgate, something that Clint would do. <laughs> and, uh, we did it for the first time in Aracorpe Speedway, 2019. It was amazing. I mean, Clint was jealous. He was wishing he was part of it. Definitely jealous of him. Man, that party that you guys do every week is so much fun. And you took it to the next step. You helped us in NASCAR take it globally it was supposed to be one time only we ended up doing like four times a year so you know it, it was only the beginning of something special that if it wasn't for Coca-Cola for NASCAR it wouldn't be possible how about when you won in Sonoma your amigos were there yeah, they too. were there you know very very happy and proud that so many great people in Coca-Cola and in NASCAR believe in my mission and believe that it's very important to to bring these community communities into the racetrack for you Austin you won the Coke 600 how cool was that? It means a lot to us to bring home a Coke trophy and a Coke race. I mean, it's kind of bragging rights for that year. We're all fighting to try and put a Coke family member out front when it comes to Coca-Cola races. That's the truth. <laughs> all right, guys. There's only one of you going to get maximum points this week. Let's <laughs> make sure it's one of you two, all right? All right. Salud. Cheers. Salud. Cheers. Cheers. It's so much <laughs> over the years being a part of that loyal, right, loyal Coca-Cola racing family started with Bobby Labonte, the legends of the sport, like you heard me say. But we've all three been part of the Coca-Cola family. I've won the Chuck uh, points against him, and, man, that means something. When they put that big trophy out there, don't you think us racers ain't going to make a competition out of that? That went right down to the wire. Ryan Newman, he'd get, like, 14 chugs a weekend on you. He's like, a little oh, bigger man. than the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow I'm not surprised he won the Chug points. It's just, you know, it's just what I hear that Clint does about it. It was a trophy. It's the only time he doesn't Focus talk. on the competition, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, con we'll continue live here from uh, Daytona. Drivers anxious, fans uh, fired up. Here's what's coming up on the show. Glad to have you with us. Oh, there they are. There they are. There they are. So much more coming up on race day. Three-time Daytona winner Denny Hamlin hops on the headset. The closer is calling it a career after this season. Our Jimmy McMurray talks to Kevin Harvick ahead of his last Daytona 500. He's back. Jimmy Johnson just couldn't stay away. The seven-time champ has conquered it all, but he hasn't had the challenge of a one-on-one -on -one with Clint Boyer. How will he handle it? And after 15 seasons at Joe Gibbs Racing, Kyle Busch is shifting gears. Tom Rinaldi catches up with the new RCR driver to see what impact the change may have on his swashbuckling style. All that, plus Dirk Bentley performs, driver introductions, and so much more as race day rolls on at Daytona. Today, when they introduced the Intimidator, the crowd was full of cheers. And we welcome you back live from Daytona International Speedway, counting you down to the start of this year's running of the Daytona 500. Think about how great Dale Earnhardt was. He won one Daytona 500. That's how difficult. We have eight champions in the sport. And five of them have not won a Daytona 500. Will we look back over memories since this is the 65th running and the 75-year anniversary of the sport? What jumps out to you? That one. That, that one was yeah. without a doubt. 
No questions asked. My favorite memory of this racetrack at Daytona. After so many years of trying, you said the greatest, man. I'm telling you, Dale Earnhardt was won everything there was to win here and finally got that win to see the respect of every crew member standing out there on pit road giving that guy a high five. They were all happy for him. That day, everybody was a Dale Earnhardt fan, whether you competed against him or not. How about you, Tony? Yeah, honestly, it's the yeah, same really? thing because that you didn't really realize how big of an impact him not winning the Daytona 500 meant to his fans and everybody else. But when he finally accomplished that goal and to see him come down there and literally every crew member from every team lined up, it was like, wow, that was something that I, you never really expected it. And you never really thought about it. But when you saw that moment, you realized how big that was to the entire sport. I'm heartbroken. 2010, <laughs> yeah. neither of you picked it. Come on. Yeah. That was by far the best Daytona I was, 500 ever. Your I, crew was the only one out there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> you won and you cried, which those were real no crying in base. No, there's oh, crying when you win the Daytona. You work your whole life for something, it's worth crying. Yes, you it's, earned it. it. I it's, agree. Absolutely. It's worth it to you. Boy, yeah, there's, we have guys in today's race, sentimental favorites, uh, Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, that have not won a Daytona 500. Well, if you're into numbers, and here's one guy who hasn't won one yet either, how about the way things have lined up for Martin Truex Jr., uh, champion of the sport, who's never won this race. He drives the 19 car today, February the 19th, and this is 19th try to win the great uh -oh. American race. One of the reasons he sat down with our Josh Sims. You know, he didn't win a race last year. That's not like Martin Truex. And where everything went wrong, every time he had a fast car, he found a way to lose the race. It's been a roller coaster, I guess. Before last year, like we were just, you know, doing great and making the playoffs and, you know, f I guess Final Four a bunch of times, winning the championship. So, I mean, it's, you're, you're bound to have an off year, and last year was that one for us. I feel like if you didn't have bad luck, you wouldn't have any luck at all. You know, I think some of it was our own doing. You know, you got to try to make your own luck as much as you can. We definitely had some heartbreakers. I remember years even growing up in racing. You couldn't do anything right. You were fast all the time. Nothing ever went your way. And you do this long enough, you know you're going to have things like that happen. You can't let it get to you. You can't let it bring you down. You can't let it keep you down. You got to figure out what happened, get over it, and move on. No one has overcome more than Martin Trex Jr. You are different, and if so, how? Mad. Because of last year? Yeah, just have a lot of fire in my belly. You used the word mad to describe how you were different this year than you were last year. Disappointed more would be the better answer. Truex was considering retirement. Said, nope. He says, I'm coming back to win. We needed to be better, and that's all the things we've been working on the offseason. So the short track thing, check. My yeah. man is driving with elbows up <laughs> in anger. I feel as good as I ever have. He was kind of one of the guys. Now he's become one of the guys. How about this, Mark Truex Jr.? You are the champion, baby. Yeah! You're a champion in the sport. You've accomplished so much. Can you finish things out and not have won the Daytona 500 and still feel like it was a successful career? You know, I think, honestly, I could probably stop tomorrow and I would feel good about things just because I don't know that I ever expected to accomplish all that I have, and I've been really lucky to work with some great people and great teams and win a bunch of races and a championship. You know, thinking back to my 20-year-old self, you know, I don't know that he ever knew that would happen, so pretty content. But I'm not looking or talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, we're going to win it. And don't count out Truex yet. Well, you wonder what kind of season and, and maybe what kind of race we could expect from him today. Well, you heard it, 19 on the 19th. There's a lot of 19s, Mark, <laughs> Mark Truex Jr. I told a lot of people coming into this weekend, I think he's the, the horse to ride. You're on it, really? Race. I'm telling you, wow. I'm calling that 19 car. It's his time. He's lost by inches, Chris, an inch from his teammate when he won that Daytona 500. That Don't you think that don't burn him? Burns him bad. So he is mad, he's angry, and I think it could be his day. Yeah, the thing that, that Truex has, going against him is that at Daytona or Talladega, him. Tell you, hang on, <laughs> where the tracks are pretty similar. He's zero for 71. There are some guys that excel at super speedway racing. Martin Truex Jr. has come close, but he has, this has not been his thing. Nope. His day. Yeah, super speedway, right? Different racing. It's a yeah, different style. Yeah, thinks he's going to finish 19th. Animal. It's not about what you do. It's right. what you do and the guys around you. It's what you can assemble around you to help you get to the end of the race at a, at a restrictor plate track. As long as he doesn't finish 19th. Okay? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm hey, be, I'm be okay. looking good there. We're going to hear actually Denny Hamlin. He's won this race three times. We're going to hear from him later, Kyle Busch. But coming up, we'll be entertained by a multi-platinum singer, Dirk Bentley. We're live. In Daytona. Now the party started.
Fox bringing you closer to the scene here at Daytona. There's Larry Fitzgerald, soon to be a Hall of Famer, the great wide receiver, Charlotte Flair on the scene as well. You heard our teasers, Tiffany Haddish, big NASCAR fan. She's ready to watch the cars roll. So the celebrities are out, and we are at the Chevy stage above the start finish line with our cast of drivers and joined by a celebrity rapper, musician, businessman, part owner of track house racing, Pitbull. Yeah. Nice to see you. What's going right. on? That's good. Hey, good to be out here. You're used to big events. We're, yes. gonna, we, we're sold out. 150,000 fans here in person, millions watching. What's the biggest crowd that you've ever performed? Uh, the biggest crowd was down in, in Brazil for Carnival in Salvador, which is about 2 million people. I was down there with uh, Claudia Leite. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of fun. But let me tell you, to the energy in Daytona 500, it's hard to outdo this. And your race team, talk about Ross Chastain, insane Chastain, the way he, and, and, and Daniel Suarez, I know with Justin yeah. March, your business partner, you gotta be excited with how much success they've enjoyed at an early amount of time. Well, I mean, look, when you when you have the same vision, same goals, we all stay humble, we all stay hungry, but more than anything, we got that chip on our shoulders, we're underdogs, we go out there, we fight, we scrap, we grind. And then as far as, you know, I always thank you to, to Justin and Ty and the whole track house team. But these are the nicknames, you ready? Ready. It's Daniel Rapido Suarez. <laughs> All right? And it's Rouse off the wall, off the chain, Chastain. Oh, I like it. I like it. You gave it. Wait for a song. It'll sound like lyrics. Oh, you know. Well, I can't you know. do the first one of Suarez, but I'll, I'll nail that Chastain by the end of the year. I'm going to use that one. I like it. <laughs> what made you choose NASCAR and why Trackhouse? Well, you know, by, by default, I fell in love with NASCAR and with the movie uh, Days of Thunder. And since then, it, it, coincidentally, you know, Law of Attraction, when we opened the, the school slam that first year, they brought a NASCAR out. And when the kids from the neighborhood saw the NASCAR, it, you, you could see that they didn't even know that world really existed. Love it. So the same way we've done with music, bringing people together, and that's the universal language, is the same way we look at NASCAR bringing everybody together. And that's why we got involved. And especially with a team, like I said, same vision, same goals, and showing everybody that, that the, the impossible is possible, that's what it's all about. All right, well, I appreciate you coming by. Enjoy. So through the race, you're going to be moving around my pit pleasure. box. Where are you going to be? Enjoy I'm going to be all around, to be honest with you. You know, wherever I can um, not get in trouble. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, always, you'll always have a stage here. Real quick, give me the nicknames of the, your two drivers. All right, you got Daniel Rapido Suarez. All right. And then you have Ross, off the wall, off the chain, Chastain. All right, speaking of <laughs> off the wall, it's a perfect segue to our Michael Waltrip, who's out in the crowd getting ready for the music act. Michael, where are you? I'm here with the people again, Chris, and it's electric down here. I cannot wait to fire off this concert. Dirk Bentley, country music superstar, is going to perform his song, Gold! Ooh. It ain't easy. Nobody said it would be. You finally find that green of grass, but you're still in the weeds. Ain't it crazy? All the fun that you give. Driving through the rainbow for the pot at the end. I got some rust on my Chevy, but it's ready. To the view, I'm at the bottom, but the sky's still pretty damn blue. They say heaven is somewhere on the other side, but I ain't waiting. Hell, I'm thinking it's a state of mind. I got some rust on my Chevy, but it's ready to roll. I got a rhinestone sky and a song in my soul. It ain't a smooth ride, life, it's a wild. starts to rain. I don't worry about a thing. I pull my rose-colored Ray-Bans out. I 
$60,000 car becoming a 22-passenger school bus to bring his crew to Victory Lane. Who doesn't love a good fight as we look back over the years, NASCAR's 75th year. The celebration will continue all season long, and at Darlington in May, the Blue Ribbon Committee will unveil their top 75 drivers in the history of NASCAR. Now, that might create a million arguments, so let's get to know NASCAR by the numbers. 75 years of NASCAR. That's right. It was here on the beaches of Daytona back in 1948 when the first sanctioned race took place. And today, the most famous venue in stock car racing will drop the green flag for the 152nd time. Florida was the first, but 36 different states have hosted a race. Today, these guys will make their first start, which brings the total number of drivers to enter a race to 2,981. 203 of those have taken the checkered flag. It was Harry Gant at the age of 52 who was the oldest. And last year's cup champion won his first race just after turning 19, making him the youngest. Through the years, 16 different manufacturers have been to Victory Lane. It's no surprise that Chevrolet has won the most. Every single number, 1 through 99, has been represented on the side of a car, but it's the 11 that is celebrated in Victory Lane the most. Richard Petty's iconic 43 took him to most of his 200 career wins, but his father Lee also won on that car, which makes them one of seven father-son duos to win a race. 1960 was the first televised race, and in 2001, Fox began its coverage of NASCAR, and today is our 329th broadcast, and we are proud to be a part of the 75 historic historic years. Wow, that's a lot to take in as we continue live. We are trackside and joined by, here's another number, 44 years of uh, covering NASCAR. Mike Joy is with us uh, to call the 65th running of the uh, Daytona 500. It's great to see you. I want to get your thoughts on it, but let's ask the drivers here. What wowed you about a lot of those numbers we just saw, Tony? I think seeing the number of drivers that have been here and, and, and a part of the sport and just sitting there, it gave me goosebumps going, I'm one of those guys on that list that had the honor to participate in this sport and in NASCAR. Well, I'm a family guy. Family's got me here. The, the sport of NASCAR's family, seven father-son combinations That's cool. to win races in NASCAR. Pretty cool, Jimmy. Yeah, I'm with Clint. The, the father-sons, I, I didn't realize there were that many, and then I saw the names pop up on there. It's amazing to see that many together. And you've seen a lot of it firsthand. What jumped out to you? 1979, the whole East Coast was blanketed in snow when CBS first televised the 500 flag-to-flag. -flag. Huge audience, big crash on the last lap, and there's a fight, Ken Squire explained. 
and we rode off into history. And, and the fight stood, and we'll see if anybody's fighting at the end of this one. Let's go back, though, uh, to where it all began, a little hotel here nearby the racetrack. Stock car racing has changed a lot over the years. But one thing has remained consistent. Whether it be the bootleggers outrunning cops in their souped-up V8s, or the fellas in 1936 who started racing cars down on Daytona Beach, stock car racing has had no shortage of personalities. Now, perhaps there's been no personality bigger or more influential than that old Big Bill France. And by the time Big Bill came along, stock car racing was already a rapidly growing sport, amateur as it was. Ah, but Big Bill had a vision that extended far beyond his own career. He'd go on to form one of the earliest leagues for stock car racing. He was intensely proud of this achievement and those of his racers. I'm intensely proud of your achievement, Fonty. I really look like this. But for the sport to reach its full potential, well, it takes someone who could unite this ragtag group of dreamers around their common passion. Someone with unparalleled work ethic. One of the few men who managed to earn the respect to the entire industry. Ideally, someone six foot five with a square jaw. And... All right, I'll do it. Big Bill set out to bring together the most influential people in the sport. A task too tall for most. Stock car racing at the time was a sport filled with bitter rivalries and races run by promoters who were oftentimes more interested in racing away with the prize money. Though not many had the resume you'd find in a boardroom, Big Bill hand-selected the motley group of racing experts he knew he needed to get the job done. And just like he knew he could, Big Bill convinced a now legendary group to assemble at the Streamline Hotel in Daytona Beach for what would become the Continental Congress of Auto Racing. Nothing stands still in this world. It either gets better or worse, or bigger or smaller. Right now, within our group, rests the outcome of stock car racing in the country today. National standings, tracking every racer across the country. <laughs> Consistent rules from here to New England. That's the game, boys. Congratulations, gentlemen. You will all be able to tell your grandchildren that you are a founding member of NISCRA. <laughs> huh. Doesn't quite have the punch we were looking for. NASCAR. NASCAR? NASCAR. NASCAR. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to NASCAR. After three long days, Big Bill had done what many said couldn't be done. Auto racing needed Bill France to take the wheel when it mattered most. And since then, the sport has evolved. And many have continued what he started. But everyone who's followed has kept the spirit of Big Bill alive. All doing their part to make the sport bigger. And better. Each one pushing the sport further. Eyes locked on the future. Bill France, the legend, stands tall. That's the statue outside the museum here at Daytona International Speedway. And back 
back with the guys fans appreciating over the years and, and Mike I'll, I'll get your first reaction four decades he was parking cars at the Streamline Hotel when they <laughs> no I'm just kidding but but you're the guy to ask what was the most significant move that, that they made to ground NASCAR for 75 years strong and going well I knew Bill France and he ran this sport as a benevolent dictatorship that's not a quote from him <laughs> but it is from his son Bill France Jr. who succeeded him and when somebody disagreed with Bill Jr. about dollars he would reach out his hand and say we're going to make money we're going to give you a chance to make some too and that's how they've run NASCAR all these years having the right guy in charge absolutely the leader it takes a vision it takes the smarts the guts to lead the back and then it takes the hard work and that man did all of those things for all of us of NASCAR yeah I mean NASCAR has had uh, many people of character who through talent and intelligence and, and integrity made a major difference game changers race changers one of those Wendell Scott This was a man who created a legacy against all odds. It's important for us to remember those that pioneered and blazed trails. Wendell Scott certainly did that. His importance in this sport is absolutely huge for all those minorities who have come after him. What he did with basically no support being the only African-American to even have won a race for over 60 years. It was something that was highly revered. I have to buy my own tires. If you don't think it's real high, you owe the tire man more money than you made in the race. I mean, it was just him, his sons, working in the garage and then, you know, hauling a car all the way to a track, going to places where people didn't want to see him there. He still did not let other people's opinion of him detract from what was going to be his reality. Yeah, I've always been my own mechanic, but I don't Coming into the sport now with Emmett Smith and being minorities, it was difficult. You see the number 34 on the side of there, that's a tribute to Wendell Scott. But when I was a kid, five, six years old, I didn't see people like me in the sport. I didn't even know about Wendell Scott. The story was not being told. We cannot forget what this man has done uh, in this sport. No matter how many times you lose, you fall, you fail, you get hurt, it doesn't matter. You got to continue to push forward. And that's what Wendell Scott showed was possible. That man was an absolute trailblazer for us. As we count you out of the race, we're trying to bring you a little closer to the Daytona 500. Mike Joy heading up to the booth to call the race. Coming up here on race day, presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. What was Jimmy Johnson thinking two years away? He's back behind the wheel, and then he talks with our own Quint Boyer. And, and this will be cool, the greatest lap ever. You'll see guys from the past racing guys from the present. Who wins between a Richard Petty and a Logano or a Chase Elliott? Tom Rinaldi sits down with Kyle Busch, a candid conversation about his new team. Does he have a new attitude or same old guy? And joining us live here on the desk, three-time Daytona 500 winner, Denny Hamlet, who's ready to go for a fourth. Oh, yeah! You know, Daytona puts tears in the eyes. I can't believe it! Are you kidding me? This is the day on the 500 in it. Oh, you bet Don't it. tell me it is. I got to go talk to the world here, buddy. Driving into victory lane and you see your wife, you see your family, your team. Absolutely incredible. We just won the day till the 500, dude. How about that? Can you believe it? Uh, we've seen fights and joy and tears. It's worth hanging around to the end to see the winner who survives this 500 miles, sometimes 500 miles plus, at incredibly high speeds. 40 drivers ready to roll, and we have a three-time winner of the Daytona 500, who is Denny Hamlin in his FedEx car. And Denny, thanks for being with us on race day on Fox, presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. I know you have a few of those. You would love another one. You hear some impressive drivers. I, I love this because people go, well, how, what's his secret? You know, maybe did, you can lock into one. You said you can lock into two. But you talked about what it takes to win 30% luck, 
50% driver, 20% execution. So how do you sort it all out over the miles and the crowd around you? Yeah, it's really hard to get the the, the, the pick three lotto to all hit on your number <laughs> on the same day, but you got to have all three of those. If the winner today is going to have good luck, he's going to execute perfectly, and he's going to have the skill set to win. So, it, you know, I, I, I always equate to if you cause a wreck, that's the execution part. You messed up that. If you get involved in someone else's wreck, that's the luck part that you didn't have. So, but you have to have all three today. I think that as tough as it is with the two wide racing we've got, you have to execute today or else you will not win. There's just something different, though, about how you run the Daytona 500 and the restrictor plate races versus everyone else. You just seem to be very methodical and think way further ahead than what's actually going on in the moment. I, I try to, but it, it, it is still unpredictable, right? I mean, I still uh, had, I don't think I finished the two races here last year, you know, for the first time, but you try to predict it, but it's really hard, but I just try to really look at the numbers, try to figure out the odds, when the wrecks typically come. You're you working know, odds? Odds? You try. I mean, you try to put yourself in statistically the best position, you know, to put yourself by the numbers over a, a long period of time. But one, one at bat, you just never know what can happen. <laughs> well, stay on that. Stay on those odds. You guys with Toyota Camp, you don't have as many cars. Everybody keeps talking about, you know, the big camps, the, the, the strength in numbers. How does Denny Hamlin keep sneaking by and lucking in all these wins, yeah. not being, you know, with the, the big organization? Well, the field thins themselves out, and yeah. usually that's when I'm able to capitalize. If it's a 40-car field, it will be very tough. But, you know, Toyota's having a, a, a numbers disadvantage. That typically goes away a little bit as the field thins itself out. And that's typically, and I also take advantage of people becoming selfish at the end. Yeah. I mean, if you're uh -huh. the fifth car, if you're the fifth Ford or Chevy on the inside line with 10 to go, what are you doing? You right. will not win. So you got to get selfish at some point. Look, you've won three Daytona 500s, but not with this new car, this next gen car. You mentioned about not being able to finish the races last year. What's different from the driver's perspective in this car versus before? You will not be able to go to the back to the front in a quick amount of time. I think it will take two fuel runs. If you have a problem, you better have it early because I think it'll take two full fuel runs to make it to the front. Now, I'm not talking about to sixth or eighth, to the actual front. That will be very difficult because we're going to see two by two racing. And no one's really, you know, got the nerve to go to a third lane because the cars have so much drag. You'll just, you will lose. So you have to just play the line game and, and hope that your line goes forward. But I think people will know that and they're going to start shoving from further back than what they did before. All right, if not you, who do you expect the greatest challenge from today? You know, I, I think that the, you know, the 22 of Joe Logano will be very oh. strong. He's just, he's got all those things aligned for him. It's just a matter of the luck thing for him. Um, one person, I, you know, if you listen to my podcast, I kind of gave like a list of people. Yeah, I heard you. I, I left someone off that I'm like, I think Christopher, Chris Buescher is a wow. very underrated super speedway racer. Love it. And I think that uh, he could be part of the, the, the deciding factor of who wins this race if it's not himself today. I, we'll I love that he has a plan. It's it's methodical. Yeah. And he talked to a lot of guys like, well, you just got to be lucky. But he talked about the odds being in the right lane. I love how methodical he is going into All this. All right. Good luck. And, right. and 2311, luck, always good luck to them, too. Yeah. Appreciate Denny Hamm. Uh, being with us. All right, uh, retirement. Uh, Denny's not thinking about that. He wants another day on a 500. But nowadays we hear retirement and unretirement more often than most. Michael Jordan, uh, Tom Brady. Remember Michael Jordan with baseball? Brady, by the way, he's unretired again. We welcome him to Fox. George Foreman, for years he came back, won a title, sold a lot of grills. Mario Lemieux on the ice, unretired, retired, then co owned a team. And in the pool, Michael Phelps retires and wins six gold medals over the next game. So it's not just athletes. Jay-Z walked away and then released a comeback album a few years later. A big hit. Seven-time NASCAR champ Jimmy Johnson. We bring it up because he retired from NASCAR a couple of seasons ago to drive in the IndyCar Series. He's back as a driver and part owner of the brand-new Legacy Motor Club with Richard Petty. It's not often a seven-time champ comes out of retirement to start on the last row with Travis Pastrana. Uh, no longer the famous 48. He's in the 84. And in a visit with our Clint Boyer, Jimmy opened up about his journey back. I'm working here. Jimmy, I don't know. We are uh, doing our interview in the kids' playground. We've spent some time in here with yours. Yes. Where else are you going to have an interview with seven-time champion? The story of the legend, the legacy of my man Jimmy Johnson, seven-time champion, 83 wins in NASCAR. It's been a hell of a ride. I flipped the page. 
The only thing it reads is Legacy Motor Club. How did this deal come about? Being on the racetrack was my top priority, but I was wondering if I could drive with a greater purpose. Seven-time champion back not just as a driver, but as an owner. I've found that I enjoy the business aspect of our sport, and I have a lot of contacts within our sport and, and want to give it a shot. Glad you're back. Yeah. It's back, everybody. You're the GOAT. But nobody wins afraid of losing. And the hard rolls are the one we're choosing. What are the realistic expectations of Jimmy Johnson behind this Carvana car? And then the team. I think long-term wise, we have a lot of growing to do as a race team. And that's the exciting part for me. I think that Eric and Noah have very promising careers, both very young guys. We've got to be smart as an organization and say, all right, we have expectations for this first year, but let's look at second year, third year, fifth year, you know, where we're going and plot that progress. We retired together, Jimmy. We, we did. Were tired. We, we were did. supposed to go off into the sunset, go do things that we've never done before, go on vacations. What's that? I felt like when he climbed out of that car for that final race in 2020, that that was it for Jimmy Johnson as far as NASCAR. After all the success, why are you back? I have an opportunity to do something different in the sport, to continue my legacy or start a new legacy as a car owner. It just feels right. Like, I really want to be a part of this. Well, you earned it. You earned it. Certainly. All right. You know what this show's all about. This is the Daytona 500, the granddaddy of them all. You're back in this. It's your 20th. You're great. Yeah, You're the oldest guy in the field. Do you know that? Oh, I did not. Thanks for that news. But you know what else? Do not ever count this man out. That's what I made a mistake of in my driving career. Can you win this Daytona 500? I think I have a really good chance to be to be competitive and uh, in the mix. True or what? This is unbelievable. It's always, it's always a chance. It's all you're asking for. You heard me right there, guys. Jamie, you've done it. I've done it. Never underestimate Jimmy Johnson. If he's in a race car, he has a chance. He's won this thing twice, the Daytona 500. I'm telling you, boys, if he's in it, look out. That 84 will find a way to... Yeah, and he's one win away from 84 career wins, right? Yeah. That would put him in that uh, 84 car. I, I think you could make the argument, you know, Dale Earnhardt, Richard Petty, Jimmy Johnson, seven championships, but five in a row, and he's got a couple Daytona... I mean, he's the best of all time if you're splitting hairs. He certainly would not be second. We tried to screw that up. We, <laughs> we bookmarked all five of his championships, one before and one after. But yeah. the thing about Jimmy that impresses me is he doesn't have to do this. But Jimmy Johnson has the personality that he's goal-driven all the time. He just has to have something to strive for. And when he puts his mind to it, he is all in and, and you see what the results are when he gets all yeah, in. Yeah, what's the greatest obstacle? You try well, to come back? Look, I'm going I'm to yeah. pick up on what Tony just said. He's goal-driven and, and when I talked to him at the Clash, I wasn't sure, like, they, he announced ownership of this race team. I'm like, how involved is he really going to be? He's committed to this. He wants to make it better. I think getting to have Jimmy Johnson, the, probably the greatest of all time in our sport, be in the garage every single week exactly. trying to get this race team where right. it needs to go, it's huge for the sport of NASCAR. Yeah, very neat to see him in the Daytona 500. Make no mistake about it. But him being in a sport, this NASCAR sport, for many years to come as an owner, that is where sure. Jimmy Johnson is going to be really yeah, We haven't big. had a, a pole sitter uh, win this race in more than 20 years. So even though Jimmy's starting way at the back, I know Kyle Busch is in a backup car at the back. Is that a major factor in terms of getting to the front? No. 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 <laughs> Definitely okay. not. Denny not Hamlin right Johnson. there. Denny Hamlin He's... started at the back last year. We're down and out. Man, where's Denny Hamlin? So, like 25 laps in, here comes the 11 car right to the front. I, I, that can happen I, very easy at a track right. like so that. We'll uh, the 84 and the 11. Uh, Jimmy, not the only driver to change teams this season. Begins with a lot of new faces, new places as we start this year in this race. So I, I put Jimmy and some of the new teammates. There's one. To a, there's another, yes. No, uh, to a little bit of get to know your neighbor, your new teammate. We did a game show style. Live from Hollywood, America's favorite game show. It's a match with your host, Chris Myers. Hi, I'm Chris Myers. Yes, your host with the most from coast to coast, and we welcome you to NASCAR It's a Match. Let's see how our teams are going to do. They are Austin Dillon and Kyle Busch of Richard Childress Racing, Bubba Wallace and Tyler Reddick of 2311 Racing, Eric Jones and Noah Gregson of Legacy Motor Club. 
So for the new teammate, we'll ask a question to see how well you know your driving teammate. So we're going to start. Would they rather eat a Martinsville hot dog on pit road before the race or swim across Lake Lloyd to get to driver intros? Austin, what do you think? I like a good Martinsville hot dog, so. Uh-oh. Did you have me swimming? I had you swimming, you damn it. No. After every win, you swim anyways. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Bubba, what do you think? I think Tyler knows the way I eat, so I'm pretty sure he gave me a hot dog. So I'm going to go with that. A nod of the head? Uh, yeah, is it? Is it? I damn sure wouldn't. I would definitely swim. Hot dog. What do you think, Eric? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with the hot dog, too. <laughs> Eric has horrible eating habits, so. <laughs> it's a hot dog. dog. All right, so that's a match. Your teammate, would he rather be stung by a hornet or sprayed by a skunk? Noah's already writing. He feels confident there. We'll start back here with Austin. Sting from a hornet. It's right. quick and easy. He'll take took the sting. That's yeah. a match. All right. One for RCR. To Bubba, what do you think? I've been stung before, and I hate it, but I'm going to go with sting. Sting? And that's another win. Yeah. Nice. All right. Sting by the hornet. All right. What do you think, Eric? I'm going to do the sting. He went with the sting. Yeah. I thought Eric would do skunk because he already smells, like, pretty bad. On the <laughs> <laughs> We're going to flip up with a different set of questions. Would your teammate rather have a fire suit that's too tight or one that's too big? <laughs> All right. So what do you think, Kyle? Man, I definitely need some room to grow, so we're going to go bigger. I was hoping he went big after he saw how tight Noah's suit was last year. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, somebody firing back at Noah with the bar. All right, so Tyler, what do you think? I'd rather be a little tight, show off the goods, you know? None right. <laughs> <laughs> of your suits have been tight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Noah, we've already got an idea about I mean, have been tight in the past. He's going to go tight. Yeah. Too, Too tight. tight. Very good. <laughs> How many revisions were you on? I was on five revisions last year. <laughs> Is your teammate more likely to stay up all night dancing or stay up all night playing video games? Legacy, what are we thinking? Video games. Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't get to tell him. He didn't get the answer. <laughs> he didn't yeah, say dancing. He yeah. Was yeah. Yeah. Tyler, how about it? All night dancing or video games? I'm definitely playing video games. And a boy. Yeah, let's video go. games. It's a match at a point. Kyle, what would you go with there? Uh, I'm playing video games. Video oh, shoot. Yeah. I uh -oh. Have two left feet, bro. <laughs> well, I, I know, but I've seen your social media videos dancing. Uh -oh. I thank you all. Round of applause for our contestants who got to know each other and we got to know them. <laughs> that, was, that was a lot of fun. That, uh, that dance at the end was very disturbing, by the way. Uh, everybody knows I would have picked the hot dog immediately. Yes. Absolutely. Wow. That's a given, Tony. I've seen you at the Wendy's trailer like five times this but weekend. I, Tony but the name of that game was It's a Match. Yeah. There wasn't a match in any of those two <laughs> That is a mismatch game is what that is. But I'm telling you, on this racetrack, they're going to find a match. They have to. That's how they're going to win. They're just getting to kind of know each other. And over 500 miles today and a season ahead, they'll have a chance. All right, well, we continue live from Daytona. Kevin Harvick's last season as a driver. He's got a lot more memories to add. He's won this race. Jamie McMurray sat down to talk with his view of what's happening in this final year and uh, we'll get to driver introductions with a special introducer. field overflowing as well we expect 150,000 plus well replacing a legend is never easy but that's part of Kevin Harvick's story as he enters his final season in NASCAR we all remember how it began in the ride replacing the late Dale Earnhardt Jamie McMurray a longtime connection with the future Hall of Famer and they talked about it how you doing I'm just enjoying these this freezing cold yeah it got weather. it got cold today didn't it it did Slap that on us. This is this is retired life right now, right? Beach chairs, sun, palm trees. So I found some photos that uh, that I want oh to share boy. with you. This is. You recognize this? Oh man, you weren't part of this crew that ran me off the track that day, were you? I I might have been. That photo's 37 years ago. Yeah. So one of the cool connections that that you and I have is that our kids now are racing together. The biggest thing that I've realized since since Keelan started racing is how much I like racing. Right. And it really 
rejuvenated me. And I looked around and I'm like, look at the parents and look at the kids and look at the passion. Why are you frustrated with your job ever? What about this cutie? What kind of racing we got going on here? That says a lot about Piper in general. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm a little fearful of Piper, to, to be honest with you. What's it like with, with her being on the track? Racing is really about more than racing. It's about trying to teach them how to be good people. Because totally. there's so many life lessons to learn at the racetrack that... Yeah, that winning or losing, right? Winning, winning, yeah, you got to teach them how to lose. Yeah. We've changed direction because of you know, success to try to... As a bigger challenge, a right? A bigger challenge to have less success. And, yeah. and because losing is much harder to teach them, racing with kids is very much a mental game. It's like by far the most frustrating thing that you'll ever do, yeah. but also the most gratifying. Did winning here in 2007 make you appreciate the magnitude of this race and, and make you want to win it even more every time you come back? It's the one race of the year yeah. that the cars are prepared the best from every team in the field. They put everything that they've got and being able to win that race and really understand the, the significance of the Daytona 500 and how many greats of our sport have won that race, but also putting into perspective how many of our greats haven't won that race. Harvick's getting a run off turn four. It's going to be a drag race. So if you can pick one race this year, last year racing, pick one race to win, is this it? This is it. It is. Yeah, I, I, I think the only problem that I would have if I won the Daytona 500 again, I might not come back next week. I might <laughs> just start, so good. I might just just start a year early. That's <laughs> <laughs> so good. Tony, you might be in trouble, but the guy wins the race today. You might be putting a helmet back on to go out and race following week at Fontana. I have not trained, and I'm not <laughs> really fit to do this. We're just talking about hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I hope he does. I mean, it, that's the thing about Kevin Harvick is, uh, as, his, as his car owner and his boss, I hate to lose him at the end of this year. Yeah. But I appreciate why he's moving on and, and what his future holds for him with his son and his daughter and his family. It, it's something that he deserves to have fun with his family at this point of his life. Yeah, and the one thing about Kevin Harvick is we know he's a future Hall of Famer. We know the 60 wins, everything he's done. I think sometimes we forget the human side of, of these drivers. And I've got to know him away from racing and seeing him with Keelan and Piper at the car track and how great of a daddy is. And I think that's awesome. And he was a, a great driver, right? His style, I mean, he was aggressive, uh, but he knew the rules, he knew the code, the driver code on the track when it mattered the most. Chris, was. <laughs> We're talking a grizzly bear behind the wheel. He might yes. be a family man, a nice man, but make no mistake about it. When MO eyebrows, the only difference between then and now is they have to go over glasses. That is it. I'm telling you, when them eyebrows become a V, look out, especially in front of him on the racetrack. Yeah, and those through the years. We all have seen that. Yeah, his career, we through the 23 years of Fox. We had his first race and all the way through and then he'll be part of Fox in the broadcast yeah. booth joining wait. you uh, next year and uh, really uh, rave reviews for his contribution to the sport. In honor of Kevin Harvick and, and his announcement and this is final season and still a chance to create some memories. Bush Light giving away $50,000 towards one lucky fan's retirement. You could use it for that if you want. There's other huge prizes. Follow at Bush Beer on Twitter and tweet hashtag Bush401K and hashtag sweepstakes during every lap that ends in a four or ends in four. And we wish you a lot of luck. A chance to win as Harvick rides off into the sunset. We'll enjoy his final season before he steps into broadcast. Plenty of them bush lights right there in that infield, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, the party is lit. It is on fire. A bush light 401k is a good, it just sounds good. Uh, it's time for driver introductions. Here is comedian Gabriel Iglesias. Ladies and gentlemen, that's about that time for the race to start. In row 20, it's Mr. Nitro Circus, Travis Pastrana. And he's back! Seven-time champion, Jimmy Johnson. Running row 19, it's Riley Herbst and Ty Dillon. All right, now, row 18 is headlined by Rowdy himself and third-generation racer, Cody Ware. Down in row 17, Connor Daly gets behind the wheel of the Money Mayweather car. Check out them rims. And it's the 2022 Xfinity Series champ, Ty Gibbs. Row 16, BJ McLeod and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Don't forget the junior. Ahead of them, it's Chase Briscoe and A.D. 
DJ Almond Dinger. You my man. Riding in in row 14, it's Justin Haley and 2018 Daytona 500 champion Austin Dillon. Meanwhile, row 13, the Jumpman's newest member. That's right, Michael Jordan has a car. Tyler Reddick is the man driving it and Mr. Eric Jones. It's row 12, Ross Chastain and Daniel Alejandro Suarez. That's why they got me, so I can say his name right. Now, row 11 is led by Las Vegas' own Noah Gregson and my man, Willie B. Let's get this race started, boys. More introductions. Hey, be sure to catch Gabriel Iglesias. Fluffy is back on tour. Meanwhile, one of the biggest cheers a moment ago when he was introduced, Daredevil motorsports enthusiast Travis Pastrana has a huge following on social media. And Jamie Little checked in with him backstage. Travis Pastrana is certainly one of the most decorated motorsports athletes of our generation. So, Travis, of all the things you've done, what attracted you about NASCAR and the Daytona 500 specifically? It's the great American race. It's uh, the biggest platform that I'd ever have a chance to, to be a part of. And to look back there and see all these amazing drivers, I mean, i got to pinch myself. Even the truck race racing next to Chase Elliott, it's been, thanks, Addy, appreciate the pinch. Um, and just to uh, have my whole family experience, this is great. can't believe you're a girl dad. Bristol and Addy. Go daddy, right? Go dad! Kyle Larson, you've been close in the 500 before. Is today the day? I hope so. I mean, it, everybody's got an opportunity to win here today. So uh, my hittercars.com Chevy's been as good as I think I've ever had for a speedway. So um, I'm happy about it. It was pretty stable in practice the other day. So um, best opportunity yet. So I think when you have an opportunity like that, you want to take advantage of it. But it's a crazy race. So we'll see how it all plays out. Thanks, Kyle. Hey, with Chase Elliott, all that's left is to race in the Great American Race. How are you feeling heading in? I feel good. I'm just excited to be here. Obviously, this is uh, such a great event and have a great crowd on hand. So we're uh, looking forward to it over in the Napa camp, just ready to get it started. Obviously, a lot of a lot of talk, a lot of hype. I'm ready to get to work. So excited for the day. Hopefully, we can just be around there at the end and, and have a shot. Good luck. Thanks. Well, it's been a bit of a quiet week for William Byron. Haven't talked much about you. Kind of down on the speed chart a little bit when it came to qualifying. How was your car overall? Yeah, I think on, honestly, we just we've been focusing on trying to get it to handle better, and uh, so far so good. I mean, in the duel, we had good speed. We just uh, got caught out a little bit on the pit strategy, and and uh, you know ended up finishing tenth. So we got a little bit of work to do here at the start of the race. But I think our RaptorTough.com Chevy is is good. It's just a matter of kind of getting up towards the front and um, worked on a lot of different things. So uh, feel good at these type of racetracks. I've always done well uh, super speedway have a win here at Daytona, so looking forward to hopefully adding to that today. All right, William Byron, roll off 21st. Austin Sindrick, one Daytona 500 is great. How's two in a row sound? Uh, two sounds great, man. It's been uh, really special to come here and, and be able to really understand what it means to, to, to win this race and how big of an event this actually is and to have everybody from Discount Tire with us. Try and do it all again. Those guys have signed back up for more years with Team Penske and so have I, so try and do it all again. Thanks, Austin. Here with Bubba Wallace, big week for 23-11 and on a big day for the Great American Race. Can you talk about all this leading up to this thing? One spot better. One spot better than last year. I think um, our McDonald's Toyota Camry is the best one I've had at a speedway race. Uh, felt really good in the duels. Made one wrong move there at the end, so saving it for the me uh, memory bank. Using it tonight, but I'm um, just excited to get this season going. Start out the clash on the right foot. Hopefully to continue that trend and that momentum. Good luck. Really good hearing from some of the drivers. That's got to be a great feeling being introduced for the Daytona 500. We're live here counting it down with Jamie and Clint and Tony. And as we look at some pictures here at the World Center of Racing, Clint, boy, the crowd really getting into it. Oh, look at it. It's electric, man. Uh, listen to these drivers. Look at Joy, uh, Corey LaJoy right there next to that Harley J. Earl trophy. This place is standing on end. I'm telling you, I'm getting out of here. I'm going to find <laughs> me a hot rod. I'm getting in this race. This is the one that bothers me more than anything you hear those cars in the background start and man it makes you want to be out there competing putting on a show for this huge sold-out packed house and i like seeing kevin harvick come across there he was
just looking in the stands, he is already soaking in the moments of this final season. But as soon as he gets that helmet on, he'll forget that there's anybody in the bleachers. All he cares about is driving that race car. Big day for this guy right here, Kyle Busch. You see him getting the ride around in the truck. Denny Hamlin was just on our stage with us. We talked about how methodical he is. I love the plan he has going into today. Yeah, we're going to hear from uh, Kyle Busch from chat champions. with Tom Rinaldi. And 75 years of drivers in one lap. It's the greatest lap. You'll want to see this. We're counting it out of the Daytona 500, and we're live. There's a thin line in the NASCAR Xfinity Series between winning and losing, between being the future and being past, between headlines and tailspins, between making history and being it, between the sweet taste of victory and the fumes of defeat. In the NASCAR Xfinity Series, there's a thin line between being a name they know and being a name they'll never forget. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Race day at Fox, counting it out of the start of the race, and when you think of the great American race and the prize of the sport, the Daytona 500, Flyover, always exciting. We're moments away from that on the national anthem to get this thing started. These are guys who've won all time more than one. Daytona 500, the king, of course, with seven. But Hamlin, who was with us earlier with his plan, one more. And he joins elite company. Guys who've won more than three. And back with our guys, what does it take? Jamie, I'll start with you. We hear different plans, but of today's drivers, what's out there, today's car, what does it take to win? Well, I mean, without a doubt, you have to have the machine. you got to have a car and an engine that's capable of winning. But we hear a lot of people talk about luck at this track. And if you look historically, the same people tend to make their own luck, good or bad. Uh, Denny Hamlin, who we just had on the show a little bit ago, has been pretty good at it, been able to survive the wrecks. I think part of it's because he's methodical and has that plan going in um, but you got to make good decisions and Bubba Wallace said something earlier about the duels he's like I made one bad decision and it cost me a win in the duel you can't make that at the end of today yeah one bad one's over Chris yeah it's all about logging laps 500 miles around this beast and I'm talking beast three and four wide oh Denny said two wide. there's no chance if you're gonna win this race you will be at least three wide at some point in this and race <laughs> navigating when you're logging them laps you're also logging memory banks you make those moves and you you, you make the wrong one you don't do it again you find your allies you find the car that's going to give you that push when it comes down to it it's all about coming off a of turn four i think it's minimizing mistakes i mean that's okay. the biggest thing one little mistake can totally change the complexion of your day you want to be in a comfortable spot you, you just have to find that group of people just like you mentioned find the group that you want to be with do everything you can just be methodical logging laps is a huge part of this race they've never paid or given a trophy away at the halfway point of any yeah of these. that's right and uh, you know denny hamlin of his three two were the closest finishes ever in a daytona 500 that he won so maybe that's of the luck but he was there to be for the luck how do you know who to trust because we'll be listening in on the radio when you guys are calling the race and yeah the one guy's with this guy and the one guy i know at the end you everybody for himself but to get to that point who do you know who you can rely on well the, the easy answer is your teammates and then with this race you have the manufacturer teammates well i call them allies you have them but at the end of the day again surviving 500 miles you get under the end you know there's going to be the big one right there's going to be at least one of those so if yeah. you get down to the end just like danny hamlin he don't have the strength in numbers but you get down to the end of this thing you find whoever dance apart you are <laughs> just because you don't have a date to the dance don't mean you don't go to the dance uh, get in there you'll find one well here's the thing teammates and and manufacturers are important early on when it gets down to the last few laps that's yep. all out the window i don't those guys can have as many meetings as they want and when it comes down to the end for the daytona 500 i don't care if you're my teammate or not yep and Point taken last and well, hold on austin Cindric won this race a year ago the daytona 500 you know how he did it he ran his teammate into the wall ryan blaney <laughs> <laughs> we we look forward to that wow that brother and crashes are definitely a part of this. All right, let's check in with uh, Tom Rinaldi. He spent time with, with Kyle Busch, two-time champion on a new team this year. We've talked about that. A polarizing driver who's entertained us through the years, whether you love him or, or love to hate him. And we know the Daytona 500 is missing from the prize. So, uh, Tom, your impression here when you sat down, is if we get a new and improved, or is he the same old Kyle Busch? Chris, one thing that is inarguable about Kyle Busch is that he's a winner at every level, in the truck series, in the Xfinity series, in the Cup series. Whether he cares about winning over every fan in NASCAR, that's perhaps less clear. How much he cares about that, we'll leave that up to you.
I'm not surprised about anything. Congratulations. I'm sure I'm complaining and uh, I'm whining and I'm a crybaby. Early in your career, you gave a quote that I think is compelling in its clarity. I'd rather people dislike me for who I am than like me for someone I'm not. Makes sense. Still to today. I agree. We're the top echelon of motorsports, and we got guys that have never won late model races. It's pathetic. I'm a fiery guy, and I've, I've shown my rear end a few times, and uh, so it, it may not always come off very well, but, you know, there's some guys that are out here that are two-faced, and they want to be your friend, but then on the racetrack, they'll not be your friend. But what you see with me is what you get. Reports out of Mexico today stated that Kyle Busch was found to have a handgun in his luggage. Busch was detained once the weapon was discovered. If anything, what did you learn from what happened? I think the biggest thing is just being a little bit more careful with my concealed carry, obviously. I've made a statement on that already, so I'd like to just kind of leave it at that and focus on coming out here and winning the great American race, the Daytona 500. Kyle Busch making the change and going over to Richard Childress Racing, which is huge. I know Kyle Busch. I just don't know how this is going to work. Sitting here a year ago, what did you think your future was with Gibbs Racing? I thought I was going to be able to stay at JGR with Toyota and all the folks there with uh, the relationship that I had for 15 years. Yeah. It was Coach's personal money. He was putting up his personal money to pay wow. me. And I was like, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Like, that's just not, not right. How did you first learn of the interest from Childress? It was funny. Um, Austin Dillon called me. I looked at my phone and I'm like, what the hell does he want? You know? So <laughs> I picked up the phone and I was like, yo, what's up? How's it going? And he got to the point and was like, well, where are you racing next year? How do you feel about coming over to RCR and being with us? And I was like, have you talked to your grandfather yet? There's no, like, no way, right? Like, this isn't real. There was some dark days there where we battled it out on the racetrack and off the racetrack a little bit. But yeah, I mean, it, it all came, came true. I'm proud of you. Kyle Busch, even though he's had a tremendous amount of success already, his best years could still be in front of him. Pat Riley once said, there's only two things. There's winning and there's misery. <laughs> Yes, I can see that. I could agree with that. Sometimes there's there's misery in winning as well, too. To me, I feel like once you start being comfortable or being okay with the things that you've done and the things that you've accomplished, you're going to start being on the downslope. What else out there is there for you to achieve in NASCAR? Well, it's the Daytona 500. I have to win that race. I want to win that race. That's the last official box to check of races that I have not won yet. Like, I don't want anybody to say, but he never won the 500. Like, that's why I have to, I have to win that. I don't, I don't need any more asterisks on my career uh, than what I might already have. What would it mean to you to win? Somebody a couple days ago, they asked me, they were like, have you thought about what your victory lane celebration would be? And I'm like, no, I'm not thinking about what my victory lane celebration is going to be. I'm just going to live it out. And when I win the Daytona 500, that I will try to just take it all in, soak it up, and really slow it down and enjoy and grasp the moment. When asking Kyle Busch about the most valuable loss in his career, the one he learned the most from, he pointed to this race back in 2016 with a chance to win close. He ended up finishing third when he said the team dynamics all broke down. And just as the guy said, Chris, on the desk next to you, it was every man for himself. <laughs> and that's what he learned. If he has the opportunity here, he's going to seize it. And it's interesting to hear him say, when I win the race that I have to win. Not shying away from it. And that doesn't surprise anybody about Kyle Busch. Yeah, thank you, Tom. It was candy. I mean, the, the way crowds react to him, uh, win or lose, says a lot about how much they care about what he does. Absolutely. And the history of the Daytona International Speedway, the top two winners of the facility are Dale Earnhardt and myself for a total of 53 wins here. Out of the two of us, one Daytona 500 victory. So if you don't think Kyle Busch isn't sitting there thinking about how hard it is to win the qualifying races, to win the July race, and not win the Daytona 500, you're sadly mistaken. The only thing I took out of the whole interview is exactly what Tom Rinaldi said right at the end. He didn't say, 
if I win the 500. He said, when I'm going fi to win the 500. Only champions have that kind of, uh, you know, confidence in themselves, and certainly Kyle Busch has always had that in himself. Yeah, and the reason this is such a big story is because Kyle Busch is one of the greatest drivers of all time. He was with one of the best organizations in NASCAR. We didn't think he would ever leave there. We thought Kyle Busch is always going to be at Joe Gibbs Racing. Why would you let him go? Why would he leave? Him going over to RCR, I think, is a small step backwards right now, but he has a chance to turn that team around to make it what it once was 15, 20 years ago. Um, but I think there's a lot of pressure on him, Chris, to do that because we know Kyle Busch can get frustrated. If things don't go well early on, I worry that he, he, he could lose it early on. He's out of the 18 car. He's This is his 18th try at the Daytona 500. He'll be in the A car. Richard Childress Racing does have three Daytona 500 wins, but Clint, I was going to ask you, does, and we're not pecking on him here, but does he get it in terms of an attitude change? Sometimes after all of this, I mean, this is a different team. You're, you're, you're kind of, as he yeah. said, with it, you have to look at yourself about where can I be better? Maybe it's not in the car. It's it's in your head. There's no question, and I think we've all seen him do that. I think he took a step back. I think that the move had, you know, made him take a step back. I think he was humbled with this, but he's hungry, and I think he's upset. We've heard Martin Shrex Jr. talk about that. I'm mad. That, that cat right there in that eight car, he's driving like he's mad. He was fast at the clash. He was right up front where he needed to be at the, uh, at the dual race the other night. I'm telling you, I don't think it's a step backwards, Jamie. I really don't. I think RCR is poised for him. I think they're ready for him, and I think he's ready for this, too. That crew chief, that eight car, they win races, and so does Kyle Busch. What he has on his side is that he's young. He's 37 yeah. years old. If you look at Jimmy Johnson's career, his championship started around right now. Kyle Busch is still He started so young. He's still young. Has a lot of incredible years ahead of him. Speaking of young, Ty Gibbs of uh, his grandfather's Joe Gibbs, Hall of Famer in NASCAR and in, in pro football. He steps in, a youngest driver in this race at age 20. He, he's an aggressive driver, uh, right? Clint, his, his attitude. Oh, without a doubt. Now, he's going to have to learn, though, going from one level. And Tony, you were talking about this. It's going to be a little different at this level with the big boys running as a rookie. Well, you could be aggressive, and you can sit there and pick on guys at the Xfinity level or truck level. You get to the cup level, you're in a whole <laughs> different standard and a whole different grade of guys that they will not let him push them around. Not, at a, not as a rookie. Depends on if he has the speed. They let old Ross Chastain, you, that kid sitting right next to you, Denny Hamlin, he, that Chastain moved him all over the track, did it again at the clash. Yeah. If he has, if he can back up the speed to that aggression that we saw in that Xfinity series, this Gibbs boy is going. He got a little taste of it last year. He ran 15 races for 23-11, but he's got big shoes to fill. We just talked about Kyle Busch. The number has changed, but that is Kyle Busch's team from last year at Joe Gibbs Racing. That's, that's, a, that's a big car to get in. A, a rookie along with Noah Gregson and a rookie who's a very entertaining personality, kind of the everyday driver, and uh, he'll be with Richard Petty and Legacy Motorsports. As we take a look live, we're taking you around Daytona International Speedway as we get closer to the start of the race. It's so cool to drive with all the intensity drivers taking time uh, with family, friends, and fans to, to take pictures. Yeah, we yeah, saw Harrison Burton uh, yesterday out doing a little bit of practice, as much practice as he can get. Look how close you can today. get to them, boys. Only in NASCAR. Like Elvis. Two together as owners, seven-time champs, and the king. I mean, 200 career wins. Yeah, I mean, he's just a bad man. I mean, he he could get it done. <laughs> he's the king, and he did it in the hardest era when when you you know no containment seats, no safer barriers. He did it when you had to be a man behind the wheel. There's no question about that, and I love him. It's not NASCAR without having that king here. Every time Seven he's days here, he's going to smile on your face. Yeah, excuse me, Clint, and then obviously there's Denny Ham. But all right, let's get back to driver introductions and check back in with Gabriel Iglesias. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your top 20 drivers. Stuart Haas and the Wood Brothers are going toe-to-toe -to -toe in row number 10. 
Zane Smith is running row nine with three-time Daytona 500 champion, Denny Hamlin. Put some respect on that name. Now row eight, Martin Truex Jr. and Bubba Wallace lined up side by side. In lucky row number seven, it's Todd Gilliland. And it is the legend, the closer, Mr. Kevin Harvick. We got Corey LaJoy and the 2021 Daytona 500 champion, Michael McDowell, rocking row number six. A pair of teammates share the fifth row. Will team owner, Bad Brad, finally earn his first Daytona 500 victory? Or will Chris Busher find his way to the winner's circle? On to row number four with 2020 champ, Chase Elliott, who races beside Ryan Blaney, number 12. And if your top three alarms are ringing, it's because we've got Christopher Bell and reigning Daytona 500. 500 champion, Mr. Austin Centric. Row two features Eric Almarola and Joey Logano. And leading the pack to the green, it's Kyle Larson and your pole sitter, the showman, Alex Bowman. It's going to be a speedy race. Arriba! Thanks, Gabriel. Yeah, Alex Bowman on the pole. By the way, the last time a pole winner won the Daytona 500, it was 2000. That was Dale Jarrett. So let's check at the Fox Bet odds. And this is how it's shifted through the course of the week. Yeah, you guys take a look. Give me a quick thought on the favorites that we see on the board. Take one, Jamie. Yeah, I'm going to go with Ryan Blaney. You see him at the top. I think he currently is one of the top two or three super speedway drivers in the series. What a layup. Bet Everybody's ever, all about hey. making money, Betty. Brad Keselowski's my guy. Plus 2,000 all the way. Six ball coming your way. All right, and what's going on? I ahead. picked Eric Amarola for my favorite, but the, the long shot, how do you not pick Kevin Harvick? I mean, it's his last attempt at the Daytona 500, and he wants this really bad. Well, so that Clint doesn't criticize him, I'm going to go with Christopher Bell on that. He was one of the hottest drivers at the end of last season. I'm going to take the underdog. You, I can't believe we're calling Martin Truex Jr. the underdog. Never won on a plate track. Martin Truex Jr. is my man. Plus 2,500. I'm going to make all the money with these boys. And then there's drivers, and we've talked about super speedway specialists in a sense. I mean, Eric Almarola came close to winning this, right, with your Stuart Haas uh, Ford group. You mentioned Ryan Ryan Blaney has run well. He led the most laps of any driver last year that didn't have a cup win. So of those groups, who do you think fights towards the finish? Can you give me a couple of names beyond some of the winners you thought? I mean, who are we going to see at the end of this? And give me a, give me a surprise guy. There's Eric Almarola. I'm going to go with him. I think Eric, Eric Almarola, all the way, he's been smooth. He's been steady. He's been so close. Austin Dillon knocked him out of the way and won his Daytona 500. He won his duel. Eric Almarola, I'm telling you, he's hot. But Joey Logano's got to be on that list as well. One, one of his duels. He's been a factor in just about every race. Great super speedway driver. And, Tony, if you're running with a guy and you know it's Denny Hamlin versus, and I'm not picking on anybody, but somebody who hasn't proven themselves in this race, right, or a super speedway, do they get left behind? Well, I think Austin Haley's a guy that, that has run well and just hasn't really been out front of everybody, but he's one of those guys that if yep. he has a decent car and he puts himself in the right positions, he can sit there and surprise people. That's a cool thing about this race. It's unpredictable. I'm telling you, attrition's such a big part of it. You get down to the end, you look over your shoulder. I'll never forget when Michael McDowell won that race. Yeah. It was that quick, and uh-oh, Michael McDowell just won this, baby. <laughs> it's the most important race, and yet you can have a rookie win. You can have an 80-to-1 shot, and uh, we'll be watching to the very end. All right, Tony and Clint head up to the broadcast booth to join Mike Joy. Have a great call, yeah, 500 luck, miles. Fun. Jamie McMurray and I will be hanging out down here. Let's head down to the track at Michael Waltrip. Michael? It's the grid walk, Chris, and I'm here with Bubba Wallace, Stephanie Beaches, and I got a question. Can we talk about Bruno? Oh, no, we don't talk about Bruno. No, no, no. Can, can we talk about Bubba? Let's talk about him. He's right here. Yeah, I see on your Instagram you're a big Bubba fan, as am I. So uh, you got any advice for him today? Stay calm. Don't pee your pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually great advice. Yeah, great I, advice. I tell you, as an older driver, yeah. I did that a few times. Yeah, I have not, so I'm not going to ever. Uh, beautiful car, beautiful day. Yeah. Tell me how good it feels, the vibe. It's, this is great. This is the best I've woken up for a Daytona 500, and that means a lot. It means a lot for our team. McDonald's on our car here. They deserve a win here at the Daytona 500, so we'll get it. You've been close, pulling for you. Nice to meet you. No, no, no. No, no, no. All right, I'm on my way. Find a couple of USFL coaches. This is going to be cool. My buddy Skip Holtz won it all last year. How about that? 11 and 1, took the championship down. John DiFilippo. That's fun to say, DiFilippo. You say it. DiFilippo. He says it better. Uh, how did it feel winning that first season on Fox? You know, it was an unbelievable on Fox. It was just an incredible experience, ready for season, season two. Yeah, you going to take him down? 100%, twice. Oh, you're in trouble, brother. <laughs> twice, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, Denny. It's your old buddy, Mike. Hey, Mike. How are you? I'm doing good. Did you see the USL, USFL coaches? They were a lot of fun. I love the USFL. They're, they're like the other L NFL, but only less rules, which is awesome. That's awesome on Fox. Hi, Taylor. Hi. Say hi to America. Hi, Molly. Hi. Good luck, buddy. I'm pulling for <laughs> Thank you. you. Uh, here we go. I've been waved on. I got to run like this because my, my microphone will fall off my pants if I don't. Nola, I love your hat, brother. Thank you, thank you. Bring it in here. Hell yeah, we're getting ready to go here at uh, Daytona 500. I can't wait. I just scanned the square and the, and the fan zone got me some Wendy's right there. Scan that, race fans. We're ready to go uh, with Wendy's at Daytona 500. It doesn't get much better than this. Can, can I have a burger? I'll, I'll take it to I'll take it to one of the drivers and see if somebody's hungry. Yeah, eat that. There we go. How's mm -hmm. that look? Oh, yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Have some fun. I'm gonna. I'm cheering for you. You're my underdog to win it all. Thank you, buddy. Here we go. This burger is right. Hello, Mimi Migo. Good to see you. It's a cheeseburger. <laughs> Uh, Noah gave it to me. How you feeling? I feel great, man. How are you feeling? Have you ever felt more energy at a racetrack in your life? This is crazy, you know? Like, look at, look at, wherever you look, it's full of people. So much energy, so much excitement. We've been here already for six days, and finally, today is the day to run the Daytona 500, and I'm ready. I'm ready, too. Let's throw it down to opening ceremonies and Adam Alexander. Let's go, amigo. Let's go. You got it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise as you are able and remove your hats as the Robertsdale High School Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer today's invocation, representing Advent Health of Central Florida, please welcome Chaplain Farzad Norian. Lord God, we pause for a moment this afternoon to acknowledge you and ask for a sense of your presence to be with us. Please protect our drivers in the race today, our crew members, our fans, officials, and their families. And please protect and bless our men and women in the military and law enforcement. And Lord, please bless their families. For these things we ask in Christ's name, amen. Here to perform today's national anthem, please welcome platinum artist and songwriter, Breland. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming. Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting still there oh say does that star spangled banner yeah, wave oh the land of the free and the home of the brave of our national anthem along with the United States Air Force Thunderbirds for today's flyover. In the more than 75 year history of NASCAR, no race has had more exciting moments than the Daytona 500. Moments that have included iconic stock cars across the decades. 
What if we could put them together all at once into the greatest lap ever turned here at the World Center of Racing? Well, now we can. Good luck. <laughs> 65 years of the great American race, the Daytona 500. This starting grid is unlike any other with the greatest racing legends taking one more unforgettable lap. Leading the pack is Lee Petty, the number 42, side by side with his son, Richard. And who could forget the 1979 Daytona 500? Gail Yarborough and Donnie Allison certainly won't. He gave us the second most famous words in racing. And there's a fight. How about the Dale and Dale show in 1993? The intimidator, Dale Earnhardt, had his moment in 1998, finally crossed the sport's biggest crown jewel off the list. And the incredible celebration is a moment that is cherished by so many. And coming down the backstretch is two-time 500 winner, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And look who his drafting partner is. What other race do you do the icky shuffle after a win, right, D.W.? Oh, I won the Daytona 500! I won the Daytona 500! Three-time winners, first-time winners, photo finishes. This race has had it all. But as the greatest lap ever comes down the front stretch, look who's out ahead of all of them. Richard Petty. Now this is an ending fit for the king. Go, go. And there you have it. Give it up for the king, Richard Petty, as he walks away with a checkered flag and the greatest lap. Special thanks to Trace Atkins. The greatest lap coming up live. The greatest race. It's good to be back. 75 years ago, at a hotel five miles from where we stand, a group led by Bill France Sr. laid the groundwork for NASCAR. Let's take a look back at some of the sport's most iconic moments with the premiere of NASCAR's 75th anniversary campaign. One minute, we're doing 110 down a sandy beach in Florida. And the next, we're bumper to bumper and over 210 on a super speedway. Yeah, come on. How the heck we get here? Progress. That's how. Up into the white flag and Labonte takes the lead. 75 years of twisted metal, feet made of lead. He taps it. Clashing. Tail hits him. They're out of it. Hey. Fighting for everything. <laughs> Not giving away an inch. This is about 75 years of legends and their rocket ships. Each one built with one thing in mind. Here they come to the line. Get out front. Stay out there. Side by side. Because out there is where the future is. And if the first 75 years is any indication, you better brace yourself for the next 75. NASCAR, always forward. And now, let's welcome members of the founding family of NASCAR. Jim France, Lisa France Kennedy, and Ben Kennedy, joined by NASCAR President Steve Phelps. NASCAR fans, welcome to the 65th running of the great American race, the Daytona 500. This year's Daytona 500 has added significance because it is our 75th anniversary season. We've seen a lot of changes in 75 years, changes to our tracks, changes to our race cars, but the one thing that has remained constant is the most amazing fans in the world, and those are NASCAR fans. They are loyal, they are passionate, and they always stick with NASCAR. So on behalf of the France family and the entire NASCAR community, 
I want to say thank you for your unwavering support of our great sport. Enjoy the great American race. Thank you, Steve. And now it's time to fire the engines for the 75th season of NASCAR. It's the 65th running of the Daytona 500. We've got several legends with us here today who have won both the Cup Series Championship and the Great American Race. They're going to give the command for today's event. Let's say hello to them now. A seven-time champion and seven Daytona 500 victories by the King, Richard Petty. He's a three-time Daytona 500 champion and the 1983 Cup Series champion. Welcome, Bobby Allison. Here he is, two-time Daytona 500 champ and the 1988 Cup Series champion, Bill Elliott. And now, three-time Daytona 500 champion and the man that got the title in 1999, say hello to Dale Jarrett. Next up, three-time Cup Series champion and a four-time Cup Series champion, Jeff Gordon. And now, seven-time NASCAR Cup Series champion and the two-time Daytona 500 winner, Jimmy Johnson. Ready to start his final season, the 2007 Daytona 500 champ and 2014 Cup Series champion, Kevin Harvick. The 2017 Daytona 500 champion and 2004 Cup Series champion, Kurt Busch. And the 2015 Daytona 500 champion and two-time Cup Series champ, Joey Logano. Gentlemen, let's get those engines fired up. who could not attend, Cale Yarbrough, Darrell Waltrip, and Matt Ketson. Forty drivers, eight champions of NASCAR. At the end of the day, one Daytona 500 champ. Sure, we see beauty. But never forget, we crave motion. From the moment we're born, we want to go. And we want to go faster. Stock car race at Daytona Beach, on the sand, along the dune road, and around the turns, and don't spare the horses. That longing for the sudden and the swift has been the starting line for NASCAR for the last 75 years. From the first beach road race in 1948 with Red Byron's Ford taking first, to the first strictly stock car race in Charlotte a year later where Jim Roper won, and the pole speed was 68 miles an hour. All right, boss. Fired up. Ready. All right, nice. Smooth start here. Across three quarters of a century, Pace of progress has been the engine of obsession. Chased by the blur and caught in the roar. Turned over. Hang on here, man. Hang. Hang. And who drove us there? The legends. Richard Petty takes the checkered flag. The one that they've done about it. Dan Earnhardt will win the Daytona. They all embody our ancient impulse. The rush of adrenaline, the surge in blood pressure, the need. For speed. Everything you got here, roll. Go, 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 go. 
And if you have any doubt, just remember, even your heart knows how to race. A few miles inland from Daytona Beach, the Daytona International Speedway plays host to the greatest day of stock car racing in this or any year. It's the 65th Daytona 500 on Fox. U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds continue to entertain the crowd as the drivers climb aboard and get ready to roll off that starting grid and into history. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Joy alongside Hall of Famer Tony Stewart, who led the white flag lap here 15 years ago, and Clint Boyer, who 13 years ago led at the race's final red flag, but they patched the asphalt, and he finished fourth. No one knows better than these two gentlemen how important today is or what it might mean to win the Daytona 500. The Daytona 500, the greatest day of them all. This is the granddaddy of them all, the high banks of Daytona. Ever since I've been able to hold a steering wheel in my hand, this this is the racetrack that I aspired to get to. Finally, when I got on that track, I wanted to win this baby. I want to win the track that changes your life. You win the Daytona 500 forever. You walk into a restaurant, you're a Daytona 500 champion, and you get to win it in front of the biggest crowd you've ever seen. Absolutely, and these guys, right now, everybody's in there. They're in their happy place right now, but it's getting ready to get chaotic. But to Clint's point, this is, this is a race that can change your life forever. The guy that wins this race tonight, it's just it's just a feeling. It's hard to explain. I have got goosebumps talking about it just because I know how close we came a couple times, and I know you and I have both yeah. been in the field. To sit here today, we're up in the booth. We're going to talk about the race. These guys rolling out. They have a chance to create history today and be a part of something that's legendary. And how hard it is to win this race. Everything has to be perfect. Not good, Mike, perfect, everything. You have to have a perfect race car. You have to make the perfect moves. You have to survive the carnage, the wrecks, the big one. You have to get to the end and then you have to have that magical push, that magical help behind you, the perfect help to pu uh, push you off a of turn four and win this race. Well, we're not an AFib, but as Tom Rinaldi said, our hearts are racing <laughs> and we're ready to get to it. So let's have a look at the starting lineup for the Daytona 500. On the front row, set Wednesday night in time trials, Alex Bowman, a record sixth front row start, and Kyle Larson, the 2021 series champ. Row two, Joey Logano won the 500 in 2015, and Eric Almarola won his dual race. He's come close before. Christopher Bell, a three-time race winner last year, and Austin Sendrick, last year's 500 winner. Ryan Blaney, a two-time runner-up, and Chase Elliott, most popular driver and the 2020 series champion. Chris Buescher, the Xfinity champion of 2015, and Brad Keselowski, the 2012 Cup champ. Michael McDowell won this race in a chaotic fashion in 2021, and Corey LaJoy has been top 10 in two of his last three 500s. Row 7, Kevin Harvick, the 2007 winner, starting his final 500, and Todd Gilliland, who ran up front here Thursday night. Let's dial up Kevin Harvick here. Hey, Harv, it's your boss up in the booth. You got me? Yes, sir. Well, you got to be a part of the uh, opening ceremonies and give the command to start engines, but now you're in your office where your happy place is. How you feel about today? I feel really good. You know, I think as, as we've gone through the whole winter and laid everything out, now we finally get the reward of uh, being able to sit in this race car. So I'm honored to drive this push light Ford Mustang in what is our sport's biggest race. So. One last time, and, you know, based on everything that, that's happened during the week and, and uh, the way the qualifying races went, we just got to keep this baby rolling and see if we can have a chance at the end. So, appreciate the fast car, and hopefully we can keep it around to have a chance to win this thing. Well, enjoy every moment of it, bud, and uh, best of luck to you, man. I want to celebrate with you later. I appreciate it. Thank you. Kevin Harvick will start 13th. Let's pick up at row eight, Bubba Wallace, a two-time 500 runner-up, and Martin Truex Jr., the 2017 Cup champion. Row nine, rookie Zane Smith, the Truck Series champ, and Denny Hamlin, a three-time 500 winner. Then Harrison Burton, second-year driver for the Wood Brothers, who have five 500 wins, and Ryan Priest, who's been top 10 in two of his three 500 starts. William Byron won here in the summer of 2020, and rookie Noah Gregson had eight Xfinity Series wins last year. 
Ross Chastain, runner-up for the championship last year, and Daniel Suarez, the Sonoma winner, teammates in row 12. Eric Jones in row 13, won here in the summer of 18. Tyler Reddick with a new team had three victories last year. Austin Dillon, the 2018 winner, and Justin Haley, the summer race winner here in 2019. A.J. Allmendinger makes his first start in the 500 since 2018. It's his 10th. Chase Briscoe finished third last year. Ricky Stenhouse, the summer winner here in 2017, and B.J. McLeod was seventh here last summer. Ty Gibbs, the Xfinity Series champion of NASCAR. Connor Daly's raced in nine Indy 500s. This is his first Daytona. Cody Ware was sixth here last summer. Kyle Busch, two-time series champion with a new race team this year. Ty Dillon makes his eighth Daytona 500 start while Riley Herbst makes his first. And out back, getting into the field on speed. Seven-time cup champ and two-time Daytona 500 winner Jimmy Johnson, rally car champion and X Games gold medalist Travis Pastrana. Let's check in with old seven-time. How about you, seven-time Jimmy Johnson? You're back. It's Boyer and the boys up in the Fox Sports booth. You got us? Yeah, buddy, lots clear. Well, it's same same numbers, different sequence, but same old Jimmy Johnson. Seven times you've won this thing. We've been here 20 years. It's going to be your 20th time attempting the Daytona 500. Tell me about what your feelings are. Man, I'm excited. I guess I'm officially old, too, as well. But uh, what an opportunity. Huge thank you to Carvana, Chevrolet, everybody at Legacy Motor Club. Special day, and uh, lo really looking forward to taking advantage of this opportunity today and having a great time. Well, we've all learned not to count you out, boy. Get it done. We'll be watching. Hey, I appreciate it, buddy. He was the 48, now the 84 with his part-time return to NASCAR. Today, Fox Bet Super 6 giving everybody a chance to win $25,000 of Clint's cash. Oh, man. All you need to do is download the free Super 6 app on your phone, then enter your six predictions for today's Daytona 500 race. Easy, right? If all six picks are right, you could win big. All right, let's get down to Pit Road for late breaking stories, beginning with Jamie Little. Well, Mike Martin Truex Jr. is a man on a mission here at Daytona. After almost walking away from the sport last year and not winning a single race, he has a new fire in his belly. He comes to Daytona ready to win this race. It's something he has never done. He's never even won on a super speedway race. And sure, you can count him in. He's going to be a factor at some point, but can he get the job done? And hey, if you're a numerology person, he's the one that told me this. The 19 car racing on February 19th in his 19th Daytona 500. I don't know. Regan Smith? Jamie, there is no more friendly driver in the garage area than 2022 Series champion Joey Logano. But that is with the helmet off. When the helmet goes on, there is no more fierce, intense race car driver in the sport than Joey Logano. As a matter of fact, in his own words, he's two-faced. He will do anything it takes to get a victory for his race team. He did just that Thursday night in the duels, winning. That puts him in the third starting position for today. He feels good about that 22 car. It's been fast. Look at him today as he tries to get his second Daytona 500 victory. Josh Sims? Well, Regan, it's the start of a brand new chapter for two-time Cup Series champion Kyle Busch, who admittedly thought he was going to end his career with Joe Gibbs Racing. Life has a funny way of throwing a curveball at you, and here he is in his first season now in the eight car for RCR. And speaking of curveballs, the other day, he said he had a car good enough to finally win the Daytona 500. Well, that car got wrecked during his duel, went to the backup, so he's going to have to start from the back of the field, but he said that car just as strong as all the same tendencies. Now the last thing to do, finally win the Great American Race, guys. Thanks, Josh. Before we wave the green flag for the Daytona 500, here's the Toyota rev up to green. For the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series season, two new and young faces are behind the wheel of Toyota Camry TRDs, Ty Gibbs and Tyler Reddick. Joining other young TRD drivers, Christopher Bell and Bubba Wallace, this group will be vying for wins and championships in the years to come. Stabled alongside three-time Daytona 500 winner Denny Hamlin and Cup Series champion Martin Truex Jr., Toyota's future continues to be bright. Let's go places. Ready to go racing in Daytona Beach. The honorary pace cars headed for pit road. 
and all of the team drivers will check their pit road speeds this time by. Let's check in with our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Well, Mike, all 40 of these crew chiefs, they go into this race with a game plan when they want to make their pit stops throughout this 500-mile race. But like a good head football coach, you have to be willing to adjust that game plan based on circumstances. Now, with the fuel window being about 42 to 46 laps, what we'll be watching for, drivers and teams within a certain manufacturer working together. But to do it together on these green flag pit stops, you have to execute and you have to be mistake-free and Mike, that could be the key to victory lane. Thanks, Larry. Beautiful day in Daytona Beach. Some big, heavy clouds off to the west and northwest. 74 degrees. Winds out of the southeast at 5 will hopefully keep those clouds away. Track temp, 90 degrees. Let's listen in on Travis Pastrana and company. Hey, boys. We're really doing it. We're on the Daytona 500. Catalina wine mixture. Let's go. <laughs> How about Joey Logano? Brad Marshall, uh, this thing will look good down there in the winter circle. So uh, we're all up here rooting for you. Good luck. Might be the only person ever to start the race and win the race. That'd be cool. <laughs> Do what we did last year. The Europe champions again. That was the captain, Roger Penske, giving well wishes to the leader of his team. Bubba Wallace. Wallace. Not all the burgers this weekend. Right, it's been McDonald's and Wendy's all over the place. I control my heart. No prisoners. I'll let you over to handle it. Very simple. Booty Barker, his crew chief. Michael Jordan, his co-car owner with a hospitality area over on the back stretch. Uh, heard Derek Cheater stop by over Hi. there. Everybody's here. It's a Daytona 500. The green flag for today's race has already experienced 9.0 G's. Jimmy Johnson had it with him when he flew with the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds this week. American stand-up comedian and actress Tiffany Haddish will have that green flag in hand as the field comes off the east banking and turn four down the short chute and things get very silent as we await the green flag. Pull them belts tight one last time, boys. Light the fires. Showtime. And the 65th Daytona 500 is underway. Five and 22 are connected better to the bottom, right? With you out back. Still in line. Five and 22 are connected. Right with you. Right, with the U run will come back. There's a one gap behind the 22. They're released down there, still half off of you. Half your lane. Your help is clear to the bottom, still half your lane. Bottom coming back by two to the other run. One back, you're still clear now. Alex Bowman spotter Kevin Hamlin doing air traffic control as they come to near 200 miles an hour, completing lap one. Led by Kyle Larson. You hear those spotters, that communication is so crucial to every move these drivers will make all day long. Tony, so many times you're looking out of the different glass than most people think. That windshield, what's going on in the windshield, you kind of just glance out and see that. But what's in that back glass out of that rear view mirror, that's where all the juice is. And listening to that spotter, that is the guy that has given you all the information that you need to make your decisions as a driver inside that car. You can't see two, three rows behind. You can't see energy building up. So you have to rely on that spotter. That spotter is your best friend for 500 miles. Yeah, trust. And, and we've built that trust. Some of these guys have been with each other for years. Some of them, like, just like Jimmy Johnson, he worked with the same spotter Earl forever, his whole career. Different one this time. Got to have that trust. When he says clear, you got to trust it and do it now. So why are we pace car formation at near 200 miles an hour? <laughs> because nobody can break free and nobody can get far enough out to really make a big maneuver at this point. Cloud cover, 
You know, it's cooled off just a little bit here. Track's got a lot of grip, and these tires are brand new. As they start to wear out, you'll start to slip and slide around. Drivers were talking about being tight right there off of turn four that you see. As if things start to move around, start slipping and sliding around, it's going to separate this field. And then you start figuring out who's got the fast, hot rods and who doesn't, who needs work to do. A driver might say, hey, I'm only two seconds back of the leader. And his crew chief would say, yes, but you're 36. No different than a traffic jam in New York City. You've got to figure out a way to make it happen. You can get through there. you just got to be methodical about it. The biggest thing is, again, look at your temperatures. Telling your crew chief, if you have handling issues, you need to nip that in the bud right now. You need to get it behind you as soon as you get on. If you have any kind of handling issue whatsoever, balance-wise, and they can fix it, a first pit stop would be sure. I'd be yelling at Larry, fix this, baby. Can't be having this later in the race. Versus the other races we go to, they've had two practice sessions since qualifying. So they've had a chance to, to get their balance the way they like it. Talk to a lot of drivers, and everybody seems to be pretty happy with their car. Some of them are hoping for a little more speed, but they like the balance, and that's really critical. This is the hottest part of the day for these guys, so this is where handling is going to be the most crucial. First little breakaway of the race, Kyle Larson got about two car lengths out in front. And all that did was bring the pack right back to him, bumper to bumper. Big pushes out of the back of his car by Joe Logano. You're going to see that a lot. You have to be careful with those pushes. The Fords, all, all, you, uh, all weekend long, we've seen the Fords have been able to push harder on the rear bumpers of the car in front of them. You see the 10 car, Eric Emeril, pulling right up to the back of Bowman. Have to be careful of those pushes. Don't be too aggressive. You can spin them out. And the two front row starters remain side by side. Alex Bowman has the overall record in that purple Rick Hendrick Chevrolet for six consecutive front row starts in this race. Last year's pulser Kyle Larson on point is uh, Bowman's teammate. We saw Alex in his qualifying race. He got out of that pack in a hurry. Did not like the way his car drove. It had speed for qualifying, but it didn't have balance for the race. That's the good thing about the last two days, getting the opportunity for him and his crew chief to look at the other cars, look at Kyle Larson's car, look at Chase Elliott's car, and try to figure out what is the combination to get him most comfortable to where he can lead like this. Kevin Harvick, watch these cow flaps flip up on Joey Logano on the front. He said, you're not doing a good enough job pushing if them cow flaps aren't. That's uh, negative air pressure on there, pulls those cow flaps up. As he gets away from Kyle Larson in front of him, you won't. But as soon as he gets close enough, watch his cow flap. He needs to get closer, Tony. I'm trying to show <laughs> the world. He's not there yet. There he is. Now watch this. See it starting to flip right there? It's that neutral pressure in the cow of that race car. There's some Joey Logano audio. And just so you know, the five lifted every time in the corner. So like 60% that one third mark. He's trying to keep us too wide, I think. It's good intel. It's got to save fuel, too. You know, when you're running at the front of the pack and you're pulling this charge, you are wide open. You have to be. They'll run you over, right? But if you're back there mid-pack, Tony, you can just be 30, 40, you know, 50 percent sometimes. Let's get an update on the pole sitter from Jamie. Well, Mike, you guys were talking about Alex Bowman. They did have a different direction than their teammates coming in. They wanted this pole. They focused only on qualifying. It wasn't until Friday they actually put it in race trim just to see what they have. I was told they practiced aggressively to make sure they had something good that they could lead with, that the car was balanced, it drove well, and it was comfortable. Checked all those boxes, Mike. Good enough for now, absolutely. Okay, if you watch iRacing or if you play iRacing, you all run around Daytona three wide on the safety of your computer. Why isn't somebody going out making the third lane trying to make something happen? Well, you said it. There's no reset out here. That resets in the in the infield care center with some guy standing at you okay checking your vitals. You don't have that in iRacing. This Very is a good deal. point. And after the qualifying races, talking to a lot of the drivers, as soon as you get out, these cars have so much drag in them to get all the way on and out outside. I don't know that you can carry the momentum. I think there's going to be parts of the race where it will come into play, but this is way too early to really worry about getting three wide. These guys are wanting to settle in. They're wanting to get some laps on these tires. Like Clint mentioned, they got stickers. They want to sit there and try to just figure out what their balance is, settle in. They got a long day ahead of them still. 
nine laps complete. Alex Bowman has led eight of them after Kyle Larson led the first. The pageantry, the air show is over. Down to business in the Daytona 500. Welcome back to Daytona, where Christopher Bell has taken the lead from Kyle Larson. Let's take a closer look at this steep banking at Daytona with Larry McReynolds and the Toyota Cutaway car. Yeah, Mike, we certainly see cars spin out and get wrecked in the corners, but we see a lot of cars spin out and get wrecked on the straightaways here at Daytona. Let's use our Toyota cutaway car. When it's in the corners, it's in 31 degrees of banking. The car is really loaded and pushed into the racetrack. But as it transitions off of turn two onto the flatter backstretch, it only has three degrees of banking. The car is light. It's not loaded. It doesn't have as much grip in the race car. That's why we see a car that just gets into another car because the car's light, spins it out. Maybe we even see the big one just like we did last night at the end of that Xfinity Series race. Thanks, Larry. 13 complete. Christopher Bell on the top side made a wide high move off turn number four, and it's the first time a Toyota has led in the Cup Series in Speed Week so far. They've been sneaky. Make no mistake about it. They always have the handling and the speed to get the job done here. Look no further than Denny Hamlin, but I'm telling you, Christopher Bell just keeps knocking on that door harder and harder and harder. It does surprises me none at all to see him leading this pack. I'm going to go back to what Larry said real quick. He said the car gets light up off of it, and all the guys have been talking about it. Sometimes you, if, you're, if your balance is loose, Tony, that thing really wants to step out. We saw that with the trucks and the Xfinity. But these guys have been talking about floating the nose and being tight. Absolutely. And, and the two key areas of that in the corners are the entry and the exit. That's where you kind of go up and over the crown to get into the banking. And then same thing on the exit, especially the exit. If your car's tight at all, it gets to that. The front end just gets tight. And then as soon as the right front catches, then it shears the back loose. And so that creates a big handful for these guys. Well, two laps ago, Joey Logano's number 22 got a little impatient with Kyle Larson on the inside here. Ooh, good push into three, but the Kyle problem... got loose. Now look at the run that Christopher Bell got. That is exactly why Christopher Bell got the lead. That'll get your attention. And that's a really good illustration of what I talked to some crew chiefs. The way the drivers were talking about it, it used to be we wanted to kind of flank off that right hand side because what it did is it trapped the air to the right corner. Now, because of the skew in the cars and the cars are, the bodies are already pointed to the outside. When they get pushing on that corner, it just leverages it around even more. So they really want to be centered up for that push or even a little bit to the left now. And Logano's reaction to that was. Now you know. Lesson learned. Let's get an update on Kyle Larson. Yeah, and the five of Kyle Larson has a car that, although they qualified up front, they've been working on that thing all week long to get it where they want it for drafting. And you see Joey Logano, as you guys just showed, keeps giving him those pushes. When well, they came over the radio, asked him, are you still good with the pushes you're getting from the 22? He simply said, yep, and that was all. <laughs> yeah, guys, I've been watching the throttle on Kyle Larson in the five. He is not really wide open at all anywhere around this racetrack. He keeps backing that car up to be able to get those pushes from the 22 car. Here is Larson's telemetry. Plenty of throttle, no hint of break as Christopher Bell from Norman, Oklahoma. Midget and sprint car star before coming to the Xfinity and up to the Cup Series with Joe Gibbs Racing. Outside eight. Got a gap of two behind him at the 31. Don't go. Back at 25th, Eric Jones. 23rd, Harrison Burton. In the middle of this snarling pack. Well, Mike, you've been talking about the 22 at Joey Logano. That race car ran a lot of practice the past two days. More practice than you would think for a car that won his duel. They weren't overly happy with the handling of it. Crew Chief Paul Rolf said 
they made some significant changes to get a little better to connect the corner for today. So far, that has worked out. Only in certain circumstances, that race car gets loose on him. Otherwise, he's happy with it. Max Regan, Bell continues out front of Alex Bowman. We welcome Guns N' Roses to the NASCAR jungle this weekend. They're on the 43 car, and they're going on tour this summer. Keep watching for more. Best looking hot rod on the track. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota, Let's Go Places, and by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express Card. 21 laps complete, aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. Kyle Larson leading Joey Logano and Christopher Bell, Chevy Ford Toyota in that order. Now I got one for you. Biggest movers of the race, folks. No, no further than the 84 of Jimmy Johnson. I thought he'd learn and uh, take his time with this. He's already moving to the front. Here he comes, seven time. <laughs> Johnson and Kyle Busch, each up almost 10 spots from starting in the last two rows of this 40 car field. Well, we talked about it. They start slipping and sliding around. You're 23 laps into this stage. This is where you start getting some handling woes, and you see the guys that are maybe trying to bail out, but they're, they're still handling well. Jimmy likes what he feels. Ty Gibbs likes what he feels. Reddick's on the way. These boys are coming. Now, take a look at the third car on the outside. That's the number 10 of Eric Almarola in a Stuart Haas Ford. He won his dual race here Thursday night. Regan. Mike, one of the fastest cars all weekend long, but from the driver's seat right now, already some concerns over something he's seeing out the front windshield. I got the hood gasket trying to blow out on the left side. So that's not the cow flaps that we were talking about on the 22 car. That's actually on the side of the hoods itself. In between the, the hood and the fender, there's actually a gasket in there. And those hoods get to bouncing around in that neutral air. If you bounce around too much, spits that gasket out. Might be a problem for them. They could probably tape that thing down and remedy the problem in the pits. And Jimmy Johnson has moved up 11 spots since the start of this race. Jamie. Mike, it's hard to believe he's been away from our sport for two years. He was racing Indy cars, though, and he got in this car the other night for qualifying, and he had a smile on his face and said, I'm back, boys. This just feels like home. They worked on the car, made good progress, and it's showing up 11 spots, as you mentioned. He's in 27th position right now. Ty Gibbs, the rookie and Xfinity champion, has moved up plus 12 from where he started all the way to 21st. We saw a little three wide racing in mid pack, but not much. Things have kind of shuffled back to double five. Well, yeah, you're exactly right. And we talked about Jimmy Johnson, Ty Gibbs, you know, Tyler Reddick moving up. Well, okay, who went back? Ross Chastain, Zane Smith, Gilliland. You gotta, you gotta ride. We talked about riding 500 miles. You gotta survive. If you're handling, you know, is, is going away right here. Dip down to the back, ride in a place you can. And I think that's what was creating some of that three wide. Just a little bit of shuffling. I won't ask Tony since he's a Ford team owner, but Toyota Clint had not led a lap all week until now. Christopher Bell out front. Was that a smoke screen? <laughs> well, hey, the Fords have been fast. Strength in numbers. We talked about that. But you can never count out the, the, the guy that you, you know, you can't ever forecast who's going to surprise you. And it didn't surprise me one bit that that Gibbs camp showed up. Talk about it. Look at his teammate. Ty Gibbs is moving well. Those cars are going to be fast. I haven't won three of these Daytona 500s with Denny Hamlin for nothing. Well, and we also mentioned that it's different when you split this field in half and you run the qualifying races with half the field. You split the majority of those Toyotas up, so there's not a lot of numbers, physical numbers to begin with, but then when you split them up into two even smaller groups, that hurts them in the qualifying races. Now with the entire field back intact, now they're in an even stake with everybody. That's yeah. such a great point, and it's easy to overlook, Mike. When you're running those dual races and, you know, they, as little of practice as you have when you come down here to Daytona, the only thing you have to go off of to build that notebook is those duels. When you get out here with the whole pack, the air, the movement, everything else is way more amplified. Any little bit of a problem you ever was uh, struggling with, it's going to be way worse now. 
How fast is fast? Let's look at our Xfinity fastest lap of the race as Ty Dillon is on the apron. Smoke coming out the pipes. Ty Gibbs fastest lap of the race, 46.42. Ross Chastain, Connor Daly, Cody Ware up from the back end. Eric Jones, 27 green flag laps complete. Christopher Bell's Toyota in front of Kyle Larson and Alex Bowman's Chevrolet's, Joey Logano's and Eric Almirola's Ford's. final season bush lights giving away fifty thousand dollars toward one lucky fans retirement and more huge prizes follow at bush beer on twitter and tweet hashtag bush 401k and hashtag sweepstakes during every lap that ends in a four for your chance to win Harb riding uh, 16th right now. Christopher Bell leading. Alex Bowman, Kyle Larson, Eric Almirola. They've been the front four most all day, along with Joey Logano. Last year's winner, Austin Sindrick, and his teammate, Ryan Blaney, trading sixth and seventh. Corey LaJoy up for eighth with Chase Elliott, Brad Keselowski in the top ten. 32 green flag laps so far in this first of three stages. This one lasts 65 laps. So Larry Mack, when might we see them on pit road if we stay green? Yeah, Mike, as I noted at the top of the show, the fuel window is about 42 to 46 laps. I tried to talk to two or three crew chiefs from each manufacturer between yesterday and this morning. And I think once we get to about lap 35, that's when we'll start to see Manufacturers starting to peel off, but I think it's going to be a little bit of monkey see, monkey do. But one observation, a lot of those Fords are in that outside line right now. When you're side by side, two lanes like that, you got to be to the bottom before you make that green flag stop. Exactly, Larry. Usually when we see, you know, them talking about pitting, you know, two or three laps to go, they start formulating where they're at, try to find where their manufacturer teammates are so they can all pit together. They may not have this luxury. This this is a new one. If they don't get established pretty quick, they're going to be pitting with a bunch of people, and, and it might uh, be, be a lot of trouble here coming on the pit road. 34 green flag laps this time by Christopher Bell has just led his 18th lap of the race. And where is two time 500 winner Michael Waltrip? Where is Michael Chris? You know those, uh, excuse me, Mike, those grandstands are sold out. So what do the fans do as an option to that? Well, they watch it on Fox. As we got this big screen TV here, battle for the lead up front. They're watching on Fox, but they're also enjoying a hot dog and a cold beer, having a lot of fun in the fan zone. There's many different ways to take on the great American race. And this is a pretty good one right here, Mike. All right, have fun, Michael. All right, you're starting to see it. The 10 and the two. Almirola and Austin Sindrick already moved down from that outside line trying to get established. You can't be pitting from that outside. Got to be on the bottom. Pagano, Blaney Coming behind him. At the 50, you'll be leaving pit road down here. Yeah, Connor Daly has already made a pit stop a little early for a scheduled gas stop as he comes off pit road without benefit of the draft. Ty Dillon in the garage. And Christopher Bell out front. Kyle Larson and Christopher Bell have quite a history. When Larson went NASCAR racing, Christopher Bell took over Larson's USAC ride. They have been rivals for quite a while, open wheel and stock cars. I remember being in the motorhome at Atlanta Motor Speedway with Kyle Larson, and we were watching a dirt race from Calistoga, California, and he goes, you got to watch this guy, Christopher Bell. And I said, is he good? He goes, he's better than me. Oh, boy. That's Kyle Larson's words. Wow. Corey LaJoy has come to second place. Outspoken young driver, third generation star. His dad was a modified star in New England. Don, or his granddad, his dad Randy, was a Bush Series champion a couple times over and now runs Safer Racer, helping uh, short track racers have safer seating and driving environment. 
fact, Corey himself welded up the seats for my son's first race car. And now here he is in the Cup Series, in the top five, trying to win the Daytona 500. I'm seeing these Fords are waving. Them hands are waving. The Fords are coming, I'd say. Watch for all these Fords to try to find each other and peel off. What do the rest of them do? Remember, execution and no mistakes. That's a big key. The Fords fan out below the double yellow line. Logano, huge. Look at that. Pass his teammate, Austin Sidic. Regan. It was all about positioning and getting himself where he needed to be to get onto the bottom for the pit stop. And Eric Almirola, that race car right now, just a little bit too tight and bottoming out. Josh? Well, the six of Brad Keselowski is saying he's got good speed in that car, just a little bit tight off of four. Ryan Blaney in the 12 first pit stops of the year. Right sides right now, just a little bit tight on exit for Blaney. Good stop. 11 Fords all stopped in one group at lap 38. Learning what we learned at the duels, I'd say these other cars are going to be coming quick, and here they are. Boy, that was close. Regan. Corey LaJoy in the seven car, a strong run so far. He felt like this was coming today out of this race car, a lot of confidence in it, and knew that his competitors would be willing to work with him. Josh? Well, Kyle Busch has been working his way through the field after having to start in the back. He said it's just a one to two snug on that car, Jamie. Alex Bowman in the 43 started on pole for this race for the third time in his career. Pretty good overall, just doesn't want the seven of Corey LaJoy to push him. A little delayed there as they continue to fuel the 48. Noah Gregson's car did not have the lights on the dash properly timed to pit road speed. He was noticeably slower down pit road than the rest of that group. Well, I can tell you why, because he was noticeably faster coming on. Watch him over here. Here he comes. Makes a big move. Cuts a couple of them off, going extremely fast. Crash down the front straightaway, heading for pit road. Around goes the uh, Rick Ware no, Racing number 15 of no, no, rookie Riley Herbst. Not a crash, just a spin, and we stay green because he gets safely to pit road. Still green, very important. Josh. And the 20 of Christopher Bell has led a lot of laps. He's been really happy with his car so far. Everybody makes it onto and off pit road, and we stay green 39 laps into the Daytona 500. I knew that was gonna be an interesting one with everybody being jumbled up. And here's your new leader. He started last, he's running first. Travis Pastrana now comes to pit road. Pretty cool, lead your first lap of the Daytona 500. Down to pit road speed. As the rest of the field forms up after pit stops, your leader will be Denny Hamlin from Christopher Bell and Tyler Reddick. So Toyota wins the first round of green flag pit stops. Look at the run of the Fords, though. Here comes Eric Amarola and company, Cindric Blaney, Logano right behind him. Jimmy pulled up to make a block, and here they come. Commitment line violation for Riley Herbst when he spun at the entrance of pit road, so he'll have to do a pass-through penalty. 40 laps complete, 160 to go in the Daytona 500. Riley Hurts, that orange car on the left of your screen, locks up the rear brake, spins around coming to pit road, but no caution flag. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Grab an ice cold Coke Zero Sugar and cheer on your favorite member of the Coca-Cola racing family. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. 44 laps complete. That was Denny Hamlin, and let's get an update on the Coca-Cola Racing family. He is your leader. Our newest family member, Chase Elliott, 11th. Joey Logano. 
And if Suarez, Austin Dillon. Big shakeup on those pit stops, and the two big beneficiaries on pit stops were Chase Briscoe, that red Ford down to the inside, and the number eight of Kyle Busch in a Chevrolet. They chose to pit with the Toyotas instead of the other cars of their own brand. I think a lot of that was like we talked about, you can't pit from the outside. So if yeah. you're already out there and there's no room to get down, you just got to come in with the guys that are around you. And you can be more efficient. With all of that chaos of so many cars trying to pit from wherever they were, you saw Noah Gregson come from the outside all over the place. Just coming in with a small collected group, your performance can be better. Shows with Kyle Busch. Briscoe took two tires. That's how he vaulted from 33rd to the top five. And there's Kyle Busch, who is the biggest mover since the start, along with Briscoe, Tyler Reddick, Ty Gibbs, and Hamlin. This is our driver's eye camera. It is a tiny camera. You could stack, oh, half a dozen of them on your little fingernail. And it is mounted in the foam to the side of the driver's face uh, between his temples and the outer shell of the helmet. Pretty, pretty revolutionary, brand new technology, and we're happy to debut it this week. I literally had one in my hand the other day, and it is so cool to see how good the technology is, but to have this kind of access and see it exactly from the driver's perspective, that's something we haven't had in the past. Check out that camera, folks. This is something with this new car. We had it last year, but it's so cool to see how the old school drivers, maybe a guy like Kevin Harvey, Jimmy Johnson that's coming back to the sport after being gone for a couple years. He might be still with the old school uh, rear view mirror, but a lot of these guys, the used, new kids are going, excuse me, are using that camera. I'll get it out, Tony. <laughs> we're, we're starting to see that on passenger cars, too, a camera instead of a rear view mirror. Hamlin Briscoe. Travis Pastrana had to serve a penalty for driving through too many pit boxes on exit after his stop. Just a rookie mistake. 47 laps and one pit stop complete. Denny Hamlin, Chase Briscoe battle. After the events of Elimination Chamber, who remains on the road to WrestleMania? Plus, SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair goes face to face with the WrestleMania opponent Rhea Ripley. An all new Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. Charlotte Flair was an honorary race official here in Daytona today. So, our, one of our Super 6 questions, which of these drivers will have the best finish today? Here are the six. Take your pick. That's a tough pick, man. Daytona 500 winners. Brad Keselowski strong. Uh-oh, Bob Wallace on pit road. Dropped to the back of the pack, coming off turn number four. Wallace had moved to that top line to get from behind the 14, who he said was unsteady. Well, once he moved to the top line, he got hit into the fence and had to come pick, guys. Right side damage to Bubba Wallace. They'll put two tires on it, send it back out. He was running second and completes the stop. Need to make sure that didn't bend a toe link in the rear. Hit pretty hard. There it there is. The bump for Martin Turned Truex. him right into the wall. I'd say be able to get that man. That's a shot. That car's. I'd say if they can get it back to uh, to this end of the stage, they're going to be need to check the toe on that thing and maybe even toe link on the rear. So a little more. Here's a Wallace back out trying to get up to speed, and of course he has lost the draft. The uh, field will inhale him here in about a lap or two. Chase Briscoe, first car on the inside in that Ford, went from 33rd to the lead on pit stops after changing two tires like most of the racers did. Larry told us in break the reason he changed left side tires. When you come in the pits, the left sides are closer to the crew. They don't have to come around the car. They can change lefts faster than they can change rights. Sneaky good. Area. Good move. Jamie. to keep on strategy with the rest of the Chevrolet team. So now he's mired back mid-pack in 26th right now, saying his car's a little bit wiggly. 
Never too early. I, I can't believe I'm saying this because I never had this mentality, Tony. But never too early to start counting points. I didn't ever want to say when I in my driving career, I don't want to hear about it. This is the, my one chance at the biggest race of my career to win the Daytona 500. But I've been talking to Kyle Larson. I've heard Kevin Harvick talk about it. They're already thinking points. Absolutely. It's the competition keeps getting tighter and tighter every year. And as that happens, you have to start thinking backwards from the end. You can't wait till five races from the cutoff in the regular season to sit there and get yourself in position. So every one of these points matter, especially the bonus points going into the playoffs. Stage end at lap 65 and at lap 130. Last year, Martin Truex won both stages of the Daytona 500 and picked up those championship points. 55 laps complete. We're going to take you Fox side by side. You've read the books. You've loved the movies. Now, put yourself in the center of the magic. Relive the magic and fantasy of the world created in the Harry Potter books as you explore his world, but in a brand new story. The magical event of a generation is finally here. Rated T for Teen. Slices and sticks with half pizza, half Italian cheese sticks is back. So you'll never fight over dinner again. <sighs> Get hot and ready slices and sticks or order online for new jalapeno or bacon sticks. Pizza, pizza. Remember college? Five hour energy got you through then. And now? We'll get you through again. Rediscover five hour energy. T-Mobile has the new Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus for free and price lock guarantee. Do you? Well... T-Mobile will never raise my rates for talk, text, and data. Will you? Well... 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 Yes. T-Mobile has price lock guarantee and a free Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus. Switch to T-Mobile and get a free Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus with no trade-in required. the Daytona 500 in 15 years. Toyota's out front after one set of green flag stops. Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, and rookie Ty Gibbs, last year's Xfinity champion. Out in front of the field, which encompasses seven Toyotas, 15 Ford Mustangs, and 18 Chevy Camaros. You just never know about the sport. We've been down here. We've been through qualifying. We've been through the duels. We've watched all these races, Tony. Haven't really said much about Toyota. Look over your shoulder coming to the first stage in five to go here. One, two, three, Toyota. Yeah, and guys, the, you know, Truex was fast, obviously, in his qualifying race. Denny Hamlin, you just get him anywhere near the front, he's going to figure it out. Ty Gibbs is getting a great education right now following Denny. That's probably the best position he could be in right now is just to follow Denny and learn from him. Martin Truex, three top tens in 18 Daytona 500s. 
In 2016, the driver filling up his rearview mirror, Denny Hamlin, won the race by one one hundredth of a second with Truex second. I think that doesn't keep you up late at night. Where's it going to come from, Tony? These Fords, you see them lined up, the 10, the 6, the 17, 4, 41 behind them, Priest. I think that's where the move's going to first come from, but Logano's already pulled out in the back. Somebody I'm concerned about right now is Christopher Bell in the 20 car. He was up front in that mix. He has fallen all the way back to 25th right now and has kind of got himself detached from that lead group. I see the opportunity coming with these lappers. They're going to be pulling up on two lap cars. When they start fanning out, boom, there's your chance. Cindric just moves Reddick out of the way. A lot of Fords lined up behind these three Toyotas. How do they capitalize on that? Three laps to go to the end of the stage. They'll wave a green and white checkered flag. Harvick's not way slow, and there's pit stops. There goes Harvick. They're going to move up in front of him. Push. They all went with you. Ryan Priest just ahead on the inside. And you had mentioned that, Clint, earlier. These guys are already thinking about those stage points and already trying to put themselves in position to, to maximize whatever they can get at the end of stage one. What happened to Christopher Bell? Sorry, boys. Made one wrong decision. Tall, oh, buddy. It's a long day, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I thought the team was going to be the first one. Keselowski jumped on the opportunity, pounced on it. You see the three Toyotas pull up, and there's the two. There is the two lap cars I told you. That was going to be the opportunity that would separate those leaders, make them make a move. Keselowski was spot on with that move, like it. Wow. First there just screwed the bottom lane big time. It'll be three wide. Wow. Here we go, Tony. Don't understand what A.J. Allmendinger is doing there. I don't know why you'd move intentionally to the middle of the track when you got too wide of traffic. Because that one right there is lead, uh, the lucky dog. The 23 Bubba Wallace had to pit. That's a battle for the lucky dog. That was a smart move, bold move, but that's what he's racing. Bubba Wallace and Zane Smith trying to be the first car one lap down and get waved back around to the lead lap on the caution. Truex by inches over Keselowski. One more lap to the end of stage one. I like that move. Back. Brad Keselowski <laughs> timed those lappers perfect. And the top lane is boxed in, held up there by Martin Truex. Yeah, they got stacked up. When you get stacked up like that, everybody, you know, is forced to, to hit the brakes and it just accordions and look at the damage done. Coming to the caution flag, Brad Keselowski, part owner now of Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. He won a dual race here a year ago in the team's new debut, and he's going to win stage one as they come to the line and beat Ryan Grease by a car length. First stage win for Keselowski in the Daytona 500, and what a power move by Priest right at the flag. That was a slick move. Um, um, that was really cool. Brad Keselowski knew the timing was right. Eric Elmarola did too. He's just a little bit too late. Brad pounced on it, got the win. Caution flag waves for the first time in Daytona at the end of stage one. Stand and infield here at Daytona. Here's today's big move, sponsored by Pods. Yeah, he had made it right there, Keselowski. He was following the 10. Almirola got there, got in position before as they caught those two lappers. Almondinger in the 15 car. Watch this. Here comes the energy behind them. Priest, a big shot. Keselowski's going to wait just a little bit more, a little bit more energy. He's going to make a move and beat those guys. Just beat them just a little bit to that punch, that 10 car, and that's all it took. Look at the help behind him. Forge in your rear view mirror, that's exactly what it takes. And they finish the stage, one, two, three, Kozlowski, Priest, and Chris Buescher with that blue number 17. Then Harvick, Michael McDowell, it's a top five sweep for Ford at stage one. That's your pods, big move. 
Highest Toyota, Ty Gibbs in seventh. Highest Chevrolet, Jimmy Johnson from the back of the field to eighth. I don't think he's forgot how to do this. <laughs> All right, we're listening on uh, Martin Truex, who fell back into the pack uh, during that exchange. together when we can, but I can promise you if the roles were reversed right here to Lemon would have left her. So if I see it coming, I tell you, man, we gotta go because they had the numbers. Truex ends up ninth in the stage, Drew Herring his spotter. And pit road will be open this time. Brad Keselowski to lead them down. Now under green, three cars took fuel only. We'll see how things change up here. Regan? Kevin Harvick in his final Daytona 500 has been silent on the radio till the caution just came out for the stage end. He told the team the car is just fine. Josh? Stage one winner, Brad Keselowski, happy with his car. He's getting four tires and fuel. Jamie? Brian Priest, the newest driver for Stuart Haas Racing in the 41. A little tight to start, a little loose. At the end of the run, they're going to make a small adjustment in four tires. Chris Buescher, brand new dad in the 17, a little loose. Overall, very good car. Slipped through the front of his box, had to back up. Going to be a long stop in the 17, Chris Buescher. Priest Lightning, Ryan Priest leads the field off pit road as we look at our race off pit road sponsored by Ram. Noah Gregson holding a pretty wheel out there like this kid. I think he's going to do big things. Hey, Noah Gregson, it's Boyer up in the booth. You got us? Yeah, it's a four. Man, you guys have had a big week down here. Wendy's has been all over the place. My man up here, Tony's been over there, well, about three times a day. Tell me about your car. Tell me about your week. Yeah, it's been a great week down here in Daytona. I think we got a great Wendy's, 42. Chevy, it's been a lot of fun with this Legacy Motor Club team. And uh, this week I've been scanning that, that Wendy's Square, getting some cool prizes, and uh, make sure all your fans do that too. Scan it, get some big prizes out there. Absolutely, buddy. Good luck out there. Thanks. Well, Wendy's has been cutting no corners. In fact, they've been throwing shade at the burger competition on social media this week. 68 laps complete, a crowded pit road at Daytona. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Verizon, the network you deserve, the savings you want. Already got some gestures out here, Tony. What do you think they are? That one looks aggressive. That one looks like it has all the fingers. I'm telling you, the 11 balls, I don't think he had all five fingers out the window. What do you think? Well, we were watching on pit exit after the pit stops there. It's a little congested right there, as you can see, and Denny unfortunately had to run Joey out a little bit. I don't know that Joey fully understood at the time how many cars were inside of, uh, of Denny there that pushed him out. You didn't answer me. How many fingers? Josh? Well, just an update on the 23 of Bubba Wallace. We saw that damage when he hit the wall earlier. Well, they were telling him that the toe link is bent. They're going to ride with it for now, but at some point, they're probably going to need to change that, guys. I figure that that's that rear toe link. They'll scrub that tire really hard. Tire wear will be key to making it to the end of this stage. Have to be very careful with that. Open for a caution where they can get that changed. Now, we questioned A.J. Allmendinger's move coming to the flag, and indeed, he was battling Bubba Wallace to be the first car one lap down, and he did get the free pass, so Allmendinger is back on the lead lap after pit stops. Coming out of turn number four, there's the Geico restart zone. When the race leader, the control car, which right now is the 41 of Ryan Priest, enters that zone, and it's marked by lines on the wall and the track and a cone in the fence, any time in that green zone, he can hit the gas and accelerate, and the starter will wave the green flag. The rest of the field gets to react. Important to note, it's longer this year. They've added about 50% of that restart zone. I think you're going to see some more craftsmanship, some gamesmanship, if you will, with these guys. I like that move. I didn't like it. It was almost too short. You would get in there and 
when you took off, those guys would be rolling to you and you would roll uh, on past it. So that craftsmanship there, I like that gamesmanship. You gotta be able to jump that guy. That needs to be the leader's advantage. It was added 25% on the front and at, added 25% on the back. So yeah. it, it does, and, it, and that's exactly what was happening, Clint. The guy that was the control car was holding a steady pace. The guys on the outside were rolling it because the zone was so short that they, could, they got really good at timing it with a longer restart zone makes it much more difficult for that outside car to time the restart. Absolutely, like that, uh, that rule change. So we're green in stage two. Because of stage racing, Buddy Baker's overall average speed mark for the Daytona 500 is in no jeopardy because we will stop at least twice for caution flags at the end of the first two stages. Brad Keselowski was out front when the first one ended. Now he battles Eric Almirola. Fords the top five. All these manufacturers are here. taking turns now. <laughs> they've all had their moment where they've had groups of cars leading this race. The first Chevy is the 24 of William Byron. The first Toyota, the 19 of Martin Truex. Well, I think you don't have to look any further. Whoa, that was close. Yeah. Priest was pushing hard. Got him bottled up on the bottom, but you don't have to look any further than that first stage and what happened. Strength in numbers, we've been talking about that, right? Those three Toyotas were out front, and then Ford's pounced on them. Attrition's still going to play a part in this. You hear Denny Hamlin talk about luck being a part of it. You're going to have a big one. How do those three cars outrun them? Well, you just wait and see. Get to the end of this thing. Put them Fords in a position where they come off a of turn four and don't have a choice but to push you. There's too many on the outside. You're right on the yellow line. They're going to push you to the wind. That's how you do it. Look at Priest in the 41. Give Keselowski a jolt and put him out in front of that pack. Now Al Marola with the bubble behind him, between him and the two of Austin Sindrick, and they are gaining energy. Tell me about that bubble. It, it's kind of like a spring. The more that the closer those cars get together, the more it compresses the air. And what that air will do is it will compress like a spring. At some point, that spring's going to push you forward. It pushes that lead car forward. It pushes the second car backwards a little bit. But that is that energy that we've talked about. And that that's why you see when you get a second car behind and all of a sudden that first car gets a shot, it doesn't have to have physical contact to push that car forward. The other side of the energy equation is, is you know, who's behind you. You heard me talk about it earlier with the rear view mirror everything out of the back glass you have to have a dance partner that means you have to have people behind you that when you make that move you don't break as soon as you break that channel of the car in front of you it's like pulling a parachute you have to have people to push you through and continue on with that energy that we talk about and the key key word in that statement Clint, was partner it has to take two people to do it together, and it's not always the first guy just holding it wide open because you don't want to spring too far ahead of the guy in front of you. So when you get that push and you notice that it's going forward, sometimes they'll drag the brake a little bit or just roll out of the throttle a little bit just to maintain that, to help that second car get caught back up. 33 cars on the lead lap. Bubba Wallace, the first car, one lap down. Two by two, 17 rows deep, with Brad Keselowski and Ryan Priest leading the Daytona 500 on Fox. I'm in Brad Keselowski, your leader, we're monitoring the race sponsored by Dexcom. The first stage went caution free despite this spin by Riley Herbst. We stayed green. He got a penalty for missing the commitment cone. Bubba Wallace gets a bump on the back straight away from Martin Truex and gets up and into the wall. Brad Keselowski in the six leads. Ryan Priest's 41 to win stage one. When you got an itch, you got to scratch it. <laughs> You can't stop. You know, Lift the crazy. visor up, scratch your nose, put your visor back down. And it's exactly what you said. I don't know why it is or even how to explain it, but your nose from the vibrations, whatever that sequence is, it's always your nose that itches. That's the uh, Hail Melon Man, Ross Chastain, in the Advent Health Cam in his number one. 
Chase Briscoe, another one of our Fox driver's eye cams in his Mahindra tractor sport. Almirola leading Keslowski. Sindrick on the outside with Almirola. Priest inside with Keslowski and Kevin Harvick right in the mix. Third car on the inside in honor of Harv's final season. Bush Light's giving away $50,000 toward one lucky fan's retirement along with other big prizes. Follow at Bush Beer on Twitter and tweet hashtag Bush 401k and hashtag sweepstakes during every lap that ends in a four, like two laps from now, for your chance to win. watching the hood on Austin Cindric this thing just keeps getting looser and looser if that thing gets to vibrating too much you could break a hood hinge look how bad that thing's bouncing around you could break a hood pin I think the hood pins broken it is yep I thought that thing was bouncing around gonna need to get it to the end of the stage here get it taped down Brad Keselowski from Rochester Michigan out in front, he led the most laps in last year's Daytona 500. 41 is going to be to you quick. Here he comes. That's Brad Spotter, TJ Majors. A lot of Should pushing on the back Here's of that team. Four. A few feet off of him, face back, he's on you, on he lets you go now. Half, half, three quarter, three quarter, three quarter. Sounds like an auctioneer, but that's that information and having it repetitive like that is more valuable than than what you think. It, it's everything, every second, things are changing. So hear, hearing that information, even if it's the same thing, just reiterates to that driver what's going on. Well, the other side of that is you don't want to get out too far. You yes. heard him half, half, three quarter, three quarter. You don't want to get back a, a car length and a half. Somebody can come in and fill that void. The other, and, and if you get out too far, by the time he catches you, he's got to hit the brakes. Well, guess what? That stacks up the whole line. Going with you, man. With you, with you. You're clear, you're clear. You're Both drivers leaving these two lanes. Keslowski on the inside and the 10. Eric Al Almarola on the outside have each come within one mile of winning the Daytona 500. Unfortunately, I hate hearing that stat because that you're part be, of it. Yeah, yeah. my pocketbook. Yep. <laughs> Somebody else's bumper wanted a part of it. 85 laps complete. Michigan's Brad Keselowski out in front. Brad Keselowski leads at 89 laps as pre-race was a celebrity packed here in Daytona. A lot of NFL stars on hand. There's your honorary starter. Loving it. Receiver Brandon Marshall. Funny man Pete Davidson. True X fan. Taking it all in during Daytona pre-race. And Michael Jordan came out and talked to his team before the 500. Celebrating a birthday this weekend. One cool cat. So neat that he's a part of this sport. 90 laps to go, 10 laps to halfway. Now, Christopher Bell led 20 laps in his Toyota. Martin Truex, 13 in his. Alex Bowman, 11 in his Chevrolet. Kyle Larson, 6 in his Chevy. And Ford has led the rest. Not the most laps, but they were in front at the end of stage one, where Kyle Busch has inserted himself up into the top ten after starting out back in a backup car, Josh. Yeah, Kyle Busch, the biggest mover on the day before that last stop. He was saying he was too tight. They made an adjustment to help him out. He said the balance is much better, but he needs just a little bit more on that last adjustment to get it where he wants, Jamie. 
And Josh, how about the man in second right now, Ryan Priest in the 41. He was in the Cup Series for three years, stepped aside for a couple of years, ran in some truck races, and waited it out. He wanted to make his way back to the Cup Series in a competitive ride. Now here he is, the Connecticut driver, has come back to the Cup Series thanks to our own Tony Stewart calling him up to drive for SHR. And you see that man on the right, Chad Johnston. He even brought him back to the Cup Series. You may know Chad from working with Martin Truex Jr., Tony Stewart, and Kyle Larson. Pretty cool, huh? Spoke to see him running up front. Yes, it is. I'm excited about Ryan. He's His record speaks for itself. Up in the Northeast, he is awesome in modifieds and excited to have him, excited to have Chad Johnston back with us. Probably one of the most fun crew chiefs I've ever worked with was Chad. So uh, I think this is going to be a really good pairing this year. Jimmy Johnson is also in the top 10 after getting into the Daytona 500 on speed and starting in the last row. He's in 10th place. Now, he's going to run about five races this year for a team in which he is now an equity partner. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I can't believe he's in the top 10. <laughs> Such a phenomenal job by Jimmy to step in this thing. No practice, one dual race, and to be running inside the top 10 again after two years being removed from this sport, you can't count him out. Do we have to remind you he won seven I know. championships? I know. I know. I am fairly certain he could go across the Lake Lloyd and walk across it. Not swim across it, walk, walk across, across it. <laughs> Johnson may be the oldest driver in the field, but his part-time cup career started late in 2001. 2002 was his rookie year. This is the first Daytona 500 in which no driver competed against Dale Earnhardt. There's Jimmy's record so far. He's now part of Legacy Motor Club. And just to, to clear up uh, a little bit of the chatter on social media, Richard Petty was a partner in this team. It was Petty GMS Racing with Maury Gallagher. And it was reported this morning, Richard sold his interest in the team back to Maury Gallagher. That happened before uh, Jimmy Johnson came on as an equity partner. So Richard out, Jimmy in. Those two were not related. Larry. Yeah, Mike, 75th anniversary of NASCAR. Here's a Larry McNugget for you at lap 94. The 84 number has never won a cup race in the history of NASCAR. Finished second, but never won. Did you tell Jimmy that before he selected it? I did not. Darn. <laughs> well, if I were you, I wouldn't either. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy said he chose 84, not just because it's the reverse of the 48 with which he won seven championships, but all through his career, uh, for motocross bikes on up, the digits eight and four had always held special meaning for him. So he is number 84, and he may change that statistic. Five laps from halfway in the 65th Daytona 500. This time by Brad Keselowski, Ryan Priest locked together, leading Kevin Harvick, Michael McDowell, and Eric Jones, the first Chevrolet behind four Fords. Now the outside lane has changed. Eric Almarola was leading it. Martin Truex has gone to the front of the outside lane. Kyle Bush behind him, but that Toyota Chevy combination has fallen back in the field compared to the inside. Getting close again towards the end of stage two here. I'm going to tell you probably still six, seven laps. But I want to go back to that, what we came back from commercial break. Them Thunderbirds, I'm telling you, showed up to put on a show. Unbelievable job by the Thunderbirds, the ultimate flex of our country. And I'm telling you, it was awesome to see. Tony, I thought that guy was coming in here with us. I thought Wide they were open. coming in the motorhome yesterday morning when they were doing their practice flight. It was amazing to hear those guys and to see the show today. They, uh, they definitely show why we're the best nation in the world right now. Connor Daly stays up high so that that outside lane can move past without incident. But they are not gaining on the inside lane. Now, this is just the opposite of what we saw midway in last year's race when the outside lane seemed to have control. Spot on. Let's go back to the, the uh, stage before, the first stage. They started formulating that outside line, and as they do, if he starts marching forward, you're going to see some of these boys starting to pull up using that block. 
and beating him to that advantage. That outside line is going to get bigger as we get into the closing laps of this stage. Why do they push so hard for these stages? We all know that the big one's going to be a part of this. If you can get you, you know, seven, eight, nine, twelve. 15 stage points and you get wrecked out it doesn't hurt as bad if you don't get any stage points because you was riding around daytona 500 be there at the end and then something happens and you don't get that either you got yourself a big hole to dig out of it takes months to do i've i've argued with our guys numerous times of you want to sit there a lot of times and, and go for the end and get those points at the end but it's never a guarantee so if you can get those points at each stage take them you don't know what's going to happen the rest of the race especially here at daytona now Martin Truex has dropped to the bottom, leaving Kyle Busch to lead the outside lane. There is a graph of his day so far. You see Ty Gibbs, or excuse me, Tyler Reddick uh, in the monster car. He pulled up, and, and he didn't pull up. That's that tied off of four that I'm talking about. In the wake of these cars, you get tied off of four. A lot of them complained about that after the duels. Here, help us out here from the top. Hear him lift. Trying to keep that noise pointed. And when he did, you saw the nose of Ricky Stenhouse close quickly. Reddick last year drove, drove a Chevrolet for Richard Childress after winning the Xfinity Series Championship. Moved up to Cup, had a great season, but Toyota came calling. 2311 Racing signed him once uh, Kurt Busch was no longer cleared to compete full time, and uh, so Reddick and Kyle Busch have essentially swapped rides for 2023. Well, I've been doing this long, Mike, but I've been doing it long enough that I think I can get close and I'm a, a quick learner. They split that last stage in half and I think they're gonna do the same thing. That tells me it's gonna be somewhere around 106. Still got a couple laps, but it's gonna be soon. And while we wait for them to make pit stops, how about a NASCAR Daytona 500 Fox rank them up? On you, on you, back to the four, on you, on you. Outside, I got a slow car up top, about 10 rows up, you'll be bottom of three for one row. Three wide bottom briefly, two and a half in front, just two wide now, two in front. When we do pit, we're going on the jack. Going on the jack. Plenty of good on fuel. Get down, you're clear. Working lap 104. Quarter front, and your help is 42 for Maintaining half. You heard at the tail end of that, we're gonna be the second group. They're talking about it. I don't think we'll be long. Brad Keselowski. Remember, the Fords hit the pit road the first time, and yep. then it was the Chevys, and it was the Toyotas. Keselowski, Xfinity champ in 2010, cup champion in 2012, acquired an equity stake from Jack Roush and Fenway Sports Group in this team last year, started a rebuild. He continues. Big crowd of cars coming to pit road this time, almost half the field. This time it's the other ones. It's the Chevy boys. 
18 cars come to pit road. Josh. And the five of Kyle Larson is saying his car a little tight, but not too bad. Fuel only for most of these teams. Jamie. And Todd Gordon with the call for Jimmy Johnson in the 84. He's been pretty happy with the car. Just a little free early on, but a good stop for all seven times. So second round of green flag pit stops. 18 cars, most of them Chevys, in that time. And they get away before the leaders can get close enough to sniff a draft off those cars. And Kyle Busch is too fast exiting his pit. He'll have to do a pass-through penalty under green. The only saving grace to that is the fact that you got 22 laps to the end of the stage, and hopefully, hopefully he can hang on if he can get out and get tucked back in this group and try to get the lucky dog. I saw a hand out the window. Cost the penalty for Kyle Busch. Maybe we'll see somebody have trouble. Might get a caution. You heard Danny Hamlin talk about luck. Here come the Fords. A much smaller group, though. Only six cars coming to pit road. Led by Keslowski and Priest. Regan. Eric Almirola been very fast all day long. That race car just a little bit too tight off a of turn four for him right now. Josh. Brad Keselowski has led the most laps with 35 on the day. Said he's happy with his car. Got fuel and tires, Jamie. Ryan Priest in the 41, fuel only, tight bond with that pit crew, already works out with them all the time, and they are nailing it so far as you see Michael McDowell in for his stop as well. Priest gets out first because he took fuel and Keselowski chose to take two tires. Because uh, Kyle Busch making his penalty drive down pit road now as the Toyotas come to pit lane, Regan. Kevin Harvick said this may be the best, or excuse me, Rodney Childers said this may be the best car him and Kevin Harvick have had here in Daytona. Kevin, I think, agrees right now. He is still silent on the radio. Gas only. Jamie. A lot of quiet drivers on the radio. Martin Truex Jr., one of those, led 13 laps earlier, really happy with his car this week, but they thought it would take a hit when it came to racing here this year with the change to the nose, but they have been running really well with the 19. Truex happy with it. So that was all the Toyotas, plus Kevin Harvick pitting that time. Turn four. Break the page are set. Here we come. Fuel only. Don't slide your tires. Ready and now. Regan. Mike Joey Logano with the 22 car really been struggling the handle and just a little bit on that race car and can't get to the car's bumpers in front of him like he would like. So some adjustments there. Fuel only for him. And his teammate Ryan Blaney right there in the 12, a two-time runner-up in the Daytona 500. Pretty happy with the car. It was a little tight early on, and they fixed that with an air pressure adjustment. No tires. You see the tear-off on the windshield for clear vision. Enough fuel to make it to the end of the stage. Now this entire group, fuel only. See the four car there? I like that move by Rodney Childers. He pitted Kevin Harvick within Toyotas, and I think because he saw the efficiency of that smaller group pitting in that first stage, they outperformed those guys. I think Rodney Childers saw that and made that move. So Joey Logano will hang on to the lead from Chris Buescher, Ryan Blaney, and Austin Sindrick with 111 laps complete. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express card and by GEICO. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. 115 laps complete. Joey Logano leading Ryan Blaney and Martin Truex and Chris Buescher. But as the field sorted out after pit stops and everybody got in line, things got a little dicey right here. 
We're watching this pack. They, they're they catching the guys that have already come off of pit road and haven't got up to speed yet. And all those cars from behind, big toe, Chris Busher just trying to not get run over in that scenario. How about Blaney? You know that spot. He had an earful of his spotter telling block that 45, Reddick, he's coming. And then all of a sudden he shoots down. All right, Truex block, down, down, down. Big block on Truex. Truex didn't like it. Gave him a shot in the bumper. Chris Buescher, the Texan, back to the front. Best finish in the 500 third. He was the Xfinity champ in 2015. And we've already had more lead changes today than in all of four of the last 500s. Brad Keselowski was the leader at the end of stage one. Now he's still in the mix, but he's back to 22nd. Chris Buescher in that 17 car. Denny Hamlin told Tony and I in the pre-race, keep an eye out on Chris Buescher. He's got a fast car. RFK has a fast car. It's literally like deja vu. We left the clash. They struggled. Come here to Daytona, and they were bad fast, exactly like they were a year ago. Kyle Busch on the bottom, 13 miles an hour slower than the cars in the draft. He's going to try to find a way to get in after serving his penalty for speeding after his pit stop. Your help. 83 Austin, laps Austin. to go in the Daytona 500 as we take you Fox side by side. And Doug. Hey man, nice pace. Clearly you're a safe driver. You could save hundreds for safe driving with Liberty Mutual. They customize your car insurance. So you only pay for what you need! <laughs> Woo! We gotta go again! <laughs> only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. The Bush Guide. Cold and smooth survival skills. Hello? Should you become stranded, be ready to signal rescuers. Bush. <laughs> How long have I been? 12 minutes. Head for the mountains. I can't believe this is how you kids talk to your friends. This is talking. Did you have a nice day? Look at the size of these butterfly shrimp. Ginormous. Butterfly shrimp? What? Now she's talking. <laughs> We've got a report of angry rabbits on drugs. Have subjects been observed as wascally? Get out. Animal control is the new comedy everyone's watching. Hey! Look at you guys running away from the little rabbit. We were regrouping. And it's the next great comedy series. A cougar attacked an officer, broke through his rib cage, and ate his lungs. Did he survive? Without lungs? Animal Control, starring Joel McHale, all new Thursday on Fox. Much has changed over our 75 years. But the thing that never does, the anticipation, the holding of breath until that first green flag drops. And the crazy journey begins all over again. If you could travel 75 years from now, you might not recognize much at all. But one thing will never change. That feeling you get when the race begins again. I like it. Yep. It's mine. The prices blow my mind. I feel so rich. Oh, yeah. I feel like a billionaire. I'm shopping like a billionaire. I'm shopping like a billionaire. Timo, Timo, I'm shopping like a billionaire. I get it straight right from the makers. I'm shopping like a billionaire. Timo. Download the Timo app and shop like a billionaire. We got the house! We did it! Pods handles the driving. Pack at your pace, store your things until you're ready, then we deliver to your new home, across town or across the country. Pods, your personal moving and storage team. Eric Jones backing up toward the garage. As you saw in our side-by-side -side coverage, this Daytona 500 has been a tough one for the 12 of Ryan Blaney and for the 45 of Tyler Reddick. But where we need to watch is this 45 car and the four car on the outside. A little bit of gap here. Kevin closes in, contact with the 45. That's what also catches the 12. 
and then it's on. Yeah, it didn't take much. It looked like Tyler was having trouble holding on to it, and as soon as that four got back to his bumper in the corner, it just unfortunately turned him right into the 12. Let's listen to Harvick here. And just got it in the rock spot of the corner there. I don't know if I actually even touched it, but it just came out from underneath him. Man, did you see how close Chastain was to that? Eric Jones, Chase Elliott, Daniel Suarez are all collateral damage. Suarez hit the outside pretty hard. Nine. Eric Jones, the Guns N' Roses cam shows you what happened to him? So much my favorite paint scheme. <laughs> the welcome to the jungle. Got him. We're under caution in Daytona where aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. Powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Tyler Reddick's Toyota got a bump from Kevin Harvick. Ryan Blaney involved. Chase Elliott, Daniel Suarez, Eric Jones all with damage. Martin Truex. Kyle Larson also got a little bit of that. There is a Jones car in the garage under repair. Blaney's car is on pit road where they're working on the right front, trying to keep him into the race. Jamie? Well, yeah, and they continue to work on Blaney's car. There's extensive damage on the right front, but Jonathan Hassler, his crew chief, just said, we've got a plan. We've got time here. Let's just bring it in as many times as we need to fix it up. You see that hood is all buckled, too. And, and the nine of Chase Elliott, Mike, just a little update. They said that left rear A-arm was absolutely destroyed, and that ended their day. Tough break for NASCAR's most popular driver. Elliott and Blaney were the favorites at the sports books to win the Daytona 500. And the Corvette Z06 pace car has some laps here at the World Center of Racing. Pit Road is open, Regan. Fun discussion on Kevin Harvick's radio. Do we want to stay out and get stage points or pit now, which would help us win this race in terms of track position at the end of the stage? They obviously decide to pit. Eric Almoreau, that car just a little bit tight off a of turn four right now. Josh. A five, Kyle Larson is getting four tires. They're going to look over the car to see if they got any damage in that last wreck. And if it's fine, they're going to send him out. Jamie. Chris Buescher in the 17, he said, this car is pretty stable. We're going to have some good opportunities here, so certainly keep your eye on him. Eight laps to go in stage two, so it looks as if the casualties from this incident will be Chase Elliott, Tyler Reddick, and Eric Jones. Austin Sindrick is the first off pit road ahead of Denny Hamlin and Ty Gibbs. Here's what put us under caution, Kevin Harvick, with a bump to Tyler Reddick. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Eight laps to go in stage two. We're about to get the restart. Eric Jones. And watch Tyler Reddick versus the wall there. That's how fast everybody always asks you, what does it feel like? It's the most, the fastest, most violent impact ever. It's never a really slow and it's just whack. And it, you saw how quick it really was. Ready for the restart. Logano's Ford, Truex's Toyota on the front row. 
Chastain and Bowman in Chevys, Stenhouse and Allmendinger in Chevys, Bell's Toyota and Cindric's Ford, then Hamlin and Byron, the top ten, as we race to the end of stage two. Clear two ahead of both lanes, off you by half. Off you by half, top lane's going to be coming with a push mid straight. Truex is still clear, Truex is still clear, bottom's going to come. Let's check in at the Advent Health Care Center, Michael Walter. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, Tyler Reddick, first of all, are you okay? Yeah, actually, it uh, wasn't too bad at all. Um, yeah, I just hated for the Monster Energy, uh, Monster Energy uh, Toyota Camry TRD. I really felt like, um, you know, we could push really well and we could actually make progress through the pack. But, um, yeah, I'd just been not really in the lead much at all today. That was really the first time I was getting any pushes in the lead. Um, and the car seemed a little unstable down the back straight away. And then, obviously, in the three, Kevin was trying to push me. And, um, yeah, I just lost it. So. If I would have known that earlier in the day, I probably would have been more careful um, about that. But that was really the first uh, experience I had with that all day long, and it went bad. Yeah, Kevin said he thought he might have hit you wrong, but you didn't feel much of a hit, huh? Uh, I don't know. Um, like I said, down the back, when he when he got on my back bumper, it just didn't really seem like, uh, it, it, when I had clean air there, that my car was really stable. You know, I thought, okay, it moves around a little bit down the back. I've had this happen before. Um, but, yeah, I was kind of caught off guard by what happened in the corner there, unfortunately. Just, you know, that's the first time that we've been put in that situation and got loose and, unfortunately, took out some other good cars. Looking forward to Will and Michael and Denny's car all year long. Back to you, Mike. Thanks, Michael. So that puts Eric Jones, Chase Elliott, and Tyler Reddick out of the race, joining Ty Dillon in the garage area. Four to go in stage two. 29 cars on the lead lap to settle it. Bubba Wallace got back on the lead lap on that caution. He got the free pass. Four to go here. This is going to get really interesting. You don't have a pile of Fords stacked up. You have a mixed bag of everybody. Fords, Toyota, Chevys on the top. It's going to be interesting. Four to go. Who makes the move and who goes with them, more importantly. And look on the inside of that white and green number 16. Remember when A.J. Allmendinger raced his way to the lucky dog at the end of stage one to get back on the lead lap? Here he is in the top five. It was aggressive move to do it. It's paid off so far. I don't know that I would have been brave enough to do that. I nope. figured I would have got watered up, but he's made the most of it for sure. See Ricky Stenhouse Jr. coming into the screen there. Can't count him out on one of these tracks. Very aggressive. Always there when the time's right. He's won here in the summer race. Ross Chastain. Makes a block on the bottom. Got out of that outside line. Gave up the bumper of that Chevrolet. Alex Bowman. That's what I was talking about with three to go. I think it's any man's game. Nobody's really paired up. And to see that spot will be telling him which line to go with. Who has that energy that we were talking about. Two Even laps to go you. in Top stage two here. right now. Even like behind you. Top of the momentum. Go. Two more. Chastain spotter Brandon McReynolds calling the plays here. Moved up, slowed that outside line up right down to the bottom. I think he wants to ride on that bottom. Here comes another run. Going to have a decision to make. Tony, I think I stay on the bumper, stay with that 22. He's able to push hard and aggressive. Well, here they come off turn four to the line. One to go, stage two, and they're even. Chastain and Bowman. I think it was a coin toss for Ross in all reality. I mean, it, it's hard to sit there and just keep blocking both lanes, and they were so even. It wasn't like either lane was really getting a huge advantage over the other. Eventually, they're both coming at the same time. You just got to pick one. First time the Florida melon farmer has led the Daytona 500. Door to door like this, you're going to have to make a move. Is he going to try to go up the middle, maybe on the outside? Even. Even top and bottom right there. Truex so in the 19 threw now. one shot in the backstretch. He hit Logano, who hit Chastain, and that's the difference. To the flag to end stage two. Three wide, the sixth throw back, and it's Five. Chastain by less than a foot. Well, let me tell you, I told old Pitbull I'd go for it if he did that. He's there, <laughs> Ross off the wall, off the, off the chain, Chastain. How about that? 
Did you, don't you remember that part? I, I do remember. You just say it so much better than I do. That's right. Well, I didn't say it better than him, though. No. Whoa. By inches. That was close. Ross, Ross Chastain is your stage two winner. Welcome back to Daytona, 131 laps complete. We're at the end of stage number two. Ross Chastain leading his first ever laps in the 500, ahead of pole sitter Alex Bowman. July Daytona race winner a few years back, Ricky Stenhouse. Cup champion Joey Logano and last year's Daytona 500 winner, Austin Sindrick. Well, let's have a look at today's Credit One Bank Ones to Watch. Clint? Well, man, the stars are all out for the Daytona 500, and the stars are aligning for my man, Martin Truex Jr., number 19 on the 19th in his 19th start at this race. Martin Truex Jr. is my guy. Where we're going with numbers, Zane Smith won the truck race last year. He won the truck race Friday night. Austin Hill won the Xfinity Series race last year. He won the Xfinity Series race yesterday. Austin Sendrick, you see where I'm going? It's going to all line up. Hey, guys, I feel like the Ford of Joey Logano has shown strength all day. He's been up front. He's been comfortable, hasn't had any issues. I feel like Joey Logano is the one to watch. Tony Kevin Harvick has been very good all day long. He's got four tires already, going to gain some track position back right here. He and crew chief Rodney Childers only have one box left to check. That's a Daytona 500. I feel good about what he's going to do in a little bit. Brigham, I'm looking at the outliers, the drivers that are going to sneak up and surprise you. William Byron is driving a car whose number has won the Daytona 500 three times. Hasn't led yet, hasn't run on the front yet, but wait till the end. And that's your Credit One Bank, ones to watch. Sixty-eight laps to go. End of the second stage. Pit Road will be open this time. Let's check with Regan. Mike Joey Galagano continuing to try and get that car to handle just a little bit better. Being up front has helped it some. Right now he's tight behind other cars, and when other cars are right behind him, he gets too free. Ross Chastain, that race car just a little bit too tight. Not bad, just a small adjustment for him. Josh. Super Bell in the 20 has been riding around relatively patient so far. Not a fan of super speedways, but he's found himself back inside the top 10 as he gets fuel. Alex Bowman, the 48, struggled getting into his box straight, but he nailed it that time. They've made a chassis adjustment, an air pressure adjustment on the last couple of stops. Didn't make much of adjustment, so no changes there. Got enough fuel and tires. At a very close race off pit road, sponsored by Ram, Eric Almirola picked up 12 positions, beating Chris Buescher to the line. William Byron, plus four. Kyle Larson, plus eight. Getting set for the final and longest stage. Ready for the finish of the Daytona 500. Things have been kind of frantic so far. Sandy Beach in Florida. And the next, we're bumper to bumper and over 210 on a super speedway. Yeah, come on. How the heck we get here? Progress. That's how. Up into the white flag and Labonte takes the lead. 75 years of twisted metal, feet made of lead. He taps it. Clash. Tail hits him. They're out of it. Fighting for everything. <laughs> Not giving away an inch. This is about 75 years of legends and their rocket ships. Each one built with one thing in mind. Here they come to the line. Get out front, stay out there. Side by side. Because out there is where the future is. And if the first 75 years is any indication, you better brace yourself for the next 75. NASCAR, always forward. 
Time for a race break from Daytona International Speedway at We Are Trackside with Daytona 500 winner Jamie McMurray. I'm Chris Myers looking on. And boy, Brad, Brad Keselowski hoping for that first ever Daytona 500 has led the most laps. Ryan Priest has turned the fastest lap so far at 196 miles per hour. First two stages, Jamie. What caught your attention? Well, Kyle Busch speeding on pit road. We talked about this is a race that Kyle Busch hasn't been able to win yet. He made it a mistake, but he's back on the lead lap now. Can he get back to the front? All right, we look ahead. Stage three, what are you looking for? More aggressiveness. It seems like some cautious, careful, other than the wreck that we hit at almost 300 miles in. Yeah, Chris, they're going to have to get more aggressive to get those lanes to move. I think that the pit sequence of when the manufacturer's pit played a huge role in how that cycled out. But as we get to the end of this, we haven't seen three wide racing today. In order to, to, to make progress on the track, the guys are going to get more aggressive. I think we're going to see more wrecks. But who can take that push? We saw Tyler Reddick. His car didn't want to accept that. And where do you want to be as it gets late? Outside of you know yet? I don't think that we know exactly where you want to be. Ross Chastain chose to be on the bottom. He thought that was going to be the better lane. It looked like Alex Bowman was going to beat him to the start finish line, but it was mere inches that made that. So it's going to be all about who's behind you, I think, more importantly, as to what lane you're in. We've already had 36 lead changes in this Daytona 500. Mike Choi, that's more than we had through the entire race all of last year. Thanks, Chris. Yes, it's been a very competitive day here in Daytona. Now, competitive, Saturday primetime hoops is back with a massive game on Fox. 14th ranked Indiana collide with the third ranked Boilermakers as Purdue looks to avenge an early season loss to the Hoosiers. That big showdown begins Saturday, 7.30 Eastern on Fox. Sixty-five laps to go. There's Kevin Harvick riding in seventh. In honor of his final season, Bush Light's giving away 50 grand toward a lucky fan's retirement and other huge prizes. Follow at Bush Beer on Twitter. Tweet hashtag Bush401K and hashtag sweepstakes during every lap that ends in four for your chance to win. 32 cars on the lead lap right now. Kyle Busch got the free pass at the end of stage two. So there is Bubba Wallace who did not pit. He stayed out. He is the leader. As we come to the choose where each driver gets to select which lane he wishes to restart in. You'll see a big orange V right there and Bubba takes the outside. This is where that choose cone really gets interesting back here. They're listening to them spotters are seeing how many cars in which line. Forget about which Chevrolets or which Fords or which Toyotas are in which. At this point, it's which cars are in which line and how many. A couple of drivers have come in to top off the tank to begin the green flag racing of stage three. Now, we did have penalties. Ross Chastain was too fast entering pit road on the electronic timing system. Christopher Bell ran over equipment. And Noah Gregson had an uncontrolled tire during that round of pit stops, so they will all be restarting out back. Now, Larry tells us Bubba Wallace changed four tires on the caution before, so those tires only had six or seven green flag laps on them. Why stop? Doesn't It's not going to matter. It's not like any of the other tracks where tire wear is a big issue. It's a great move to getting track position, and I can promise you this is the point in the race where we're going to start seeing business picking up. Josh? Yep, but exactly what you guys said, that was a strategy play to stay out since they wanted to get that track position back. Remember, I mentioned before they had that rear toe link issue. They're going to keep riding around with it. It hasn't turned out to be a bigger problem. So the 23 riding good right now. And don't count out the melon man, even though he's got to start out back. His last win came at Talladega after a speeding penalty. Here is the Geico restart zone. The control car, which is Bubba Wallace. Uh, gets to choose where he hits the gas and the starter will then re uh, wave the green flag. 25% longer at each end than it was last year. And we're back to green for stage three. Come back bottom if you want to stall, come 
back to the top. So two back to the top. One back and I have a shove up top. One back. Coming with you now. You hear Bubba Spot of Freddie Kraft telling him coming on the outside how far they're coming back. And you can tell by his voice whether he wants you to pull up and move that line, you know, and block that line or stay where he was. Obviously, he chose to, to move up and be on that outside. We'll see if it works out for them. Eric Almirola, one of 16 different leaders in this Daytona 500. 38 lead changes now. Ford has been out front for 69 laps. Chevrolet for 24. Toyota for 45. All right, thanks to Wendy's. We're going to take a ride with Noah Gregson in his number 42 Wendy's Chevrolet. With the air rack and two inside, everybody's clear. Nobody wrecked, two inside. Caution is out, debris in two. And that'll call it. Second caution for cause of this Daytona 500. And it comes at lap 140. There is the debris. Fairly substantial chunk of it. This might do it for Ryan Blaney. Had a lot of damage on that car. Apparently something rubbed on that tire, cut it, and it came off the rim and onto the racetrack. Blaney, of course, was involved in that big accident at lap 119, but was able to make repairs and continue. 61 laps to go. We'll take you Fox side by side. From the writers of A Quiet Place. We've crash landed on an uncharted planet. 65 million years ago. There's something out there. Humans discovered Earth. <laughs> We need to be quiet and move. Sixty-five exclusively in movie theaters, March tenth. All right, everybody, it's two of any of these for just six dollars. So, what about a Dave single and a ten-piece nug? Yes, Tyler. What about a classic chicken sandwich? Yes. Two Dave singles. That works, too. How much would it cost? Six dollars. Anybody else? Everybody get it? Mr. Willie, could you maybe draw something that could help us? Are you serious? I drew this. Is that supposed to be lettuce? Oh, my goodness. When you want the best deal on the best food, choose wisely. Choose Wendy's two for six today. Oh. A promise is a trust not to be broken. I say your name. Whether spoken with an oath. Do you solemnly swear. swear. It's your first day. You know I got your back, right? Or seal with a pinky. In 1922, a group of soldiers launched USAA with a promise to take care of their own. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission, always. This is the truck that helps keep families safe. And the truck that helps you get far from home. The truck that lets you move mountains and then climb them. This is the truck of the outdoors, the early adopters, and the rising generation. This is the one more truck owners are switching to. This is what it means to be a Ram. I love puppies. Well, I love that I switched to Verizon. My other network used to drive me crazy. Yeah. And with Welcome Unlimited for just $25, I love that I got an awesome network and saved money doing it. I know, $25. But what I love is that it's guaranteed for three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I love is I got to keep my phone more savings. But I love... Hey! We're sitting on a sign here! Switch and get Welcome Unlimited for just $25 a line. Guaranteed for three years. The savings that last on the network you want. Verizon. Sixty laps to go in Daytona next Sunday. The NASCAR Cup Series roars into Southern California for the final race on the two-mile oval in Fontana before that track gets reconfigured. 
Will Kyle Larson repeat? Will we have a new West Coast King? You'll find out when the pre-race begins 2.30 Eastern, green flag at 3.30 here on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Tony Stewart will join us in Fontana and come back uh, for Atlanta after Danica Patrick joins Clint and me in the booth for Las Vegas and Phoenix. I'll take two weeks off and go do a little racing myself over in Gainesville, run the baby Gator Nationals, and then come back for the national event, the Gator Nationals, that'll be also be on Fox. You got more day jobs than anybody I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you love them all. But none of them have a time card. None of them have a time card. That's what I love about Tony Stewart. He works his tail off. He's never really clocked in anything. So we want to show you something here that uh, Fox has been working on with uh, the folks at Driver's Eye. And I don't even know how close I have to get uh, <laughs> before you can see it. But that is the entire camera and transmission system. Uh, the lens on that is less than an eighth of an inch in diameter. That's our driver's eye. And it sits in the padding just to the side of the temple of the driver uh, between him and the shell, the outer part of the helmet. And that's it, that's all there is to it. There's a tiny cable uh, to tether it and transmit the signal. That's it. It actually sits on the padding. On and that's the, padding, the coolest not in. thing yes. about it is it doesn't, you know, affect the helmet whatsoever. It's out on the outside of it. So all the safety features aren't compromised. Pretty cool feature for all of our guys out there and you guys at home. It's awesome technology. <laughs> that could be the coolest thing ever yeah. since we've started uh, started broadcasting NASCAR on Fox. Sure. And uh, high marks and thanks to Andy Jeffers of Fox Sports who coordinates our in-cars and Peter Larson who brought tiltable, panable onboard cameras to NASCAR and his group at BSI. They work closely with the teams to uh, give you these wonderful views from the driver's eye. Let's go to Pit Road and Jamie. Pretty incredible technology indeed there, Mike. Well, Alex Bowman in the 48, he had come in and topped off after that last round of pit stops. And on the restart, they started stacking up, and he got into the 42, dropped down on the apron, and see, see it right there. He had that issue, brought it onto pit road. You see the left front damage. Good news is it's just cosmetic. Everything underneath looks good for the 48. Thanks, Jamie. 33 cars on the lead lap, including Riley Herbst, who got the free pass on this caution flag for debris in turn number two. Cliff Daniels, Kyle Larson's crew chief. We listened in on them. If we get yellows from here, it's possible. We can try to stretch it all the way to the end. So just save it hard. Yeah, anyone who did not pit obviously would not be able to make it under any circumstance. Depending on how yellows go, there's a chance that us and the cars that just pitted with us could. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Business is picking up, Larry. <laughs> how can you save that fuel for him? You got to stay in that pack, and we will go back to that yard. fuel savings mode. When you're back in the pack, the reason Cliff Daniels tells him that Puts that in the back of his mind. If you can save me any fuel, which you can back there, I'm telling you, you're down to half throttle at times to stay off the car in front of you, saving a lot of fuel. The hard part is you almost are having to commit to that strategy. You know, you, you, this is the point of the race where you either got to be making your plans to move your way forward, or if this is a scenario where Cliff and Kyle make that decision to go for fuel mileage, then you have to be committed to, to, to staying in the back of the pack where you can run that part throttle and not keep pumping the gas. And this is something where our sport has evolved so much. Because of the data, the live SMT data, these teams can see what that driver's doing inside that cockpit live. So they know exactly what he's doing to that throttle pedal and exactly how much fuel he is saving them. Austin Sendrick in sixth for the restart. We remind you that Kyle Larson was leading this race in 2017 and ran out of gas on the final lap. Well, he's going to save just a little bit more. Two and a half miles more, he better. He can do it. Fords up front, Almirola and Busher. Look at this sellout crowd. Not an infield standing room only ticket to be had today. A complete sellout for this Daytona 500. We are back to green. Bubba Wallace chose the outside and moved up a couple of rows in the process. So he's alongside Almirola now for this restart. Here's clear heat thought. He's clear. Harvick's not, 23 stalled him out. 11's coming to help Harvick, he was a 17, still clear. Carling's back to 17. 
Harvick's a half back of him. After the 17, Harvick's not clear high. 17's on you. Now remember, Wallace has less fuel on board than the cars he's racing against. He did not come to pit road recently. And he looks like he's slowing that two car down. I don't think they're going to take long. He's got a lot of Fords behind him. I'm talking about Austin Sindrick. I, whoa! Hold on to it, Austin. I look for him to maybe make a move on Bubba and try to get going here. There it is. There it is. I didn't think it was going to take long, and it didn't. Man, what a half a lap there by Austin Sindrick. He was completely sideways. There, here comes Keselowski. This is exactly how it happens. I was surprised they had Bubba stuck in the middle there. Christopher Bell lifted, let him get back in line. Wow. Yeah, Priest has just stacked up behind the two car there. And then as soon as, as soon as we get to that spot we were talking about on the entry and the exit of the corner, got tight and then it grabbed the right front, sheared him loose. Well, I agree. Christopher Bell was a good soldier there to let his Toyota stablemate, Bubba Wallace, have a spot in the inside line. Thanks to Toyota, we're going to stay right here instead of going to a Toyota commercial. We're going to have commercial free racing for to from Daytona as we go Toyota all out. One eighty four fifty four twenty three out the back. Half in front of Kevin. Half in front. Still half. Two by two. In NASCAR competition, the Toyota Racing family continues to grow their racing legacy. Here's a closer look. Celebrating their 20th season in NASCAR competition, Toyota has earned 585 wins across NASCAR's top three series. From the introduction of the Tundra to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series in 2004 to three championships in the Cup Series, Toyota looks to add to their growing racing pedigree in 2023. Let's go places. Fifty one laps to go. Chris Buescher, Brad Keselowski, RFK Racing on point in the low groove. And there are a lot of Fords stacked up on both the inside and outside lanes right now. The first Toyota is Hamlin in seventh, the first Chevrolet, the seven of Corey LaJoy in tenth. Otherwise, it's a blue oval brigade. Boy, Priest giving the two of Sindrick all he can handle, trying to send him forward. 
and challenge that low line. That car is very, very light on its feet with the back. I'm telling you, hold on to it, Austin. Wagging its tail all over the place, Tony. See the four Kevin Harvick move up in front of Austin Cedric as well. The 10 in front of the four. The rest of the Fords straight up. Look at this. <laughs> Spit Kevin out. Austin turned right underneath of him. 34 going to come inside. You'll be too wide with them. Just keep him tight. I didn't see that happen, and I don't think Kevin Harvick did either. I think he thought Cedric was going to go with him. Did not. Well, Tony, what have you long said? If you can move the guys you think will be hardest to beat, that's who you're going after. Yeah, and it's, you know, I know the manufacturers work really hard in, in pre-race meetings talking about taking care of each other, racing at the end, but you got to do what you have to do. I mean, you have to do and put yourself in scenarios that you think are ultimately, at the end of the day, going to benefit you, your race team, and your organization. All right, since uh, we had a caution bust out when we were riding along with Noah Gregson, we're going to take another ride with him and his number 42 Wendy Chevrolet. That was me. I was saying 50 to go. Man, outside. Interference got checked me some if you're saying something to me. Hey, one off in the back. Half off in the back. Gregson was fifth here last summer. That voice was Earl Barbin, longtime spotter for Jimmy Johnson, as Jimmy was at Team Henry, winning championships here in NASCAR. Well, that outside lane, they have fought their way up almost right to the front of the pack. They're there. A little bit of a gap you can see there between Denny Hamlin and Corey LaJoy, and that gives that outside line a little bit of time to get some energy and just go blowing by on the outside. That RFK duo of Busher and Keselowski working together, you're not going to see that six car get off his bumper until it's time. It's going to be hard to handle, but they're going to have to try to do these blocks together, choose which line they're going to move up in front of or down in front of. Harder to do with two cars. Just did it right there in front of the 11, stacked them up, and he about got turned by LaJoy. Like I said, that's hard to do when you got two cars working. Remember Kevin Harvick? They're on the outside, three wide. He was right up there with that front pack. Now he is back at 19th, and it's his final season. So Bush Light's giving away 50 grand to a lucky fan's retirement, along with other huge prizes. Follow at Bush Beer on Twitter. Tweet hashtag Bush 401k and hashtag sweepstakes during every lap like this one, every lap that ends in a four. For your chance to win. It's gonna roll again. These guys are getting impatient, especially a guy like Stenhouse. You see right there in front of Kevin. It's easy to do, but you gotta realize we still have a pit stop. There's still things that are gonna shake this race up. Don't get greedy here. Be patient. Larry Mack. Yeah, Mike. Kyle Larson in that five is back there in the 15th position. Remember, Cliff Daniels told him when they topped off there with 60 to go at lap 140 that if they save fuel, they can make it. Well, we've run 12 laps since the restart, and I'm hard pressed to find any time of any lap, he's more than 60% throttle. So definitely saving fuel on that five. Still 45 laps to go. Dare we try going Fox side by side one more time? We dare. <laughs> 45 to go. will remain radioactive for years to come. Well, thank goodness, it's time for the good news of the week. And boy, do we need it. <laughs> well, this safe driver saved money with the Snapshot app from Progressive. How do you feel? Um, good. He's better than good. He got rewarded for driving safe and driving less. Sorry, Barb, just to confirm, this is the feel-good news of the week?
This is what we found. Yay, snapshot! There's one more chance to catch all the action at the famous two-mile oval at Auto Club Speedway. We're talking five wide, full throttle, next-gen cars, ripping up laps inside some gorgeous mountains type of action. Oh, trouble. And the access to drivers and stars? Oh, it's got plenty of that action. Here comes Kyle Larson. So get ready. You don't want to miss all the, well, you know what we were going to say. Get your tickets now at autoclubspeedway.com. Come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Meet with one of our experts who will do your taxes for you. So you can do anything else. Into a TurboTax, 100% expert guaranteed. Much has changed over our 75 years. But the one thing that never does, that feeling you get when the race begins again. Ray Magliazzi here. eBay Motors has the right parts at the right prices. Hey, Dave. Yep. Wait. How are those new wipers? They're small. For parts that fit your vehicle, look for the green check. Let's ride. It's ABBA night! Two new mask celebrities join the competition. You were born to sing ABBA. An all-new Mask Singer, Wednesday on Fox. To all the Chevy Silverado owners out there, the adventurers, and the doers, to everyone who works hard and plays hard. Whether it's your first Silverado or your 10th. Thank you for making Chevy Silverado the number one best-selling retail full-size pickup. to go. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. Chris Buescher out front with an assist from his teammate, Brad Keselowski, with 41 laps to go. They are among the 16 leaders of this race. We've had 45 lead changes. And in the 64-year history of this race, only six times have there been more lead changes than we've had already today. See that I call it links in the chain, guys. It, the outside, it's like a chain out there, and the links in the chain are tight. The inside, they're crammed up, and then they get uh, slack in the chain. All of that, you know, accordion effect slows the, the overall performance of each line down. That outside line has their line put together better. That's why they're in front. Well, look who's sitting in sixth place, Harrison Burton for the Wood Brothers, who have won this race five times with their fabled number 21. Jamie? Yes, and the 22-year-old driver, Harrison Burton, I talked to him about his first Daytona 500 last year, flipped over upside down. He said he's so much better prepared for today's race. He said, it's all about situational awareness, knowing where to put my car at every given moment, even when you're single file or under caution, you're thinking about those scenarios, and it's paying off right now. He's been running top 10, doing a nice job in sixth right now, Vivian. Jamie Eric Almarola won his duel race the other night, and you would think, just keep the car exactly like that. But crew chief Drew Blickensdorfer told me they made significant changes to the balance of that car. They wanted more security for the race today. They felt like when it got down to the end, they needed just a little bit of that. Keep an eye on him as this race plays out because of those changes. may give him the ability to make a little bit more aggressive move when he needs to. And speaking of aggressive, crew chief Drew Blickensdorfer also said that this is the most aggressive he has ever seen Eric Almarola as a driver a ton of confidence in that 10 car. He has come within a mile of winning the Daytona 500. Got turned by Austin Dillon on the last lap. Daniel Suarez in purple on the left. Or maybe in purple in the seat after this. <laughs> well, he just doesn't have the pace to hold up. Denny Hamlin like that, and Denny knows he has got to get around. They can't just keep letting that inside line fall further back. Yeah, you heard me talk about that chain as I describe it, but Suarez is a big part of that problem, too. It just didn't seem like that car has the speed that they needed. I think Denny thought they were holding him up, and he took care of that. Denny Hamlin always has a fast Toyota here. Only four drivers have led more laps in Daytona 500s than Denny Hamlin, and they are all in the Hall of Fame, all four of them. 
Petty, Earnhardt, Baker, Yarborough. Last time, Roush Racing, or Roush Fenway, and now Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing led the Daytona 500 was nine years ago. But if this pair stays together at the front, Busher and Keselowski, they could be hard to handle. They are, and like Clint was saying, you talk, look at the outside line and the link there. There's getting some gaps in there, and that's kind of around the area that Kyle Larson's in. Maybe part, running that part throttle is kind of breaking that outside lineup. I don't think they're trying to do it intentionally, but he's trying to not sit there and have to, anytime you accelerate with the throttle pedal, it's asking for more fuel than when you're just wide open. Well, the other problem that they have on that inside line is when you got seven Fords in a row in line, they're not gonna give up on one another. No. Josh Kyle Busch got a free pass to get back on the lead lap, finds himself right now in 17th. What's going on with the eight? Well, it's all about keeping an eye on the fuel for the eight car of Kyle Busch. The last time in, they topped off the fuel, hoping that the next and hopefully final stop for them, they can have a shorter one, go through one can of fuel, to get back out and get better track position for the final run, guys. 36 laps to go. And one pit stop between here and the checkered flag. Tight, passing them lappers as they come off the four. Tires are starting to wear out. And before pit stops, we're going to take you Fox side by side one more time. Chris Buescher leading the Daytona 500. And after 22 seasons, this will be Kevin Harvick's last. You can learn a lot about a man by watching him work. Watch his drive for greatness. Watch him break down and then watch him break through. After 22 years of watching Kevin Harvick work, we know you can always count on the closer. Kevin Harvick is not done yet. I like it. Yep. It's mine. The prices blow my mind. I feel so rich. Oh, yeah. I feel like a billionaire. I'm shopping like a billionaire. I'm shopping like a billionaire. Timo, Timo, I'm shopping like a billionaire. I get it straight right from the makers. I'm shopping like a billionaire. Timo, download the Timo app and shop like a billionaire. Gillette presents the Gillette Labs with exfoliating bar. The bar in the handle removes unseen dirt and debris that gets in the way of the blades for effortless shaving in one efficient stroke. All with a lifetime warranty. And if you want to keep the beard, use King C Gillette, a lineup of products designed to cleanse, soften, trim, and style for your best beard. Gillette, the best a man can get. Almost heaven. West Virginia. I've been on that dating app, but girls are actually 400 miles away. I have dated a lot of guys in the city. It hasn't worked out for me. She's too pretty to be in a place like this. Why oh, I'm struggling so much with this. This is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Take me home. Crafts, sporting goods, restaurants, and the future of NASCAR all from your neighborhood. DoorDash. Thirty-two laps to go in the Daytona 500. That Ford-led group out front leading the field, and here are the winners of the Daytona Speed Weeks races last year and this. And note that all three of those champions tried for the Daytona 500.
uh, this year. First time ever, right? Yep. Pretty cool. That all three series champs are in the race. Yep. Uh, Ty Gibbs in Xfinity. Zane Smith in the trucks. Of course, Joey Logano in the Cup Series. Chris Buescher is the leader. There are three and a half times as many people here today as live in his hometown of Prosper, Texas, as they cheer him on. And his teammate, Brad Keselowski, who came to RFK Racing from Team Penske, and trying to rebuild what originally was Roush Racing. 10 Eric Amarola with the Smithfield Ford, Austin Sendrick, both been up front all day. Eric's been extremely happy with his car. Let's see what happens here. Ryan Priest right behind them, holding a pretty wheel. He's had that track position, done a good job so far. Got to get to the end of this thing. We all know it. Harrison Burton behind him in tow. These guys are looking good right now. Michael McDowell may be just where he wants to be in seventh place. Nobody kind of noticing uh, his front row motorsports forward kind of when he worked his way to the front in the closing laps of the Daytona 500 that he won two years ago. And you've got the 11 of Denny Hamlin and the 99 of Daniel Suarez. We saw Hamlin go by Suarez on the inside line, get shuffled out, and Denny was able to work his way back up and get back in front of Suarez to get back on that outside line. But now Suarez pulls Kyle Larson along the bottom and Austin Dillon. We haven't seen much of the three today. He is a past Daytona 500 champion. Bubba Wallace had to take a pit. He had to pit or it's going to be out of gas. We knew that was going to be the start of it. Josh. Bubba Wallace into his pit. Remember, he came in a little bit earlier before, and now he's going to top off and get tires on that right side. Yeah, his last stop was 11 laps before anybody else uh, because he chose to stop early and get track position, put him back up front. It's going to get interesting, guys. This is going to split the field really right in half. All these guys, front runners, the reason they're moving to the bottom, they're looking to pit, and that window's coming quick. Won't be long. So nine drivers will likely pit together because they have 38 laps on this load of fuel. And that will leave about seven drivers who can go another six, seven, eight laps further. Yeah, it'll probably be, you know, maybe tops another 10 after that. It'll depend on how they come out, what kind of lap times are running, and we'll bring those guys in. But nonetheless, all your front runners here, 17, 6, 4, 10, 11, all of them were the ones that pitted the last time on lap 133. And this will be the money stop. Hit your marks. Make no mistakes. Watch your speed. Don't do everything, anything fancy. Just do everything right. I told Clint, I said, don't be surprised if this is where the last caution of the race could happen. Guys, knowing that they have to hit their marks and knowing that they got to get everything they can, but it always forces somebody to do a mistake. Kyle Busch fights his way back up into the top 10. See that line that was dominant on the outside is now moved to the bottom. Like you say, getting closer to the pit stops, you can't just stay on the outside. You're going to have to get yourself down to where you can be in position to get to pit road. I definitely think that was the play. They, you know, jockeyed for position, got down to the bottom of the inside where they can come as, as a group. But, man, it takes me back to the start of this race. What did we learn? You know, when all those cars came together, they weren't very efficient. This might be an opportunity for some of these other cars. Chris Busher and Brad Keselowski, they need to pit together, they need to come off pit road together and just do it faster than anybody else to maintain that twosome at the lead and they're gonna be tough to deal with. That, however, is a tall order. That all you have half a dozen to a dozen cars on pit road at once. Spot on, Mike, but that all goes out the window when you pit. If you pit with, with too big a group or you don't come out with the right amount of help, when the time's right, I don't care how fast two cars are, that won't be enough. What's the magic number of cars in a draft for maximum speed? I don't know. Clint and I were talking about it. I think Clint actually, I mean, I think you should explain it. You, I think you're spot on on your side. I think five to eight cars is more efficient performance-wise, speed-wise, than 28 cars, believe it or not. Um, when they try to, to move them around, especially coming on the pit road, I mean, we learned it. We saw it with the Toyotas. That's why you saw Rodney Childress and a few others make those adjustments. When those guys come in with only four or five cars in front of them, they didn't have to move around and stall and everything else coming out of their pit wall. They, they did the pit, uh, their pit stops a lot more efficient. 
efficiently. It's just like a freight train. The longer the freight train, the more you hear the couplers clanging they as they go back and forth. There's those hands. 175 taking 172. This is a little bit earlier than I expected them to come. All right, let's see if the 17 and 6 teams are up on their game. Here they come. Regan. Mike the call came to Eric Amarola when he was coming off turn two to hit this time. The directive from crew chief Drew Blitzenserfer was to get all the way to the left. Expect gas only. Josh. Brad Kozlowski now into his pit. You see him getting topped off over this at the time. He finally can get that Daytona 500. Jamie. And his teammate Chris Buescher led 32 laps in this race already. They don't need anything. This car is good. It's fuel only for the 17. Nine cars came to pit road. At least five of them will leave in a draft together. I don't know if that was by design or not, but the 22 and the 14, they were stuck on the outside. They couldn't come with their Fords. Nope, Logano is still stuck way out there. And here come the Toyotas, Hamlin and Truex. Regan. Denny had one in the 11 car, Mike. Basically, the directive has been to him to just keep the cars behind him attached a little bit better. His race car's good, but he's struggling to get the pushes he needs. Jamie. One of the best pit crews on pit road last year was the 18. Well, that's now gone to the 19. They're pitting the car. Not much to do there. Fuel only for Martin Turex Jr. The problem is it's only a pair of cars coming off pit road, and they're exactly. going to have to work their way together. Look at the separation in Truex and everybody that just came out. A lot of separation. That's not going to be very efficient. They are sitting ducks right now. We're watching this foursome come down into turn one now. They've got all the momentum and the gap between those four cars that just left pit road is enormous. Here come five more led by McDowell along with Harvick, Gibbs, Briscoe and Bell. Nobody taking on tires. A timed stop for fuel. And then the go sign. Jamie. Michael McDowell in the Loves car, the number 34, won this race in 2021. He told his team on the radio, guys, we've got to nail this. No mistakes. It's fuel only. Make sure this goes well, and it does. Now, those five cars come off pit road together. They'll have a chance to draft back up, and we'll see if Clint's theory holds. Big pack of cars off turn four, and more peel off. This is a larger group. Trick. Nine cars. Oh, that's awesome. Regan. Daniel Suarez in the 99 had been working his way back towards the front after an unscheduled stop earlier today under yellow. Right now the car is just a little bit tight. Exit needs some help from pushers. Josh. Well, remember the five was considering pushing it on the fuel chains of plans. Decided to come in and get topped off, Jamie. Bella Gregson in the 42, the Las Vegas driver. Pretty happy with his car. Second Daytona 500 for him, going for rookie of the year. Jimmy Johnson. He's going to come he, around the next time, Mike. Excuse me, Jimmy Johnson in that group overcoming a speeding penalty back at lap 119. That will leave only Harrison Burton out there among the cars that stopped at lap 133. Now some of those that stopped last stopped at lap 140 coming to pit road along with Burton. Regan. The directive to Joe Logano is to stop on his sign. They need exactly three and a half seconds of fuel is all. Josh. And the eight of Kyle Busch is a little bit loose in the center. They came in to get topped off. Jamie. Harrison Burton, they called for five seconds of fuel. I'm not sure he was even in his box for five seconds, but a quick stop. And there goes Noah Grace in the 42. They got their fuel. And six cars exit pit road together. Ricky Stenhouse will be coming back. Too fast exiting for the 47. So now everyone has made what should be the final pit stop of the race with 20 laps to go. Larson, that five car, you heard Cliff Daniels talking about it. They did not have to take as much fuel as the rest of them got out quicker. I think the advantage right here goes to the five car. That group right there, they're going to have to get up here and block. There's the original leaders, Keselowski, Busher, right, right ahead the, of them. The four cars on the left stopped later so they could take less fuel, and they're out in front of the Fords that were leading before green flag pit stops. Yes, sir. 
This three car duo in front of them. Martin Legato and Byron. Let's see if they're able to make quick time of them when they catch him. Oh, oh they're wrecking. Big wreck. That's a product of catching those cars. Everybody's on a little bit different. A pile up in turn one with 18 laps to go. Michael McDowell, Ryan Priest, Martin Truex among those involved. Harvick. Kevin Harvick with damage to the right front. And Priest had such a great Daytona 500 going. And it's gone. This will be the fifth caution flag of the day. Three for cause plus the two stage breaks. And the second multi-car pileup of this Daytona 500. Martin Truex thought that 19 would be his lucky number. It's February 19th, it's his 19th Daytona 500. The crash happens with 19 laps to go. We'll see what happens here when they get to turn one. Make them all so you can see the pipes and the two car. He was lifting hard, stacks them up behind them. McDowell gets in the back of Priest, turns him around, the rest is history. But I take it back to Gregson. You see that lap car that they were going around. Always movement like that creates them stacking up. And Ryan Priest has driven to the garage. The Berlin, Connecticut driver had a great 500 going. And you'll see the accordion-like contact here in that upper lane, just all piles together. You see that fireball come out of the pipes. That means they lift. That raw fuel's in the pipes all the way out of the gas, and it just so on and so forth, stacked them all the way up through the field. Finally, one of them got spit out. We're going to ride with the Bass Pro Shops cam on board Martin Truex. Whoa. Boom. And Martin had no idea what was happening there. That happened so quick. Yep. There was no way he could react to that. Well, Johnny, one of them's out. Still got one left. Austin Dillon's still in this thing. Denny Hamlin's view. Look how fast that happens. Whoa. <laughs> they all tried. No way you're going to avoid that. And Kevin Harvick in his final Daytona 500. Chase Briscoe. Let's uh, check out the Mahindra cam. The driver's eye for Chase Briscoe. Wow. Tony, he hit everything but the lottery. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yes. Yep. Well, of those last four replays, three of those were your cars, all coming to grief. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. One pile up here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm Mike, not running a calculator, <laughs> we but we try not to Lee. point those things out. When nope. Had a bad day there, buddy. You're not out of it. No, and that's unfortunately we knew that this was this green flag sequence of pit stops could could do this. Yep. I mean, everybody that's come out ahead of these packs that are coming. They have to do what they have to do to protect. Unfortunately, it just gets that that jam up like that, and it's it's beyond an accordion. It's a slam fest at that point. So end of the day for these guys, beyond devastation. This is the biggest one, the biggest race of the year. But who did, who's the advantage go to? Harrison, Burton, Logano, Byron, Bush, Kyle Larson up front. Who heard him? Keselowski, Busher. Sindrick, Almirola, those guys in the back, they were trying to catch those guys. One more lap, I think roles would have been reversed. Unfortunately, Koshkin came out. And Harrison Burton is the race leader, Jamie. And it's interesting, Mike, because he wanted to pit with the fours, but he was up on top of the track. He couldn't get down, so they came in and pitted, just took fuel. But Brian Wilson, his crew chief, just told him on the radio at this point, we are one to two laps short. I need you to save everything you got. 
the Wood Brothers. Last went to victory lane in the Daytona 500 with Trevor Bain in 2011. Only Bain's second, day, second cup race. But Leonard Wood, the master at minimizing mechanical drag and massage that car. And that was probably the fastest car in Daytona that day. And Trevor Bain drove it like he stole it for the Wood Brothers' 99th win in their NASCAR history, which dates to 1949. 16 laps to go in Daytona. Well, here are the drivers, great ones, Hall of Famers, who have not scored the Daytona 500. Two-time champ Ned Jarrett, champions Rusty Wallace and Tony Stewart, Mark Martin, 29 starts. And today, Martin Truex is out of the race, and Kyle Busch is currently in fourth place. The Harley J. Earl Trophy, named for the longtime General Motors chief stylist, that's the Firebird one atop the trophy that Bill Francis promoted to present it to every Daytona 500 winner. Let's get out of the desk and Chris Myers and Jamie McMurray. Thank you, Mike. It's uh, the race the driver's got to have on his resume, and you do have that. Right now, Jamie McMurray, who's in the best position to win? Well, we talked about Kyle Busch earlier in the race, had the pit road speeding penalty, got a lap down. He got the lap back. He is in fourth place right now, the, the second Chevy in line. I think he's in a really good position. And Fords have been difficult, and they've worked well together. Well, they have, and we've seen Brad and his teammate Chris Busher be able to work together. But, Chris, the, the what's coming? Coming up right now, we're going to have this restart. The importance of the restart. Yeah, the restart's going to be more important than ever. And last year, we did not have the choose rule at this type track at Daytona and Talladega. We have that this year. We have two Fords in the first two positions, seven Chevys lined up behind that, and then you have to go all the way back to Brad Keselowski in 10th. This is going to be the most important restart if it's the last one of the entire race. And what do you base the decision on? Well, it's going to be about being with a teammate or being with your manufacturer. And we talked about that's going to come into play until the very end, and it's the Daytona 500. I don't care if it's my teammate the last couple laps. I'm going for the win. Denny Hamlin said, who can you trust at this point? Whatever driver is in that spot, he hopes he can trust him to get the help. 13 last lap passes, Mike, have decided the Daytona 500 in history. We've gone to 11 overtimes before it's been decided. Looking forward to the finish here. Thanks, Chris. I am surprised that Chris Buescher in the 17 and Brad Keselowski, after spending all that long run drafting together as teammates at the front of the field, chose different lanes for this restart. They'll have to find each other. Regan. Mike, you see the 22 of Joey Logano selected the bottom there to go alongside of his somewhat teammate in the 21 car, Harrison Burton. The discussion was pretty short and simple. Our best chance to win is to go to the bottom. Now that we're getting to the end, the pay window is open. We're seeing these guys do whatever is best for them, no matter what. Thanks, Regan. By the way, uh, Trevor Bain's win for the Wood Brothers was their 98th. Ryan Burton, uh, Ryan Blaney also scored one. This is Kim Burton, and she's a nervous wreck. If you're a longtime fan, when her husband <laughs> Jeff was racing, and now her son Harrison leads the Daytona 500. You would it swear reminds she is me, in, the, in the passenger seat of that car every single lap with him. Reminds me of 1996 when Dale Jarrett won the Daytona 500, and his mom, Martha, sat in a van in the infield she wanted to see that his, her son's car go by, but just once a lap, she didn't want to watch the whole race. And we lost Martha a couple weeks ago, and we miss her. Our condolences to Ned and the Jarrett family. There are the Thunderbirds, the pilots watching after putting on a great air show here. One awesome show, the best one I've ever seen here. Also condolences to the family of Canadian racer Trevor Boys, who recently passed. He competed in a number of 500s. To settle it, on the lead lap, 11 Fords, 13 Chevys, and six Toyotas. Here we go. Oh, no, Harrison was going to try to get down. Is Logano going to let him? Logano got a pretty good start with him. They were door to door. He does not get down in front of his Ford teammate, Logano. No. Pushing in half. Pushing in half. I don't necessarily think that was by design. I think he was trying to, to get a jump on Logano and get down in front of him. Did Burton not accomplish that. In a Wood Brothers owned car, prepared at the Team Penske shops. So you could pretty much call that a four car Penske group, but not operating as teammates right here. Too close to the finish. Your friends are where you find them. 
It's like Joey Logano said, he's friends with him in the bus lot. Once he gets that helmet on, not a friend anymore. Man, Kyle was wanting to go to that outside. He was looking for Austin Dillon to make a move. They're stacking up on the bottom. Byron missed the block on the outside with Burton. And he's going to get shuffled. He sure is. William Byron there like a hot dog getting a slid out of the club. And here we go. Allmendinger. Jay Allmendinger. From the lap down to the lead. Joey Logano almost got turned and saved it. He and Burton had contact. It's and time. 12 to go. The Daytona 500's on the line. Get them on their feet. Joey Logano did not like that. Harrison Burton completely sideways. Huge save. And he put Kyle Busch in the wall. Not intentionally. Just ran out of room there. That was a hard shot by Kyle Busch. And who's coming back to the front? Keslowski and Chris Busher on the high side together. Don't look now, some guy that's won seven championships sneaking into this mix as well. No, Smoke not. flying off the door of the six car off the Suarez. That's exactly what Keselowski wanted. His teammate Busher on his bumper, rolls reversed. Did not take them long to find the front. And fourth on the inside, not Smoke Johnson, that's Jimmy Johnson. Seven-time champ, two-time Daytona 500 winner in the 84, part-time schedule back in NASCAR, and right there in the mix as they come to 10 to go. Call it racing, A.J. Allmendinger in the front of this thing. Got good company. Somebody's going to have to go through those RFK cars to win this race. Very, very strong. And he's an outlier. You see Allmendinger, you can expect the unexpected from him. Chevy's on the inside. Allmendinger, Larson, Suarez. Hey, all race long we've been talking about the strength and numbers, those fours. Now look, now they're the odd man out. Only two of them up front. Chevy stacked up behind them. That's why you never know who's going to win this race. But they're two teammates, and they've drafted together all day, and right behind them, remember Kyle Busch told Tom Rinaldi this morning, boy, it's not if I win the Daytona 500, it's when. And it's a pair of teammates and a pair of teammates. Was not a good lap for A.J. Allmendinger. Got shuffled out on the inside, left him out, went clear, uh, straight to the back. 2 Fords, 4 Chevys, a Ford, a Chevy, a Ford, and the first Toyota is Bell in 10th. In line, eight pushing the 17. He's right on, came off of Chris, clear by one. So hard to win this race. Everything has to go right. We've been talking about that all day long. Three of the last six racers, the winner at the, or excuse me, the leader at the white flag didn't win the race. Unbelievable. Four out of seven leaders of the white flag finished outside the top ten. You never know how this thing's going to shake out. I think this race could be in the hands of Austin Dillon in the three. He has a Daytona 500 win. He recruited Kyle Busch to Richard Childress Racing. I think he's Busch's wingman to try to get the these two Chevys past the two Fords for Bush to win the 500. I don't disagree at all. That I mean, you ultimately, at the end of the day, in a perfect scenario, want your teammate with you. So this is a perfect scenario for both Kyle Bush and Austin Dillon. They want to work together to get on Pop Pop that next big Daytona 500 victory. Pop Pop's liking what he sees. Pop Pop is Richard Childress, Austin Dillon's granddad who started this team back in 1969, brought his Camaro here to run the Grand American race. To do it, they'll have to get past, there's Richard there Childress. He is. They'll have to get past two of the Fords that have been among the fastest cars here all week. Brad Kozlowski and Chris Buescher. He's longed to have a driver back behind his stable to have the likes of Dale Earnhardt, and he's found him in Kyle Busch. Busher put the bumper to Keslowski to try to create a little distance. And the Chevys close it right up. They're coming to six laps to go. And he better be careful how he does that. You get that gap open, you leave those three Chevys behind there, they will mow you down. Single 
file, man. Top eight cars here. You have to wait. You have to be patient, Tony. You go too soon, it gives everybody behind you a chance to pounce on you. 29 cars in the lead lap. Nine cars in this lead pack. Then a gap back to Kyle Larson and Daniel Suarez. How do you work on this if you're Kyle Busch? <laughs> You've got two cars to pass. How do you use those two teammates, those two allies behind you? Do you back them up? I think you have to. I think you have to get separated from those first two cars. It's going to take a lap to rebuild and regenerate that, that power and that momentum, but I think that's what you're, where your biggest shot is. Those two up front have been, have had great speed. Brad Kozlowski has an ace in his corner. TJ Majors is a veteran of super speedway racing on the spotter stand and calling the moves and where the energy is coming from. This is that moment Brad Kozlowski made this move, joining RFK at his name as an ownership driver owner in this thing. If he can pull this off, this is what this vision, the dream's all about. See Stenhouse, you know he's gonna go. He's not gonna want to wait around. Kozlowski's best Daytona 500, third. Four to go. When do you make your move, Tony? I've been trying to figure that out for three laps now, bud. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't think Busher makes the move. No, I didn't want to talk about him. He's racing with his boss. I wasn't talking about him. Right? No, no, no. I'm, we're, we're talking about that the eight ball, and here he comes. comes. But they're moving back there. Outside Chris. Go back and get Chris to you. Get Chris to you. They're hanging Chris here. He's three off you. Two off you. Two off. Three Chevys to the outside with William Byron, the two children's car. The strength's going to be in numbers. Those Chevys going to go to the outside, but look at these Fords stack up behind where they go. Logano does not go with the Ford. Stays on the outside with the momentum. Did not see that coming. Neither did nope. Brad Keselowski. And Keselowski goes from being the leader to sixth, just like that. But we saw how easy that was to do. There is still time for that same maneuver to happen again. Once, twice, maybe three times. <laughs> exactly. Back second lane, three, 24, then it's one off of the 24 to the 22 and the six. Okay, this is a question, Tony. He said three of the last six, the winner only led the last lap. If you're Kyle Busch, if you're Austin Dillon, when do you make that move? I, I've always said this. I think you have to lead at the white flag, because if that caution comes out, you're done. The race is oh, over. There's Suarez a caution. around. Off turn four. Caution waves. Well, that changes everything. Sure does. And that is not what Pop Pop wanted to see right there. Nope. Okay, this is where the new rule, moving the choose cone, is really going to get interesting. You're going to stack up two teammates. You know where they're going to go. Rod on each other's tail, bumper to bumper. What is William Byron in a Chevy, Logano in a Ford, Keselowski in a Ford, Stenhouse in a Chevy. It's a mixed bag behind them. Randall Burnett, crew chief, and Richard Childress, team owner had hoped to see their two cars come to the flag for a one-two finish, but now Daniel Suarez, there's the AMR safety team on the scene and quickly they'll get that car removed. He wants to get going. We're heaving that thing out right now. We're well, good call. <laughs> that car's still running. He can still finish this race, so the steps record gets up there, gives him a boot. That's right. And maybe. He can get back in this race. All right, Kyle Busch was leading at the caution flag. Back in 1998, that would be the win, boys. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right, man. We're going to have a green-white checker here. We're plenty good on fuel, so. Wow. Back in 1998, there was a crash off turn number four. Dale Earnhardt came to the caution flag, not the checkered flag, but the caution flag to win the Daytona 500 because back then we did not have overtime. Twenty years it took Earnhardt, who won everything else there was to win at Daytona to join this world's longest receiving line. 
You don't remember that, do you, Larry? Yes, I do. And I told him, hey, hey, don't celebrate. We have to get back around the checkered flag. I think that lap 199 under caution with the track clear was about as fast as before the caution came out. <laughs> I want you to take a look at this car. You don't see any good year letters on the left side. The right side's got concrete dust all over it. That boy wants to win this race. He told us he was going to win it. He just might. Well, and remember that the concrete on the right side came from Harrison Burton yeah. shoving him to the outside wall. N nothing to do with Harrison's fault. Just an incident that got him all moved up like that. You hardly see a car win this race anymore that's clean. It's Kyle Busch's 18th Daytona 500. This would put him in some awfully good company. It sure would. And I think it speaks volume about taking this opportunity. You hear people, did he take a step backwards, leaving the 18 car at Joe Gibbs Racing? I have said from day one, that Randall Burnett, that guy was poised and ready for this opportunity. This was exactly what RCR needed. He's the driver for them. I'm telling you, he has the likes on the racetrack as a Dale Earnhardt does. I think it's gonna be a big year for them. He is the most polarizing driver in the sport, as Dale Earnhardt was. Kyle Busch may not be the best of all time, but I've said before and again, he's the best of his time. Yeah, and you know, like we talked about, a lot of people would say this was a step back going back to Richard Childress Racing and that it would take time to build back up to where they ultimately want to be. I don't see it either. I, I think we saw it when we were at LA at the Coliseum. We're seeing it today. This is a guy that always has the bit in his teeth and, and yep. to make a move like this, he's not gonna go backwards to go forward. He's just going to pick up and go forward. All right, let's hear from the runner up, his teammate, Austin Dillon. I'm gonna be screwed if the four are behind me. I don't know, let the 24 have it. Just make them push you, just make them push you. It's not easy, whoever's getting pushed is gonna get wrecked or yeah, that's about it actually. <laughs> Oh, gee. <laughs> that's not a good feeling, Mike. No. I'm just telling you, it's not. But that's exactly what you have to do. You have to try to do everything you can do to make that block. It's where we talk about that rear view mirror and everything in the back glass. It's just so important when it comes down to crunch time. So we now have NASCAR overtime, which is a two lap shootout. If the leader takes the white flag under green, the next flag will end the race. We saw it happen last night when caution came out on the back straightaway. And if that happens, NASCAR will use all available video evidence to determine positions at the moment the button is pushed that activates the caution lights. So they will come to the choose, and I'll bet there's so much chatter right now over which <laughs> lane do you want, who do you want to be behind, and who do you want to be beside? Well, I think you know where you want to be. The problem is you have to wait and see what they're going to do. Put the cards on the table. It's time. Twenty nine lead lap cars and here's the choose. Split up. Didn't expect that. All right. Three and twenty four down bottom. You're gonna have the twenty two, the forty seven lined up behind us. Taking a green lap two oh two. Yes, Why exactly. wouldn't those teammates go nose to tail? Because Austin Dillon's going to let him in. That's the plan right, right. along. You're going to see uh, uh, Kyle Busch move up. But we've seen this before. That William Byron in a 24 car, if he pushes that three too hard, doesn't let that eight in, that's a problem. How about 22? We saw this with Brad Keselowski. If that 22 pushes him out too far, they get too far, and now everybody goes by him. This is a tricky restart. So instead of actually thinking that he's going to let his teammate in, is this, is this an opportunity where they, they just keep the whole front row occupied and settle it between themselves on the last lap? I like what you're trying to sell. No chance. <laughs> that eight car's the only chance of winning this race is to get in front of those two Chevrolets. He's got two Fords behind him. No way they're going to let him win this thing. Right. I can't buy that because unlike the start of the race where everybody was content to Noah's Ark this thing and run two by two by two, this track is three lanes wide, maybe four in the straightaways. But uh, hey, that's a race car driver. That's a champion race car driver that said that. I like what you're thinking. If, if How's the three car going to win this thing if he's pushing the eight? Look at this. Why'd you buy a seat? Nobody's sitting in them. They're all on their feet. That's all right. They rested the majority of the day. But this is where <laughs> I, what I'm ultimately worried about. 
if they try to hold that inside lineup to let him get around on the outside, do they do they slow the inside lanes down so much that they can't build that momentum back before that outside row just goes right on by? In my opinion, we know what the front row is going to try to do. The next row, the second row, they can dictate what they may have to do. Now, if they just don't all pile up from sixth on back, this is going to be one heck of a finish. Overtime sponsored by Credit One Bank. Pace car is in. Two laps to settle the 65th Daytona 500. Kyle Busch takes off. Austin Dillon lets him into the inside. Logano comes up to cover on the outside. It's going to take them a while to get connected here. Outside bumper. Your top is clear. Your top is clear. Three is not. One back, two by two. Everybody on the outside pushing seven rows back. If Links in the chain. If you're Logano, you're not exactly in good company either. Two Chevrolets behind you. Getting stacked up on the inside. Not at all. Here comes Stenhouse. Big shove by Larson. And Austin around goes, goes around. the three. Crash in turn three. That fast. Unbelievable. And that will decimate roughly half the remaining field. We always say it cautions breed cautions. Seventh caution flag. That is not at all what you wanted to see, RC. Not sure how that started, except that Austin Dillon got turned. They all got stacked up. He got into the back of uh, Kyle Busch, had him sideways, jacked up. They had to lift, accordions. So how did the energy build back there to take the lead away from the Childress cars? It all starts when you do the crossover. Jimmy Johnson, heavy damage for him doing everything he needed to do to be a part of this finish. But it, it all starts on the crossover. We've seen this before. When he makes that move and crosses over, it takes time to build that energy back up when it stacks him up. That all carried back around to the back straightaway to what you see right here. Christopher Bell drops in, and Dylan may have got a shot from William Byron. Maybe not. Not sure from that angle, but up he went, and down he came. Dylan got in the back of Bush and had to check up. When he did, it stacked William and everybody up behind him. They turned him. The rest is history. That's just a product of it. It's go time. Green, white, checkered. You knew that was about to happen. But aside from that, great move by Ricky Stenhouse. Harrison Burton. Right along with Noah Gregson. There's Gregson off to the left. We'll ride with him next. Nothing you can do. Long for the ride. And the driver's eye view from Ross Chastain. Austin Sindrick. Well, that's what 190 miles an hour looks like when it goes all the wrong way. It, this whole thing takes me back to this choose cone rule. That difference in a choose cone rule coming to these plate tracks like Daytona, Talladega, that's why Stenhouse is in the lead and those other cars are wrecked. And I'm telling you the truth, Stenhouse was down and out. Those two cars got stacked up on that bottom line out of nowhere. He was in a situation where he got to spit Logano out. That lonely Ford had the help of a Chevy and, and Larson behind him. So I'll be darn, we're leading this thing. Let's set the field for you among the cars that got through their unscathed. JTG Doherty's driver, Ricky Stenhouse, for Tad and Jody Gachector and uh, NBA legend Brad Doherty. He's leading the Daytona 500. He's won at Daytona, the summer race here. Kyle Larson, who started this race outside pole for Team Hendrick. 
is second in a Chevrolet. Christopher Bell, who's had quite an up and down day for uh, Joe Gibbs in his Toyota, is third. Joey Logano for Team Penske is fourth. There's Jimmy Johnson climbed out of his car. He's okay. Car's done for the day. Logano is fourth. He's the first Ford in the race, and there, Kyle Busch. You saw it get shuffled back a little by some of the moves in traffic, but he's in it to win it, and so is A.J. Allmendinger for uh, Team Calling. Hamlin, Bowman, Wallace, Almirola, rest of the top ten. This is setting up. As soon as he clears that A to Kyle Busch, he's going to make a move. There he goes. He knows the help's coming. Look at that inside line stack up. <laughs> it just was a perfect case scenario for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And he I mean, was there for Ricky, the taking. If you're Ricky, you absolutely take that shot and yep. take that yep. chance. The thing that he doesn't know is that the five is right to him at the back. If he's pushing him when he makes that move, he's gone. And then you take a chance of turning Logano in front of you because he was on the bumper of him. That was dicey, very close. Multiple hits there for Harrison Burke. Don't tell me this is not a violent sport. Yeah. Took his hands off the wheel in case uh, one of those front tires snapped against the wall and uh, just jerked that wheel and caused a wrist injury. Yeah, the biggest thing you want to get, you, most of all, you want to get your thumbs out of those spokes so that the spoke doesn't catch your thumb on the way by. Austin says, I'm not letting go anything. No. I'm driving mine. He's still driving it. You're right. Now, just outside the top 10, Keslowski and Busher, uh, that drafting pair of RFK Fords, they still have a shot at this. Hey, did you not see who's in between them? <laughs> Travis Pastrana, how about him? He's still in it, baby. We, had, we joked at the top of the day, and I told the folks up uh, when there Chase Elliott and I were up in the Sunoco suite, I said, watch these two guys. I said, watch Connor Daly in the 50 and Travis Pastrana in the 67. Do they have a chance to win the Daytona 500? Probably not, but a chance at a top 10 finish if their day goes well and they stay out of trouble? Absolutely. You give Travis Pastrana a top 10 finish at the Daytona 500, I'm going to give you the best interview you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> I think if he finished on the lead lap and was 36th, <laughs> you'd have had the best interview. If he finishes in the top 10, it's, you're going to think he won X Games gold again. It's Daytona. We've seen crazier things happen. It well, can, and it just might. He is 12th right now. Ricky Stenhouse from Olive Branch, Mississippi leads the Daytona 500 as we get ready for overtime. I've got three Daytona 500s, including the two closest finishes in history. Stay with us on Fox. Overtime at the Daytona 500. We're live at trackside. Jamie McMurray, Chris Myers. We'll get back to the guys in the booth in just a moment here. The late aggressiveness has brought out crashes and some cautions. We saw Ricky Stenhouse Jr. go from six to the lead in a matter of moments here. How far back can you be right now, Jamie, and still have a chance to win this? Yeah, well, I mean, Ricky was able to go from third row outside. He lined up on the sixth car all the way to, to the lead. Before they got to the back stretch, Chris, I think if you're in those first four rows, listen, the level of aggression we talked about it was going to get higher and higher. Right now, when you get connected to somebody, you, you're not letting off. You're going to. It doesn't matter, teammate, no teammate. I think all those rules are out the window. I think you can go from four rows back. What matters, where does experience figure in at this moment? Well, listen, at this point, it's all about a little bit of circumstantial. I mean, Kyle Busch has the experience. He had his teammate behind him, but they weren't able to stay locked together, not necessarily because he did something wrong, just circumstantial. We talk about a little bit of luck. You're going to have to have a little bit of luck right now to win the 500. We're close to the action and trying to bring you a little bit closer. Back up to Mike, Tony, and Clint. Going to need Thanks, fuel Chris. if you're going to win the 500. Yeah, seven drivers of those that stopped earlier and had just enough fuel to finish. They've come in to top off, which means they think we may have more than one overtime. We're going to keep going as long as this I'm takes. Gonna, I'm going to tell you they were getting close on fuel. All right, Regan. 
Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s crew chief, Mike Kelly. Mike, you guys have kept that car clean all day long. Your driver got it to the front. What do you tell him coming to this restart here? Just tell him to go do his job. Ricky's done a good job for us all day, and we'll see what happens here at the end. Thanks, Mike. Josh? Well, Kyle Busch's crew chief, Randall Burnett here. How do you guys handle this next restart? Well, I, I couldn't quite hear you there, but um, Kyle's been doing a great job tonight in his three chief Chevy, and uh, we just didn't have it go our way on that last restart, so we're going to have to make up for it on this time and um, just see what happens here. Thanks and good luck. Guys. Thanks, Josh. There's Kyle, and the number of contenders gets smaller with every caution flag. Overtime, two laps, green-white checker, 52 lead changes so far in today's Daytona 500. Only twice in 64 years have there been more, and we're not done yet. Yeah, this has got potential to have another <laughs> caution or so, but this is going to be an awesome restart. We've got guys that are all split up, guys that don't have teammates anymore, guys that are with different manufacturers. Who knows what is going to happen now? We've been down here for 500 miles telling you guys you're going to need to manufacture help. You're going to need your teammate help. None of them have that now. That choose cone rule, I'm telling you, it's coming to effect in a big way, and it's going to again on this restart. You're going to have to find somebody. You're going to have to keep them behind you and not let them around. Block are going to come, and that's probably going to mean another caution. All right, what's going to happen? Who do you like? Well, I can tell you what's going to happen. Nobody is going to just ease into somebody's back bumper. Anything that's going to be a push is going to be wide open. And if the driver in front can hang on to it, then hopefully it produces. But I can't even predict who's going to finish in, on the top of this one at the end. Well, of the my day. guy's out. I was 19 on 19 on 19, whatever. I'm going with the five car. I think Kyle Larson's going to win this race. Well, Steppenwolf had a song, The Pusher Man. It meant something completely different. But when I hear that, I see Brad Keselowski. I don't disagree. And Brad is historically the last couple years been one of the hardest <laughs> pushers in the field yeah. so he's definitely not gonna not gonna ease up on this I think they've had the fastest cars so that you're not out of out around there that car is all right let's take a look back and review in this 65th Daytona 500 stage one not a single caution in stage one even with Bubba Wallace getting tipped up there into the outside wall with a little bit of damage Kyle Busch getting a speeding penalty. A car did spin in stage one, but it got to pit road without incident. There's the first multi-car pileup. And Tyler Reddick in the 45 getting turned around, knocked out of the race, and taking several others with him. Then this one, Brian Priest getting turned by Michael McDowell in an accordion-like fashion. Neither one of them started the wreck. They were both in the midst of finishing it. And then Daniel Suarez spinning to the inside as we were coming to two laps to go with the two Richard Childress cars of Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon out front. And finally this, Ricky Stenhouse drops to the inside, makes a great move there, but Austin Dillon gets turned into another car, and then he and William Byron go careening up the racetrack into the wall. Mayhem ensues. You know what the top team running order has all in common? They were all a part of every one of those highlight reels right there. The five car was around <laughs> sideways. He spun out in one of them. The 20, Christopher Bell, he was in one of those wrecks. He's up there. That's what you got to do. You heard Denny, all of us talk about it. Surviving this race, getting to this opportunity. That's what it's all about. Fifth and sixth, both a lap down at one point. I mean, it, we've had a little bit of everything, and it's a mixture of guys still left in the top ten. All right. Here Here's the choose. Oh, boy. Stenhouse the leader, Larson second. They're both in Chevys. Where are you going? How about that? Split and them up again. Them. Bell and the Toyota down. Logano in the Ford up. Kyle barely made that. Kyle Busch, that is. Yep. Allmendinger down. Bush up. Hamlin the inside. Bowman the outside. A lot of energy taking that bottom, especially back in the pack. That's where that energy's built from. Ready to decide it, Larry. Yeah, what's interesting with all of those Fords pitting, Joey Logano is the lone Ford right now inside the top 10, and it's kind of a mix. There's like four or five Chevrolets, there's three or four Toyotas, and that one Ford right now. This will be the longest Daytona 500 in history because of the extra caution laps and the overtime. 
don't want to put an S on that just yet. <laughs> this is a, a mono a mono, no holds barred right here. Everybody, every man for himself. Nobody has anybody that they can trust. Well, it's the start of a long season, but come on. Either win the Daytona 500 or bring me back the steering wheel. I don't care about the rest of the season. This is one of those scenarios. You take the boxing gloves off. This is a bare knuckle street fight the rest of the way out. Or if you're Dana White, this is a slap fest on the way out. Man, I was hoping you'd get that in. Yeah, boy. Now, yeah, we have uh, eight drivers that stopped uh, six laps earlier on fuel than the rest of them, and they are the first eight. However, we don't know if they got those cars completely full or if they did a time staff stop just to get them to the end of, say, one overtime. I think they all were time stops. I mean, nobody wants to give up any time on pit road, especially under green like that. So it'll be interesting to see who has the fuel to make it the rest of the way. Saw some guys during this caution top off. We know they can make it. We'll just have to wait and see. Stenhouse Larson, the front row Chevrolet. Bell and Toyota, Logano and Ford in row two, Chevy's in row three, Almondinger and Bush. Here we go. One more try at overtime. His off ahead slightly. Just staying with that 22. I don't like his bottom line already. Look how far off AJ Almondinger is off of Bell. That's not good for those guys. Bowman on the outside getting a big push. Up. By Bubba, up that's where all this energy is going to come from back here. The move's going to be made on the front, but it's going to be because of what they see in the rearview mirror. Here comes the eight. These guys are in trouble yeah, on the bottom. Here comes Bubba. Guy. Here comes Stay a little bit of help, but they're going to need more than this, just those two. Bowman drops to the inside. His teammate Kyle Larson is now the talking. first car on the inside. Now that energy's all broke up now. Now Stenhouse we're going to see the coming from behind. Where's he going to go? They're both going to get to him pretty hard, pretty quick. All right, Stenhouse gets the white flag. And the net of the flag five. Five. Three wide. All good. You got the help. Larson tried to go to the middle. Oh, he got turned. Larson Pastrana in the fence. We are still out. green. No, the caution is out. And we'll wait for official word on whether Ricky Stenhouse or Joey Logano oh has won gosh. the Daytona 500. Come to the checker first, baby. Christopher Bell in the mix. Those three cars out in front of the crash. Slow down. They'll Slow have down. to cross the line, but Strong one of them in. will win the Daytona 500. What is Bell doing here? Oh. On the track, caution and checker. Chevy, Ford, Stenhouse, Logano. Here is how this will be decided. It is not the flag. It is not the caution lights. It is NASCAR's decision as to where those two cars were when the button was pushed to activate the caution. And Ricky Stenhouse has won the Daytona 500. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Daytona 500 winner. Let me tell you, that's been a long time coming. That boy has been aggressive. He's been close. He's been knocking oh on the door God. on a track like this, and it's this finally his turn. Daytona 500. That does not surprise me, Tony. No, not he's, one bit. He's fantastic on the on the super speedways like this, and he, like you mentioned earlier, he's Brother. very aggressive. But he's aggressive in a way that gets him to the front. It's Can not a reckless way. He just is going to do everything Rebody, he can to get there. Man. Look above your head. Look on that roll bar. I see it, boys. I see it. Spotter tab boy, crew chief Mike Kelly, team owners, husband and wife team, Jody and Tad Geschechter, along with NBA legend Brad Doherty, on that single car team. Stenhouse's best previous finish in the 500 was seventh. He becomes the 42nd driver to win the Great American Race, and here it is. I think the win comes from the five. When the five moved up to try to go around him and lost that momentum, that gets the five in trouble. Here comes the energy. Bell filled that void, gives him a big shot. Five gets turned around. Look, right there, he's in front of him and wins this Great American Race. Had the five stayed in front of him, the five's going to be the one when I, when I think back of this race, he's going to be coulda, woulda, shoulda. Oh, so close. Stenhouse won here in July 2017. Well, the 10 car back in the back of the 67 car. 
And you got to do it. I mean, you know Travis doesn't have a lot of experience in these cars, but it's the last lap. You have to go for it. So I ain't going to do it a burnout. I ain't got no fuel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bud, you don't need any more. How about that? How about that? That's how close it was. You saw Busher. You saw a lot of other guys come in and top off. Amazing. Change his life right there. Wins in his 12th try for the Daytona 500. On the short tracks, on the dirt, sometime they called him Recky Spin Twice. Not today. Today, they call him winner. Doesn't matter what happens the rest of his life, he is a Daytona 500 champion. With a big ring, and I mean a big ring. This is gonna be a good celebration. Who would have thought in this day of the four car mega teams that this little single car team would come here and win the 500, Jamie Little? Ricky Stenhouse Jr. It has been a long time coming. The one difference, Mike Kelly, your crew chief, is back. You won two championships together and now you won the Daytona 500. Was it just magic together that made the difference here? Yeah, I think this whole offseason, Mike just preached how much we all believed in each other. Um, they left me a note on the car that said they believe in me and to go get the job done tonight. I made a few mistakes. We were able to battle back. This Kroger Cottonell team worked really, really hard this offseason. Great pit stops. Uh, Hendrick engines. Glad a Chevy won. We, uh, man, this is unbelievable. This is the site of my last win uh, back in 2017. We worked really hard. We had a couple shots last year to get a win and, and fell short. It was a tough season, but man, we got it done. Daytona 500. You have a knack for this style of racing and, and we went into overtime. So you had to do it a couple of times and earn it. What were those moments like and what were you watching? What made the difference initially at the end? Yeah, I, you know, when the eight went to the bottom there, you know, I was able to push the 22 and the five. We had a huge run. I was hoping we were going to get to the white there and we didn't. So I knew I was going to take the top. I was hoping the 22 was going to follow and he did. He was able to push us out. I went to the bottom, the eight and the 22, you know, got a huge run. The five, you know, split me in the middle, but uh, another fellow dirt racer with Bell gave me a good shot down, down the little short shoot into one. And uh, man, we were out front when the caution came out. We were out of fuel, so the fuel light was going crazy. But man, I hope y'all had fun. That was a heck of a race. Congratulations. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. wins the Daytona 500. Joey Logano comes up short in this bid for his second Daytona 500. Joey, you had a clear shot out front. You could see where you needed to be. What are the emotions right now? Uh, it's, it's seconds the worst, man. <laughs> it's so close. And, uh, you know, leading the, the white flag lap there is up front. Kyle gave me a good push. And, and I, you know, you're watching in the mirror, and you're three wide across there. And I felt like the three wide was going to hurt a lane. It looked like Kyle was getting pushed ahead. And then Ricky started getting pushed ahead. And, I knew if I went to the bottom, my car didn't handle good enough, <laughs> and I already got pushed off the bottom once, and I thought if I go down there, I'm probably going to get wrecked, and I don't know if I can get down there in time to throw the block, and so I didn't want to wreck my car either, and I don't know, and then you don't expect them to wreck, like, you know, you, you're, you're think you're racing to the checkered flag, and you, know, you put yourself in the best position to try to win at the start-finish line, and just, uh, caution came out. <laughs> yeah, you wish you could race to the end. Obviously, you can't, right? I mean, they wrecked that much, but uh, congratulations to Ricky. Obviously, I mean, there's nothing like winning the Daytona 500. That's why it stings so much finishing second, but um, still proud of the team, still proud of uh, the effort uh, coming off the championship last year and bringing this Shell Penzo Mustang uh, back towards the front and uh, getting a Ford close to the front. Wish it was in victory lane, though. Thanks, Joey. Ricky Stenhouse is a champion of the Daytona 500 and can hardly believe it. He bests Joey Logano in this two lap shootout as a caution flag ends it here in Daytona, but we'll be back with more interviews after this. The Daytona 500 winner, a 30 to one long shot, a single car team, and that is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. who led very few laps, survived two overtimes and under caution, holds off 
Joey Logano, and he is your champion in the 65th running of the Daytona 500. As mentioned from Olive Branch, Mississippi, he grew up at the name of his streets, Tranquil Drive. It was uh, anything but with Jamie <laughs> McMurray as the finish of this one. I'm Chris Myers. By the way, the longest Daytona 500 ever, 530 miles. So the Daytona 530. Where did Stenhouse win this, and who else had a chance at the very end where they lost it? Listen, Chris, Ricky Stenhouse earned this. He had to he had to hold these guys off, not only on the on the restart on lap 203, where he went from, from the seventh position to the lead on the backstretch when Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon had their issues. But then again, he had to hold off Kyle Larson and Joey Logano and by the way he was he was out of fuel in the whole process who knows if he would have won if it would have went green all the way back around to the start finish line great super speedway driver you called it a long shot and and I would agree probably the odds said long shot but Ricky Sinas Jr. is a really a really good super speedway plate a plate racer yeah we spent hours talking about who can you trust a manufacturer teammates other drivers going the same speed and here's a guy who he said he made a few mistakes recovered did the right thing at the right time had the right moves and survived as we saw this was a case of who could outlast and be there at the end to have a chance. Yeah, I mean, listen, Ricky Stenhouse, he, he talked about making mistakes, but he made them early enough that he was able to recover. Um, I, I mean, to me, the, the move of the race was was the restart with lap, uh, lap 203, where he went from seventh to the lead. Um, had a couple of dirt racers. You heard Christopher Bell and Kyle Larson around him at the end. Some friends, and maybe not teammates, uh, but, but friendships off of the racetrack. And I thought Kyle Larson's move, uh, going to the middle, that's what he had to do to try to win this race. He's probably going to beat himself up tonight, looking back at that but listen I think in the heat of the moment I thought he made the right decision yeah, and Ricky Stenhouse last year heartbreaks or passed on the last lap when Austin Sidrick pulled the upset this time Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with the upset it's a long afternoon and they hung in there Clint Boyer Tony Stewart and Mike Joy let's go back up to the booth and get their final thoughts I've been saying all week Chris this race would not go to one of the favorites it would go to one of the outliers the last two 500s were won by 30 to 1 shots I thought that would happen again tonight and certainly Certainly, Ricky Stenhouse was on that list. <laughs> well, I'm proud of our dirt racers. You, you heard yeah. us talk about Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, and Ricky Stenhouse. I'm really happy. And what I'm most excited about, a single car team wins the yes. Daytona 500. That's impressive. Well done. These fans in the stands, everybody that took in this event of the Daytona 500, they're the real winners. I'm telling you, hats off to everybody at this event to makes, it makes it what it is. Um, from the start of the week, it's been awesome. The racing on the track, these drivers have put on a hell of a show. Um, it, the duels were awesome. Qualifying was interesting. These teams, this sport, NASCAR is in good hands. Third most competitive Daytona 500 ever, Chris, in terms of number of lead changes. What a night. Yeah, you guys did a great job. I'm telling you, Mike, there are a lot of experts, a lot of analysis, and, and, and in the end, I don't know that many people saw this coming, and that's what we like, an unpredictable finish. We're going to have more live from Daytona. You'll hear from some other drivers. There's the winner is Crucci. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., known for his super speedway skill. When he won the Xfinity Championship, Mike Kelly, his crew chief then, his crew chief today, capturing the 65th Daytona 500. Who finished third? Well, let's check in with Josh Harris. Well, Christopher Bell, you told me going into the day, you don't like super speedway racing. You never even made it to the end of one of these Daytona 500s. You made it to the end, but I know you didn't quite get what you wanted. Yeah, I... Uh... You know, if you would have told me pre-race I was going to run third, I would have jumped, jumped up and down and been smiling ear to ear, which you know, I, I am very happy and very, very thankful that uh, I could get this Ream and DeWalt Camry uh, a good solid finish. But, man, just so close to a crown jewel and feel like if it would have stayed green, I, I, I would have been on offense. And obviously, who knows? Who knows? But very proud and thankful to be here at Joe Gibbs Racing and uh, happy for Ricky. That, that's really cool. Um, very, very happy for Ricky. Christopher Bell coming up just short. All right, thank you, Josh Sims. And boy, what a, what a smile from Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., a driver in his mid-30s. And Mike Joy and the crew mentioned JTG, Doherty Racing, Brad Doherty, NBA star who has been, who grew up a diehard NASCAR fan, gets to be part of NASCAR ownership and to come away with a victory here. As we leave Daytona, happy moment for Stenhouse, Jr. and that team. But the story continues with Brad Keselowski, who led laps early, Kyle Busch, who was in position, Martin Truex, Jr., champs of the sport, who still have not 
not captured this race. Yeah, and I think what's what's most heartbreaking is is you got to look at Kyle Busch and Brad because they were in position again at the end of the race to be able to win this. You, we talked about though you got to be a little bit lucky, and the circumstances didn't work out for them. Uh, but Christopher Bell, I want to make a comment about him. He was the hot. That was the hottest team at the end of last year. He had two wins to advance to the next rounds of the playoff, walk-off wins to make the final four at Phoenix. I thought the 20 car probably had the most momentum at the end of the season last year, and that's carried on into Daytona this year. A lot of love for Denny Hamlin coming in, the three-time winner who talked to us about his strategy. He hung around, he hung around. Was there much of a chance? Did his car just not have enough of the speed? You know, it's, it's crazy because Denny was kind of there all day long, but never was able to get to the lead and, and be a dominant car. It looked like he might be in position. He was able to, to, to stay alive for a while, but just didn't seem like he had the car that he needed to get to the front. Well, what you love about the Daytona 500 and what's special about this one. Look at all those guys going to victory. Lane. That's how popular of a win this is for Ricky Sinas Jr. You see Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney's been out of the race for a while with a crashed car, but it's cool to see all those guys go to victory lane and celebrate with him. In the 75th anniversary of NASCAR's 65th running, Ricky Stenhaus, your junior. Junior is your winner. We hope you join us next Sunday. We'll come to you from Southern California. For our entire crew, Jamie McMurray, I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for being a part of NASCAR. NASCAR on Fox.